The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, sir. Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hello, beautiful people. It is Vince McMahon will be live in this studio Thursday, March 3rd, 2022. This sports show begins right now. Yeah. Can't thank you enough for joining us here. This is a big time show. And obviously, you know, Vincent Kennedy McMahon, the chairman of the WWE, will be live in Indianapolis in this studio for the first time in 15 years. He will have a live interview held by us fucking stooges. Speaking of the stooges, the toxic table at Ty Schmidt, at Boston Connor. Tone Diggs is here, one half of the Hammer Down Cowboys. Hammer Down is a show that goes live 15 minutes after this show ends every single day, giving out gambling picks all year round. Yeah. Uh, joining us in an attic in Ohio, a Super Bowl champion, a COVID survivor, Ooh. a college football <laughs> national champion, a Ryder Cup champion, ladies and gentlemen, AJ Hawks here. Yeah. 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 AJ. AJ, what's going on, big handsome? I see you got your Steve Jobs shit back. How you doing, pal? Yep, just trying to match you, man. I hear we have a couple special guests in studio today. Let's get right to it. Thanks for giving it away, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> live right. in studio to start the show. One is Emmy nominated. Oh. The other might be the coolest human I've ever yeah. seen in real life. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen, Pete Schrager and the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals, Cliff Kingsbury. Yeah. Gentlemen, how you doing? Doing good. Appreciate y'all having us. Hey, congrats on the deal, dude. Yeah. 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 Wow. I just got rich, dude. Oh, yeah. Hey, good for you. You deserve it. You absolutely Appreciate deserve it. it. Um, let's dive right into it. Shrek, it's great to see you in person. I'm just going to hang. I'm going to watch this interview. Let's go. No, no. Shrek, get some inside information. Yeah, yeah. Truth, come on. I'm on with you guys all the time. And to actually be here in the fun house, uh, in your fun. this is really cool for me. This is neat. Appreciate it. Fun house. This is a fun house. Yeah, it is. It's a fun house. We call it the Thunderdome, but <laughs> sure. Well, you're currently in the Thunderdome, you know, because all eyes are on you. Obviously, mm -hmm. AJ's on the screen right there. He will definitely have questions. Let's go right into it. Cliff, congrats on the new deal because there was anonymous sources out there that I had heard from and everybody else had heard from that after the season ended, not how you want it, not how anybody wanted. it, there's only one Super Bowl champion, that there was a big explosion that happened afterwards between coach, GM, owner, and there was potentially maybe bonuses were being withheld and there was drama happening. Now you just re-upped alongside Steve Kime. Life must be good in Arizona for Cliff Kingsbury. Yeah, it's getting there. It's getting there. It, it was a tough ending, there's no doubt. But a lot of that stuff you read, I mean, there, there is a WWE element to it, right? There's <laughs> some drama, there's some stuff that we'll read and be like, mm, that's absolutely incorrect. So um, we were upset, but patched it out. Everything's good. Uh, excited about next year. Do you think you're the coolest looking dude of all time? <laughs> oh. Just because this is kind of our big take okay. on you. Because every game, you look awesome. I mean, every yeah. single yeah. game. Look good, look good, play good. Play you, good. You felt that too. Play right? good, pay good. Thank you. <laughs> Pay good, live good. Live good, die good. That's all we're trying to do. Shout out to Deion Sanders. Shout out to you. Yeah. But uh, seeing you walk in person here, you're from Texas. I learned that from a small town in between San Antonio and Austin. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you just got a new deal with Arizona. Whenever you were signed to be the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals, it was like, oh, this dude was offense coordinator for USC, I think, for a month and a half, just out of Texas Tech. A lot got thrown on your plate. I said, were you ready for it? Were you excited for it? And what have you learned through the time when you were first the head coach till now? Yeah, I don't, I don't think anybody's ready for it until you're in that seat. You know, I, I had been in college, but it's such a different different beast than, than the college game. Um, and I think the biggest thing for me is just consistency day in, day out. That's what guys want. These guys are superstars. They got all this stuff going on, millionaires dealing with money, families. Um, you know, they have a bunch of issues they're dealing with, so they need their coach to be consistent, have a plan get them straightened out and uh, give them a chance to be successful. Didn't they bury you because you were having cell phone breaks? Remember that? Yeah. Uh -huh. you were oh, yeah. The guy. Cause, yeah. Cause yeah, now it's like 
in vogue, right? It's in vogue. You're a trailblazer. So, I mean, I like to think so. <laughs> I like to think so. No, that was a real thing that happened. Everybody was like, oh, he's doing cell phone I breaks. Know. This guy's out of college. What does he even know? Well, guys are on their phones in a meeting. So you were actually just designating a time. Hey, if we get 15, 20 minutes here, you'll be able to do whatever you want. That type of young head coaching mindset has kind of captivated, I think, a lot of owners. Now, you are out here at the Combine, obviously. Uh, McVay said, I ain't fucking going. Yeah. He's on a yacht right now. Yeah, that's <laughs> good. Yeah. McVay's on when a you, yacht. When you, you win the Super Bowl, you get that type of juice. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. You know, he's he told us he's back watching film. He can be more much more productive than in Indy. And then we see him on the yacht. So <laughs> crushing it. I mean that's uh Shanahan though, he also did yeah. not come. Now then these are all, all people in your division. Yeah. And then uh Bob Sala also didn't come from the Jets. And yeah. a lot of people are like, uh Rams just won a Super Bowl, Niners doing they don't have any picks, I think. Uh, but Bob Sala, he's not coming. They have four picks in the first 35 picks or whatever. What's that all about? Do you think as a coach, like the combine is more so a general manager scouting atmosphere environment? Is that And why are you here if all your friends are not here, you think? Yeah, we, we have um, some, some say in the process, I think, at Arizona. I'm not sure how it's set up at most places, but it, it's good for me to get around and um, see the kids in person, look them eye to eye, do the interview process. But I, I get the X's and O's part from a coaching pers perspective. You can be a lot more productive in the office when you're talking about your current team and trying to um, get better schematically. Yeah, but you love coming to Indy, huh? Love it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, I, like, I like this place. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say that. Go ahead, AJ. <laughs> Cliff, you mentioned uh, all the – there's a WWE, like, element to some of the things that float around your guys' program. How do you know what to address and what to just let go? Like, some things you're going to have to shoot down. Some things you're like, all right, whatever, man. That's so crazy. I'm not even going to mention it. Like, how do you guys decide? Yeah, that's a great point. I, I – pretty much let most of it go. I think if you, if you address it, sometimes you give it wings and almost look like you're denying or, or worried about it. Um, so we haven't had too much that, that has gotten out of control. But um, when you see things like after the season, like you're about to get fired, had some huge, you know, blow up with the owner and it's just completely false. You're like, I don't know where they got that from, but I didn't know you were going to get fired. Was that something that was happening? Yeah, oh. I think that was kind of how it was insinuated. Oh, whoa, shit. Yeah. What? Did, Sh did Shregs report that? Yeah, what's Shregs all about? Shreg. I just wanted him to come and hang out with me. So I'm like, yes, he's done. He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, for that type of money they're paying, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, talk, we'll talk after this. <laughs> yes. yeah, they didn't pay me that much in Arizona, I can assure you. Yeah, I mean, you go get away a couple wins there. 20 million will always be there. That's a new standard. Shout out to McVeigh, by the way, yeah. and Troy, Amen. and Tony, you know, for all of us when oh, we potentially Amen. retire from what we're currently doing, no that's doubt. great they news for everyone. Uh, Shregs, whenever you're, you know, as tight as you are with Cliff and yeah. all these other people, and you're on TV every single morning, how do you not just get yeah. yourself into shit every single time? It's tough. I think I walk the line pretty well, and it's, it, a lot of times Cliff won't tell me the football stuff, and it's by design to not put me in that position, and I also feel like with Sean and with some of these other coaches that I've, you know, publicly done things with media-wise... A part of it is trust that, you know, I'm never going to put you in a tough spot. You're never going to put me in a tough spot. But when there are things that are wrong, I'd like to address that. And oftentimes it's from not only his side, but I'll, I'll talk to the ownership side, too. So it's it's navigating a lot of different waters. But, uh, you know, to the end of the day, these are real friendships that I have with these guys. And I'm never going to ruin that for a scoop or for something that I think is going to advance my own career. <laughs> wow. Good guy. Good guy. Good guy. Good guy. Good guy. That's it. You guys exactly. have a handshake? No handshake? Yeah. No, I, thought, I thought there was going to be like a choreographed <laughs> handshake right there. Compton the wand. No, but we think about this. Whenever you break something or have an information, we're like, okay, he's tight with insert name of whoever mm -hmm. you are, your crew, this crew mm -hmm. you're tight with. Whenever Rossini breaks something, we're like, okay, she's dialed in at these places. So you kind of have to take like every single piece of information from whoever it is. Who do they know? How do they know the entire thing? Ian Rappaport told us, though, that it's not friends or sources. So I think that is why he didn't walk in here with... <laughs> Anybody well, at all? How it makes sense. He's also boozed up all the time. Yeah, he's boozed. <laughs> that guy's drunk all the time. Anger. He gets it in. He's the man. He's uh, he's a colleague, and I take a lot of. Uh, I go to bed at like eight o'clock out here, and I saw you know Ian texting me. He's like, "I'm so impressed that you're up at this hour." I'm like. Ian gets it in, and he also gets a lot of information from doing it, but he's always ready to go when the lights come on. Yeah, it's good networking for Ian, and his liver pays <laughs> oh, no. quite a toll. Yeah. yeah, But, I mean, every job has its you know downfall or whatever. Speaking of downfall, drama, you talk about it. You guys going to pay Kyler Murray $100 million a year or what? <laughs> that, is, that whole thing is very interesting, right? Is that you and Steve, the way you guys answered it was, hey, business is going to be business. That yeah. was a different form of business that the NFL hasn't seen, especially with a guy who's like Kyler, who's as talented as Kyler. But that has to be something you have to balance, I assume, because you guys got the same agent. He's your quarterback. You're the play caller. How is the relationship, and what do you see it like going forward? Yeah, the relationship is great. And, and 
you know, Steve and I literally banked our careers on him. When you take a guy number one and trade away a top 10 pick from the year before, that's never been done. I mean, you're all in and, and everybody understands that. And the business is the business and um, we're just working through it right now. What do you think happened when D hop got hurt? Cause that guy's a fucking yeah that that yeah. dude animal and even he plays he, hurt too right yeah, like that's yeah. the thing he he is one of the most competitive humans I've ever been around and he wants to ball every single play and he's open every single play <laughs> just so you know but um, when he went out I I think it, it just changes the way people play you you know I probably should have done a better job adjusting the offense but he is uh, he's a weapon whether he's inside outside man he he's a difference maker do you think uh, play calling you've gotten better managing you've gotten better do you think every, every all aspects of coaching gotten better and what do you think you still need to kind of dial it in because you are still young in this game yeah I'd say all of it um, you know you try and get better every day but it, the, the NFL game is drastically different just the schematics of it the size of the field all these things I'm still um, oh you know, size of field hash marks Nobody yeah talks hash, about that. hash marks the way you can do things and the tempo you know guys you can get them going pretty fast but the pros don't want to go as fast as college we're kids, adults, right? dude. <laughs> yeah, hey, we're adults, like 12 year pros trying to get them to line up in the ball but um no i think the biggest thing is just continue to um figure out how you can maximize each team each year you know you got to just practice plans you got to do different things uh how do you motivate them differently and um each group is, is vastly different a great accent I mean that. Yeah, right? unbelievable. I mean, it is, I'm so jealous. It is. Yeah, it used to be super heavy, super Texan. What well, did you have to get rid of that? No, I think it's just naturally living everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is super Texan? She's way down there. I mean, like <laughs> super country. Like that. Yeah. I learned oh. outside. Your dad's a marine. Yeah. <laughs> is he a Texan marine? He is. Oh, Jesus. John. Double whammy. So oh, my God. Hardcore individual. That guy eats leather. <laughs> oh, he no is doubt. ready yeah. to just there's battle no it all day. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, AJ. Speaking of your dad, do you get, uh, like, does he call and text you after games and try to give you some inside like, info or let you know what you did wrong? Yeah, he, he used to. When I first got, like, the head coaching job at Texas Tech, and then that kind of blew up. After a couple of tough losses, I'm like, all right, we're good on that. So now, okay, it's all supportive. It's all, hey, hang in there, doing great, all those things. Love you. So he's, uh, he's, uh, he's my biggest fan. Great, get, great person. You get lonely at the top, right? I, I feel like the head coaching position does get a bit lonely because even if you hire people that you're friends with as assistant coaches, you're the one that's going to have to eat all of that. Is that something that, like, your circle, the people you keep around you, you find very important? And obviously, Shregs is probably one of those. But who do you lean on whenever shit's not going as well? Because there was a time, what, two years ago, you guys had flash. I'm, I'm counting the season just ended yeah. as last year. Yeah. Two years ago. There was flashes of that yeah. team being, okay, awesome. Inconsistency happened. Yeah. Then this upcoming, and it's last year, you bring in JJ, you bring in AJ. It sounds like everybody's going all in. You guys are getting hot and you're going. Then you guys hit a little bit of a rough patch there. Who do you lean on? Is it just you and yourself and your, your dry erase board? Or how does that whole thing go on? Yeah, I mean, my dad, um, you know, he, he's there for me more than anybody. Um, and it, it's hard to share some of those, you know, insecurities you may have with other coaches, right? You don't want to show weakness. And so that that's tough, guys are actually in the the chair but my, my dad's always been kind of my biggest fan and uh, my biggest kind of support group hey like it's whenever the sky is fall everybody knows the nfl is week to week there's no doubt man no you it's, i assume it's, you experience a backup it's quarterback madness. to this yeah, yeah. now like week to week you are either on the hot seat or you're the greatest coach of all time there's no doubt that's no real. Doubt. How do you avoid all that? How do you? I, I think you just you trust the process. You know, mine's you just dive into the process. You work as hard as you can, and, and you don't come up and, and read all over to look all of it. And you just be consistent in what you do day in day out. What's up with Shregs saying you should be fired after? Yeah, yeah, what the hell's that? Crazy. About? Shregs, journalism, <laughs> just you know. <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, Cliff, I feel like one of the most like unfair um, things that people bring up about you is that you had Patrick Mahomes at Texas Tech, and yeah. then you know he obviously goes and does whatever with the Chiefs, but. Was do you think he was the same guy then as he is now, or has he actually matured a bunch? Because I feel like anytime you guys are struggling, it's there's some bullshit. It's like, well, you know, this guy couldn't win with yeah. Patrick Mahomes, so how is he going to win now? Yeah, that that's a great um, question, Patrick. Just watching him year in, year out, from when we got him in Texas Tech to where he is now, the leadership, the work ethic, the preparation is unbelievable how it's developed. And, and that's the biggest thing I see. You watch those guys on his team, and they die for him. You know, the way they pick him up, if he's ever on the ground, the way they play for him. Um, but, you know, when he was our quarterback, we did average about 45 points a game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were still doing our thing. Don't get it twisted. Uh, but, yeah, he, he's fantastic, man. I, I'm, you know, 
every time I get a chance to watch them, it's, it's just you never know what you're going to see. Did you know he was that when you was, when we were recruiting him as a high school kid? Like, did you have a idea? Because I got to think that oh, all the big Drake. schools, Texas, USC, all of them were probably after him, right? Yeah, they, they weren't. Um, he was a big baseball player, and I think everybody thought he was going to go that Cause direction. Dad, yeah, because right? his dad, and that's what everybody said. He's going to play baseball. And he was real raw. He'd just get the ball and go out there and dominate. But it didn't look like maybe you'd want to look. It wasn't the tight three-step drops. You know, he'd drop it down and throw it here. But I went to a game when I knew I was like, this is something special. I went to the uh, game and he had, I think, like six touchdowns in the first half. And I'm like, okay, we got it. <laughs> and then, um, you know, after his junior year, this, this is – great on me after his junior year they they send the grades and it comes back to like second or third round i'm like this is crazy this is the best dynamic player i've ever seen right so i fly down with our little entourage and have all these like spreadsheets and things to show him why he should come back to texas tech right <laughs> and so like he entertained it he entertained it but i could tell the whole time he's like come on coach and then he, <laughs> coach, and coach, and then he goes money. then he goes number 10 in the draft and it's like the greatest player in the nfl <laughs> but i'm the one talking to him into coming back so i look like the bad guy I'm like patrick i swear to god they told me second or third round you know and by the way you've been an nfl quarterback before you understand it you actually talked there about something about patrick mahomes whenever he's down his teammates pick him up like that culture is such a big deal. We talked to Lovey Smith about it yesterday. Mm -hmm. I've talked to everybody about it because the combine, obviously, hey, this dude runs a four of this, he jumps this, right. he can do all this shit. Uh, that culture in the locker room, I think as a player, you understand this, but a lot of executives, I don't think, there was a time where nobody cared about that. Building a team is such a big deal. You think that's why like JJ was brought in, like AJ's brought in, and how do you continue to you know, like kind of bring that entire locker room together, you think? Yeah, that, that was the kind of thinking behind it. We knew we had a really good young nucleus, but we needed to bring in, you know, Rodney Hudson at center, JJ oh. Watt, AJ Green. I mean, guys in different position groups. That, oh yeah, that was out of the Raiders, right? You guys yeah. traded, yeah. that uh -huh. came out of there. He was cut, then yeah. he was traded. Yeah. Yeah. I remember yeah, that's that. That's a whole other story we can't get into, but. Um, <laughs> Um, he, uh, yeah, bringing those guys in with some of the really young, talented players we, we thought would, would be a good mesh, and it was. Um, but the locker room was huge, man. If, if you got that and you got a group that can police that, you got a chance. What is JJ like? Just crazy? Is he just all the time eat, work? It's out? like, yeah. it's literally like Captain America in the building. It's like Mr. Incredible walks around, everybody straightens up when JJ's there. <laughs> and it was, I'm telling you, it was like a day after a playoff loss. He's in there crushing the weights like he's in the hot tub at 5 30 a.m he stays till noon it's insane i mean well, the the well, drive is insane yeah dude he had like a career ender then he came back yeah. to the playoffs yeah. so nobody's yeah. ever Impossible. done it all the doctors like nobody's ever done this what, what are you doing but the shoulder like healed i mean it, it, <laughs> they, 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 they couldn't believe what they were saying go ahead aj quick when you're at the combine you're talking to these guys in those little 15 20 minute interviews is there really a do you have a chance to tell like hey would this guy fit in with the culture of our team like in our locker room mm. I you think, do a mini hoop basketball? I think we yeah. should. We should see how they handle the pressure. Um, the, I think you get an initial impression of, you know, are they authentic? Are they kind of going by a script? I mean, obviously, you get a little bit of knowledge of their X's and O's, but it, it's hard to tell in, in that short of a sense. So we try to bring the ones in on a 30 visit. You spend a few more days. What's a 30 visit? You, you have 30 guys that you can bring in um, pre-draft and spend the night, go to dinner, things like that. And, and to me, in a comfortable setting like that is when you really get to kind of see who they are. Phoenix is awesome. Oh, so good. Yeah. We so love good. I love Phoenix. I'm telling you. I put over Phoenix anytime we get a chance to talk about the Cardinals. I go, and they're in a city. Yeah. Fifth largest in America and absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Did no. you know about Phoenix before you went there? And then when you got there, you're like, oh, shit. Oh, I'm in heaven in a desert. This is incredible. I used to be a big fan of the Scottsdale W as a younger <laughs> man. So, still a fan, but just don't, <laughs> don't frequent it as much. It. But, yeah, I would, get, I would get to Scottsdale as much as possible. Um, so when I had that opportunity, I mean, you know, there's only a few locales in the NFL that are, like, prime living as well yes. as the football. Indianapolis, Phoenix. Yeah, no question. We'll throw <laughs> India in there. <laughs> <laughs> that drug lord ever come and ask for his house back? Yeah, let's yeah. talk about the house. I mean, that's the coolest house of all time, the coolest dude of all time. Yeah. I mean, what oh, a life there. It. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. You still living there? Yeah, still living there. How? Like, what do you do? I, I have it like, I'm the man? Or? I have it pocket listed because the market's just gone insane. So I'm like, if somebody wants to pay me to move, I'll move. But <laughs> they got, they're going to have to pay prime dollar. Oh, yeah? So prime dollar, yeah. It, it's prices are going insane out there right now. Well, before they get too crazy, I'd like to have a conversation. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, I've told you that I enjoy the hell out of the it walls. Is. Wow. Dude, okay. look how fucking That's cool you shit. look, Cliff. Yeah, look, there's like five phones I put out there. Like, I went super extra on the photo. Like, <laughs> I, I was asking, like, our assistant, give me your phone, give me your phone. Then I. <laughs> I turn the fire on and it's like 4 p.m. You can see, and it's 100 degrees. It's like, <laughs> April. 
But I'm like, all right, we're going to do this. We're going to do it right. Uh, you looked so, awesome. No, uh, the it. team has been great. And obviously, I learned through Eric Burkhardt's letter in which he spo- uh, spelled the word choose is wrong. <laughs> that you guys <laughs> have. What game. up, baby? Interesting. Hey, yeah. double another O in there. Asked for a few hundred million dollars. Let's spell words right. <laughs> Proof. Now, granted, he was in the middle of negotiating this yeah, guy's deal. Right. So yeah. he's a little bit busy. But I did learn through there. You guys have won three more games each season, basically. What do you attribute that to? What, 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 why do you think you guys have, you know, really taken a step? Because there's a lot of programs that hire a new coach, get a new quarterback, and they just go to the shits, you know? I guess ownership being all in, bringing in more players has to help. But what do you attribute it to, like, the growth in the, the team? Yeah, up? I think, you know, when you get the first pick of the draft, you know where you're starting, and um, you have a young quarterback, and, and you just try and build it around him and, and make him as comfortable as possible. And Kyler's gotten dramatically better each season, and Steve's done a great job of bringing in pieces to, to really help him. What made him better? You know, I think just the number of reps. I think the game slowed down for him tremendously. Um, watching him play and get through his progressions and find his checkdowns, understanding protections, understanding the NFL defenses, um, the game's just really slowed down for him. Yeah, he is electrifying. There was that one, what was that? That, that when I, I fall in love, he did the little, little stutter time. Yeah. In the open field with, like, I think, a safety. I, I don't think it was like a linebacker. He, was yeah. a, he did a stutter step and the guy didn't even touch him and he did like this thing. I'm like, oh, there's only a few humans on earth that can do <laughs> what he can do right there. I assume it's tough for you. You, whenever you have a human joystick at quarterback, not to get mm-hmm. a, insane, is that something for you that you have to remind yourself when you're calling plays? It is. It is. We know he's not the biggest guy. Obviously, it's not like Lamar that can take that pounding. You know, Josh Allen. So we pick our spots, and he does a great job of protecting himself. He's always been the smallest guy on the field. So there's been that self preservation that that he's learned when he's playing the game. Do you like the? Uh... Yeah, he's got some swag to him. Yeah. He's got a whole uh-huh. market. He's clever. <laughs> What's up, dude? You part face clean? You haven't been signed? I'm not. Fuck it. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm good. I, I support him, obviously, but yeah, I don't I don't play games. Yeah, I mean it. <laughs> Whoa. Well, not, video games. Yeah, yeah, video games. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm good. I'm, yeah, pretty good in other areas. That was one of the coolest things I've ever heard there. I, I don't play, I don't play no, games. No, never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cliff, you were in New England as a player, and then you and Belichick had that exchange this year yeah. with the Coach of the Year yeah. thing. Uh, do you and him talk often about like coaching, and when you first got in, did you seek him out? Out for advice or anything like uh, that? Not a ton, but but he's always been great to me. I'll text. I, I don't want to bother him. He's kind of like, I mean, that dude that you're kind of nervous to text <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, like yeah, bother. Yeah. Evil yeah. Empire. Yes, yeah. that guy. Well, um, but he's, he's not he's, evil, he's, but you get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But well, he's, he's, kind of, kind of, kind of. he's been great to me. I mean, anything I need, questions, any of that, he's been fantastic. And he's really like that with, with any of the young coaches. You know, they all have stories that how he's helped out. And what you see with the media on screen is a lot different than what we see. Ian, mm-hmm. like, how do you not get intimidated by some of these coaches that have been around for so long? Especially when you're coming from Texas Tech to USC, right in the – like, was there a time where you had to find yourself as what you were going to be as an NFL head coach? I'd assume that it was something that you had to figure out. It, it is, yeah. I think – and you're still kind of figuring it out, you know, just going into year four. Um, you obviously show respect to all those coaches and the great things they, they've done. And at the end of the day, it's football, and you do the best, best job you can. Yeah, because everybody says when you become a head coach, you try to take from everybody that you were either under or a part of, but you're so fucking young. Like, you didn't get the – the tree wasn't as long. But as a player, I assume, you took from a lot of – is that is it, like, coaches that you played for that you try to replicate, or are you just kind of kind of scoop from everybody? Yeah, uh, played for. Um, I tell everybody, you know, when I was going through and you're bouncing around teams, you're like, why is this happening? I should be getting a break, you know, all that. But looking back, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. It was like a Ph.D. in football. I think I probably learned 10 different – offenses from different places, got around 10 different head coaches. How do they do different things? How do they operate? And the things you thought worked, you, you took. And, and I've tried to kind of mesh those together. You still sling it or no? Yeah, I can still sling it. Football. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Two yeah. Part, two Not parter. as much. Yeah. Two, <laughs> two parter, you're obviously busy. So do you shop for yourself because you look incredible all the way from head to toe? Great question. Thank and you. then secondly, uh, big news today was Kenny Pickett, eight and a half inch hands for hand size. Obviously, you guys aren't really looking for a quarterback in the right. first round, but does that matter to you guys at all when you're looking at quarterbacks? Yeah, I think th- there's something you had to look at. Um, I had smaller hands when I played, and you know, you get up there in New England, one of those places, it's it's tough, you know. Um, but that that kid's a great player. He played in Pittsburgh, so yeah. he's probably used to it. And then, yeah, I shot for myself. That's awesome. But but I do custom. I'll do some custom shit. So. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, you look super myself. cool, dude. I appreciate that. No, man. I hope you know. You look super cool. <laughs> yeah, I think you do, too. No, no, no. <laughs> you, got, you got a great look. No, th- thank you. Yeah. Wow. Hey, you too, dude. Damn, here one. we go. Dude, I do yeah. look cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Shranks, Pelissero just said they're suspending all COVID-19 stuff, Uh-oh. basically. Uh, so we beat COVID. Shout out to us. Did it, yeah. Did it again. Shout out to us. Shranks, what does that mean? What does that mean? There's just nothing else going on? Or no, or? I think that you know the doctor who runs it all is this guy Stills. Named Dr. Alan Stills. He's great, actually. He yeah. told Fotch, hey, we'll yeah. do football. No, yeah, but we did, we did find a way <laughs> to work within the CDC guidelines and also push it forward. So, I mean, we're at the combine. We've been wearing masks a lot, and when we're on air, we can take them off. And you even saw I came in here. I don't know how that's receptive in India. I was wearing a mask, and I'm like, because we're just trying to do what's best and what's right, but we're going to follow the, the, the science. And the NFL was, when, it, when baseball and other sports were like, let's pack it in, it's not going to happen. NFL was like, let's try and let's see. And let's, here we are. Two seasons, no missed games. We figured it out. Hey, by the way, you can wear a mask anywhere you want to. You do whatever the hell you People want. You got most of the Santas yeah, yeah. around. Yeah, well, no, the Santas yeah, is yeah, going to take that fucking yeah, yeah, thing yeah, off, yeah, 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 Stryker. Yeah, yeah, we were yeah, talking about you being in here in Indy. Cliff just wanted to be like, yo, he's a huge wrestling fan. So he was like, I just want to talk wrestling with Pat. I was like, that's amazing too. Well, I do appreciate that. And I'm a big wrestling fan as well. So it tells me a lot about you immediately. Fact, By the way, I think you can find out a lot about somebody if you know they're a wrestling fan. How they view life probably, how they understand like, hey, some bad shit might happen and you just gotta kinda move along and be entertained. Have you always been a lifelong WWE fan? Because in that seat, in an hour and 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Though, that's VKM. Yes, yeah. uh-huh. right Legend. here, dude. I know, he doesn't come out like that. Ever. Ever. I'm, I'm pretty impressed and surprised <laughs> that it's even happening. Once again, I have no idea if he's walking in here punching me in the face or not. And until he's boots in the building, mm-hmm. I still don't think it's actually yeah, happening. But yeah. have, you, have you always been a wrestling fan? I have, yeah. I have an older brother, and we, we would grow up watching it. Um, and we, like I told you earlier, we didn't have that much money. My, my parents were both teachers, so the pay-per-view wasn't an option. But Saturday Night Main Event was – it was – Back then, they would wrestle a great guy versus like Barry Horowitz. You yeah, over there. Right. They just throw him out the ring and press him and shit. And then Saturday Night Main Event actually had good matches. So that was like a big night in our house. We, yeah, we awesome. get to stay up late. I'm so pumped that you're a wrestling fan, that yeah. you're the coolest looking dude of all time. And it seems like you just got broken <laughs> off. <laughs> Yeah. Everything is going good in your life right now. What's the next couple months look like? Obviously, you got combine and everything. Do you take any time off for yourself, or is that time already passed? Yeah, it already passed right after the season. Uh, coaches get a couple weeks, and then we're back in a free agency, and, and then it'll be draft prep. What you do? Just like walk around that house. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. It's honestly hard to leave Scottsdale that time of year because it's so nice, man. You can hang out, golf, go to the pool, all that stuff. But I, I just got out of town for a little while. You a good golfer? I'm not. I, I used to be. And then when I got in coaching, I just don't have time to be good. McVay's out there on yachts. Why aren't yeah. you doing yeah. that? Yeah. He, he won, yeah, he won the Super Bowl. So <laughs> that's, that's how that shit goes. You got I, I just came to me. There was a hit, like a multiple, multiple hit. As, does anyone fly around like Buddha does? No, like, no. He is an absolute animal. He does it at practice, too. I mean, he flies around. I'm terrified he's just going to blow and everything? Up. Yeah. I mean, terrified he's just going to blow up a scout team receiver every day because he plays that hard. Uh, his preparation, the work ethic, it's insane. But, yeah, the way he plays the game, it inspires all of us. No, Nobody wants to leave that team, I feel like. With the way Arizona is, the way the city is, the way the team said, it feels like everybody wants to be there from what we've talked to. Aside, obviously, business has to get handled. Yeah, it feels no like a lot of people want to be in Arizona. Yeah, I hope so. I think we have a great nucleus, great place to live, and uh, we feel like we're, we're continuing to build that thing. Go ahead, AJ. Cliff, how nice is it to not have to recruit players anymore? <laughs> I tell everybody, and I'm not just making this up, I would do anything before I went back to that. Like, I would do any job. Yeah, I'm, I'm in here. The fun house. I'll be in the fun house with y'all. Um, but it's just, it's full time now with the social media, and you're either tweeting, calling, FaceTiming, and there's like this constant anxiety because if you're not doing it, the university down the street is, you know, and it just never goes away. So this part, when you're done with the football, you're done. You go live your life. College, it just never goes away. See, and I, AJ and I have talked a lot about this. Like if some 17 year old tells me he's not coming, I don't care. You right. know, it's not yeah. like I'm going to like, Hey, you're you, who the fuck knows what you were going to end up being? I do not care if you're not coming, but that can't, you got to absolutely lie. No and you got to, you got to like baby face the, every one of these kids, right? You got to act like they're going to be the next NFL great. That's it. And now they're paying them. So I can't even imagine that dynamic. When I was coaching, you didn't have this NIL stuff. And how come you didn't do this? How come you didn't ever do this? This made yeah. me, you know what I mean? Oh, yes. Look at it right here. It's right in front of you. Got all the five stars. <laughs> yeah. right here. Like I said, I would do anything. Else. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, Shregs, what's the rest of the week look like? Should we look forward to more news breaking yeah. as the yeah. week unfolds here? Absolutely. NFL news for sure, but uh, tonight, starting at 4 p.m. Eastern, the combine really starts. It's oh, yeah. the quarterbacks, the wide receivers, and the tight ends. And I'm honored enough and excited. I'll be on the calls. Oh, oh there we go. <laughs> you doing play by play or color? I'll be doing a little bit of color, a little analyst stuff. So it's going to be Eisen, Daniel Jeremiah, uh, Chris Rose, Charles Davis, myself up there in the concourse. So I'm, ex- I'm excited. I've been doing a lot of work. I've been, you know, peppering guys all around the league. Like, what do you think of this guy? What do you think of this guy? And to actually see these kids kind of go and chase their dreams. I know I'm a, it sounds a little bit Pollyanna, but like, I love this shit. The draft is so cool. It's a kid that no one was talking about a week ago. Plays piano. Could be, uh, yeah, sure. Yes, piano. Poly could, pianos? Could be is... like the guy. And, I love the opportunity for these kids right now. Just real quick, we're very <laughs> pumped for you. Yeah. We think you're going to crush it. You said a word in there. Pollyanna. Let me explain. Pollyanna is like, do, 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 do. Like, I'm so in the clouds. Everything's so lovely. Oh. It's almost like. Euphoric. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, naive. Euphoric. Babe in the woods, if you will. He said, ah. AJ said naive. He's trying to make it negative. You're yeah. not naive. No, I don't go there. No, you're happy. No, he's not naive. By the way, I hear him. That's great. Yeah, oh yeah he's in the cloud. He's Molly in your head, actually. Uh, we can't thank you guys enough. Cool. You both got great work. Thank you for stopping by. You're an incredibly cool dude. <laughs> I appreciate that. Congrats man. on the thank success. You. Hey, the NFC beast over there. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Hey. Yeah. I mean, that's a great first place to have your first head coaching gig, I guess. Oh, three out of the four teams are just going to go, and then the Super Bowl champion is going to be here. That t- That is a tough – I mean, that has to be something you think about on a very regular basis. Like, oh, oh no it'd be doubt. great to be in another division, right? Yeah, now. I mean, <laughs> this year, right, Rams, 49ers, NFC championship game, and both, like, whiz kid genius head coaches. And then we made the playoffs. Seattle, they have one of the great coaches of all time. So it's like week in, week out, it is a battle. But it makes you better. Do you follow, like, the Russell news and stuff like that to see what you're potentially having to square off against two times a year, or do you think it's all bullshit outside? I, I think – I mean, the dude's phenomenal. So I, I think they'll do anything they can to keep him there. I mean, you never know what's behind door two. You but know? you would be pumped if he oh, is. I would be. Th- I'd pray for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that guy is phenomenal. Yeah, he's very good at the football. Real quick, last question. I wasn't planning on asking this because I know you guys have to go and you have actual work to do. You said two whiz kid guys. What is it about you young guys, you think, that is like offensive, make you guys wizards? Is it because you're not like um, – like stubborn? Is it because you're not stubborn? What do you think it is? It's just growing up in the game. What do you think it is? Why you guys, Zach Taylor, I guess, is getting thrown in there as yeah. well. That like the young offensive crew. Why? What makes you guys different? You think? Yeah, I, just watching Kyle and Sean from afar, um, Zach as well. Just they kind of take what they learn and they're always evolving and innovating. And then more than anything, maximizing the personnel. I mean, the stuff the Kyle shit did with um, Debo was unbelievable. You know, he How turns about into running back. into fucking uh, Trent Williams, yeah. Trent yeah. Williams yeah. in yeah. motion. I mean, all that stuff. They, they Week in, week out, just following their stuff, it's, it's phenomenal. I just think that's it. They, they um, have open minds and they're not afraid to be innovative. Well, I can't wait to watch what you do, man. And uh, the fact that you think I'm the most fashionable person on earth. <laughs> Pretty good. That, that also is a good get. sweet little day here yeah. starts this Thursday. Mm-hmm. Uh, we appreciate you both so much. Have an incredible combine week. Cliff, honor to meet you. Shregs, great to see so you cool in person. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll get to a break. On the other side, we'll be back without Cliff Kingsbury and Peter Schrager. Yeah. Yeah. See you in about four minutes. We'll answer some phone calls on the 5 Energy phone line, one 833 4 And also, there's some other stuff to talk about. COVID protocols out of the NFL. See you. We did it. Hell yeah. Come on. It's awesome. And also some other news going on behind the scenes. We can't wait to chat with you. We'll see you in four. McAfee. You're hired. Vince McMahon. This is a self-made billionaire that turned something from a local situation to a worldwide phenomenon. I'm a massive documentary fan. I enjoy the hell out of people that revolutionize the world. Getting a chance to have that moment with Vince McMahon is one of the main reasons why I was like, I have to do this. I've been watching documentaries. Firm handshake. Big announcement! Vince McMahon, the WWE Chairman, will be live in studio Thursday on my show, Michael Cole. Vince McMahon, bang! Gonna be in the same seat right over here that wow. Bob Blake yes. was in. Where the hell have you been? I just saw a picture of you getting out of, I think, a 757 that was from Jim Ursay. What was that? And have you ever been in that plane before? I, I thought it was like a, the team plane to fly all of the Indianapolis Colts. <laughs> I, uh, 
literally, I mean, it's got the logo on it, uh, Pat, and uh, it was awesome. But uh, look, that's just Jim. Pat, I had a wonderful 14 years there. It, I, it's obviously the team that I wanted to play for always. I, I understood the, the, the decision he had to make and no hard feelings. And uh, for him to send his plane to fly me and my son down here, uh, it, it was a great, great gesture. A lot of room for me and Marshall. We were throwing the football. <laughs> <laughs> So pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty cool experience. Pretty cool father-son weekend. By the way, as he's moving from event to event right now, <laughs> you are the best, dude. Where are you headed right now? I'm going to the game. I'm going to the game. I got Lynch. I got Fanica. I got these guys in the background. Boys, so, uh, how you? Congratulations! Yeah. Congratulations, boys! All right, Peyton. Oh, hey, there he is, Marshall. I hope you enjoyed that plane, pal. Hey, Peyton, last thing here. Um, you talking to Tom Brady, you becoming friends with him. Uh, it was interesting to watch. Oh, yeah, take the photo. Take the photo. <laughs> 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 All right, we will wrap this up. Well, I'll tell you, Pat, um, I don't think anybody can do what, what Tom has done. Look, I know how hard it was for me to get on the same page with my receivers, learn a new system, learn new coaches. But I had a full off season. I was injured, I was rehabbing. The fact that Tom has done this in a COVID pandemic off season, no time to meet with his receivers. He met with his coaches illegally by breaking into Byron Leverage's <laughs> house. Uh, so besides that, uh, it's been incredible what he's been able to accomplish. And uh, he deserves all the credit. His leadership is, is what's put the Bucks in this game today. And uh, I have great respect for him because I know how hard it is, but uh, he deserves all the credit. Hey, how did you know Red 18 was coming? Pat, I mean, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you telling that story and, and just growing the legend. That was about the 18th time I tried it. I was <laughs> 17 going into that. And, you know, when it doesn't hit, you just keep walking. And nobody ever really tells you about it. So when it hit, I was as surprised as you were. And uh, the reaction from, from some of the... Some of the good old folks there in the casino that night was uh, pretty special. Well, I appreciate you doing that. You made me and those folks in the casino a bunch of money. Congrats on the Hall of Fame nod. Thank you for spending time. Enjoy yourself at the game, Peyton. Pat, thanks, pal. I appreciate you. The, sh you. the Sheriff Hall of Famer, Peyton May. Hey! Hey, welcome back to the show here on this. Oh my God, Vince McMahon is in studio Thursday, March 3rd, 2022. Look for Vince McMahon to arrive here around 2.15 okay. p.m. Eastern <laughs> Standard Time. Excited to see how this all pans out. AJ Hawk, what a stupid day for this dumb little regional show. Uh, it's pretty uh, pretty amazing. I, I'm, I'm excited to watch as a fan, so it should be fun. So Aaron Rodgers, obviously, would come on and chat with us. Brock Lesnar comes through here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, still got the headsets up or after. So. Shout out. Never going anywhere. He's one told me I should get back on keto, by the way. He said, he said I've been doing keto for eight years. And I said, all right, I do it for uh, how many months to get the football season, so I'm not a fat ass. Then. I, guess, <laughs> I guess I can do that entire thing. Now we got Vince McMahon coming in here, dude. Mm -hmm. Why? Unreal. Hey, I'm pretty proud of us, man. Hell yeah. Crazy. Pretty proud of us, AJ. And you have Dewey, old Dwayne The Rock Johnson, said he was going to come in eventually, right? Yeah, and as a kid that grew up, obviously, as a massive wrestling fan, like this is a huge deal. And then Cliff Kingsbury just comes in here as the coolest guy of all time. Did you expect that? Have you met him before? Yeah, I've met him. Uh, yeah, Cliff's the man. He's he's awesome. That's pretty much dude. what I expected. This guy. Of course, he smokes a guy. Yeah. AJ's tackled him before as well. I oh, played really? against Cliff. My freshman year, Cliff was like a Heisman candidate, and he was a senior. I was a freshman. I got in garbage time late and got to hit him actually on the sidelines uh, at the end of the game. So oh. he was a Heisman candidate. You got in garbage time late. You guys were up a lot. Yeah. He didn't win the Heisman. He sounds like he no, didn't no. win the Heisman. No, he had a hell of a year, though. Hell of, he hell of a hey, year. listen, I understand he had a hell of a year, but, like, I mean, you got to tackle a Heisman candidate. Would you go back to your dorm room when you were a mutant and just, like, were super happy, or how did that whole thing pan out, you think, after you tackled the coolest guy in the NFL, Cliff Kingsbury? Yeah. 
Well, I didn't tackle him. He'd already gotten rid of the ball. It was a, it would be oh, flag th- these days, no question. I would imagine for what happened, but oh, uh, no, uh, we. I mean, you got to we got to call one of Cliff's game, his last college game. It sounds like his last college game ever as a coach. He he does not want to go back. Hey, I would do anything other than that. He said <laughs> yeah. anything. True, like your the the anxiety problem because. If you want to check out for four hours, you have to be like, oh, no. Like, I, what if this big-time guy we're going after, like, tweets at me? Like, you're like what do an, you do? You're like an insider then at that point. Yeah. Yeah, you basically are. And, you always, like, and you're always on call at all times. And everybody knows if you're going to be successful or not. And everybody that doesn't do your job is going to judge you for how you do at your job, which is, has to be miserable. That's why all these old heads that are still in the game, like, good on. Like, Brian Kelly doing that song and dance with that oh, kid. Oh, my yeah. God. I would never in a million years. I don't care. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, that is sounds so incredibly, I guess, like, stupid and arrogant and everything like that. But if it can't, like, I'm a big, what do you want to do? You want to do that? Okay, cool. Well, good on you. Have fun, man. I hope you have a good time. And in that game, you got to be like, no, let me tell you why yeah. you need to come with me, man. I'm going to turn you into a first rounder. You think that guy's going to turn you into a first rounder? And then the 17-year-old's like, I don't know, let me find out. Walk down the street, send a text. You gonna turn me into a first rounder? Absolutely, and then rattle off a bunch of players. Yeah. It? Then you come. In. It's like you're shopping for a car at all times. Yeah. It's like, well, right down the road, they got the same thing at this. Like, what are you gonna do for this? Now that money's involved, he brought that up. Cliff brought that up. It's like, so not only do you have to out recruit him about how you're gonna be able to set him up for his future in the best possible fashion, as opposed to somebody else, but then you also have to have the right money behind it that somebody else has. What a, m- hey. Thank you to all those coaches that care a lot more than we do. Thank Hell you, yeah. coaches. Thank you, coaches. Well, and they don't even get to, like, you know, Brian Kelly, he signed that massive contract. Like, it's not like he's really getting to enjoy no. any of that. It's almost like, hey, you sign this contract, and then that'll be there for you when you retire. You like, never you enjoy gotta, it. Think about it. You, right. That's the tough thing about a college coach. You win a big, you win one of your biggest games. Oh, this is a prime opportunity for me to call some recruits from the locker room and say, hey, look at me. I just got off the field 10 minutes ago. I'm calling you. That's how valuable you are to this team. Rich Rodriguez told me, uh, you know what I find fun? Kicking somebody's ass. <laughs> oh, yeah. So literally, as we're winning is probably when he's, but he's miserable then too because the refs. Mm-hmm. Right. The refs are, oh, my God. It just never ends for a college coach. Well, and even when you're winning that much, like Mac Brown said, they got to the point at Texas where, you know, the wins were kind of just one of those things where, you know, thank uh, God we won. Yeah, versus when you lose, it's like, you just relieved. Your whole world you're never happens. happy. You're just always yeah. like you win and you're relieved. Like, oh, thank God I didn't lose. Lo- Mac Brown said a loss was devastating. A win was a relief. Mm-hmm. And when you get to that point, that's probably when you're done or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah, probably. And then I wonder if that's going to happen to him again down in North Carolina. They just lost Sam Howe. Uh-huh. Sam Howe went for two for five in the shooting drill with Sirianni. <laughs> Sirianni then opened up a little bit more about the mini hoop this morning to a local show. And he actually said... Hey, you got time, you for, a, time for a story? That's what he said. And uh, I forgot we had Coach Sirianni here somehow <laughs> because I think uh, Foxy's <laughs> bouncing around in the back there. But Coach Sirianni told this incredible story about the mini hoop game. Do we have the video or do we have the video? Okay, here's Coach Sirianni, uh, not in house Coach Sirianni, <laughs> actually Coach Sirianni mm-hmm. talking about the mini hoop combine interview process. Shooting some hoops. Shooting some hoops. <laughs> so we, uh, so we, every guy that walks in there, uh, we have him shoot five shots. And so. Hey, listen, we're trying to find every different avenue to to see what makes this player go, right? And so we're always looking to see what type of competitiveness the guy has, how, what kind of toughness he has, if he loves football, does he have high football IQ, and does he have high character, right? And so if we can get this much out of him shooting and see how serious he takes it or, like, gets pissed or like, – if we get this much, it was worth it, right? And it was fun. And it was fun to do. And so – the other thing it does yeah. is it, you know, it, it, it loosens them up a little exactly. bit. They're going through a lot of, like, so, I mean, I, I'd rather them start with a shot than to be like, hey, slap the table. Like, tell me about when you were in seventh grade, you did this, right? And so this that's kind of the, the it thought is, process. It really is. Um, you know, I go back to my time in Indianapolis. We, uh, myself and, and Gardner Minshew, uh, we shot baskets together. And uh, you guys got time for a quick story? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, so we, we shot baskets together. And I've told this story before, but wow. we shot baskets together, and uh, okay. we just so happened, obviously, to work with each other last right. year. But wow. you know, when he when we shot baskets there, he, uh, he I was winning. I'm a little <laughs> bit better shooter than him. He would tell you that. Um, but I was I was winning the game, and he's in a dress shirt, a tie, and dress pants and dress shoes. He goes, Coach, 
um, you mind if I pop this shirt real quick? I don't think I can beat you if I have the if I have this dress shirt. I said, whatever. So on uh, Garner's uh, draft, or pardon me, his interview with the Indianapolis Colts, he was shirtless shooting baskets in our indoor. And so I saw that competitiveness That's of him. Awesome. And you know what's fun? Because it, it, it does – it gives you a little something. It's a little different, yep. and you're just able to talk to the guy and and, and move on from there. So that's that's, that's why that's how, the why behind it. Mention, how about that from uh, Ari Mirov at My Sports Update Pro Football Focus here at the Combine talking to actual Coach Sirianni. You know, they cut popped the top off. Gardner Minshew <laughs> said, "You know why? Because Gardner and Flint Minshew used to play a little shooting game in the driveway, oh, yeah. right. and he used to get super competitive. He didn't like that he was being held back. Are guys walking around wearing suits to these meetings? I was not to come by. Were you wearing suits in these meetings? I didn't know this happened. I was not. Uh, I wore like the sweats that they give you there to wear, but some people definitely uh, dressed up. I was so confused. Like I, I think Bobby did actually. All of a sudden, he's like, "Hold on, I got to change." He went and he brought a couple different like." full suits and I'm like, man i must have not got the memo because i was wearing the hey, terrible bro. sweats they gave me hey robert sorry about it i'm the fifth overall pick yeah <laughs> no i mean that's i was first what... round pick he didn't he didn't need to do anything but yeah I, uh, there was he wasn't the only one there's a lot of people that dressed up and they said well you know it's Bob? it's a job interview i'm dressing for the, the job i want not the job i have oh i respect that out of bobby carpenter and i bet he did actually say that which is even better you know like that, <laughs> yeah. that is even better that he didn't you didn't make that up for this part of the story so you and bobby same year same draft for both first rounders yeah oh my god i didn't know that no beef at all either. You two loved each other, it seems. No, like. of course. I saw Bob last night. So wh <laughs> when did he go? Uh, he was 18, I believe, to Dallas. Oh, my God. So you guys were – oh, my Peace. God. You guys were a problem. With how toxic you are yeah. and how he is. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. And Schlegs. Oh, uh, in college. Yeah, Schlegs, went, Schlegs went in the third round to the Jets, too, the same year. <laughs> oh, it's you insane. meatheads walking around Columbus in that cult city. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, my. What yeah, a, we time. Had a good time. Yeah, you had to have. And then Mangold, right? Yeah. Mangold, Mangold, was he the same year or was he older or younger? Yeah, Nick was my roommate all four years. Oh, yeah. you guys were yeah. kings of the castle over there. What a time you had. The hair. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, I, I look back and realize, yeah, I'm glad. I, I definitely, we enjoyed it. <laughs> you don't say. And I Like, I wasn't caught. I, oh. That was, it's almost like a different era where they, we could enjoy it. Now, college players, yeah. they can't go anywhere. They can't do anything now. It would suck. Well, now the enjoyment is what? Getting good followers good content making right. money like that's it's a different enjoyment like yeah our enjoyment we were very lucky to be like the last generation almost you're a little bit older than me but yeah i mean going into a club and till like 4 a.m like that is something that used to happen like that used to be and now granted i don't know how our bodies withstood all of that i have no idea how that happened i don't know if the human body is gonna ever have to withstand what it did through our generation at least we're up moving though i always if you went out after a game I'm like you know what it gets this lactic acid yeah, out of my true. legs you know i yeah. gotta be up moving around for <laughs> eight to ten hours after the game and if you're sitting there playing video games you're gonna build up all that lactic acid i get so tired after shit now though like that smackdown yeah. on friday nights mm -hmm. after that oh, i am yeah. dead tired there's people i guess that just go out at the end of the week or whatever i have no idea how we use i just go out like five six times a week i think everybody knows that now at this point i think that's the case i have no clue the and the amount of burning it from both ends that i was doing there that had to take what 20 30 years off my life probably I mean, that's uh, maybe, young body young few. body yeah and people who go out friday half hour i mean cube life i mean you're not tired at the end of the week oh you're just kind of waiting for yeah, yeah. Might have sure. it. they were doing it during COVID. well COVID, they were doing it at their houses right yeah mm -hmm. yeah so they were so pumped to get back out there that when that friday happy hour came around i'm sure everybody was going no but like currently is that still ha is that still a part of the business thing the uh cubicle people because can't those people just do everything from home yeah they are yeah they are but they're still going out and I, they're still doing like uh like friday gatherings like after work no but i'm just talking about the business profession as a whole hybrid it's, hybrid's a big thing has that brand of work stopped has the cubicle stopped now kind no of, no yes. they're back uh, I, I think know. they, but I do think they pretty much it's gave like, a lot or a lot of companies gave people options. It's like, hey, right. you can come back and work if you want. If you want to just fucking work from home, you can do that too. Wow, that's a big deal, right? Not only real estate wise, commercial wise. Mm -hmm. but They found was, out it was greener on the other side to stay at home and do work. Well, and then the people that are in charge, like, oh, we actually have to pay them less because yeah. they're at home yeah, exactly. doing their entire thing. And we don't have to see them and this entire building that we are currently running out we don't really need anymore i want a lot of changes happening people don't just get shit faced uh as regular anymore i mean there's people that are still doing it and i don't know during COVID, i think that jumped up a little bit for a lot of people 
All right, going out and getting shit faced in public. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I like in the cul de sac with your buds. That getting hammered like that. That that skyrocketed. Oh, you're talking about like homeowners association drunks. Yeah. Like hey, block parties. Yes. Hey, we're oh. doing this around here yeah. with the neighbors. Yeah. What? Got a little block party. What? what? Ned's bringing a whiskey. What? Where's it from? What? Canada. What? How did he get Canadian whiskey in what? the middle of? <laughs> Do you think that's what people are doing? That, 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 I, I'm happy I'm past that stage there. I mean, I'll throw back some beers nowadays, I guess. I guess that's something I'm getting back into. Oh, yeah. Uh, it seems like it is a very rare occasion, but you got to do what you got to do there, I guess. Well, and in college, you know, your, your guys' generation, everyone was playing at that level. Because everyone was still going out. And that's why today, since nobody is, the, the level has raised, I believe. Is it, is it like a, a, a small, small group of the youngs are still like going out to clubs and keeping it alive? Or is that not even, or is, is it all just old still at the clubs trying to keep it alive? I think it might be old because I don't, I don't really. I mean, you're a tin whistle every what? Yeah, that's, a, hey, that's a bar. That's, a, that's, well, a that's, that's what we're talking about. Is the, about. Is the, oh, is the crowd young? Is the crowd young or is it old? Oh, uh, yeah, it's younger, but there's a Oh, you're saying clubs are dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Live music bars, good. Sports bars, good. Yes. Clubs, dead. Dead. Pretty sure you go to Vegas, they're still alive. Sure, Vegas. Yeah, Vegas fairy tale land. Yeah, right? Vegas. Vegas is like, oh, let's go take a trip to... That's like, oh, do Vegas. Well, right. Not to mention Merrill Hodge has 50 people in his you know, posse every weekend in Vegas. I will say Vegas is a place, and I'm not even going to start with what you were trying to get to right there. <laughs> what? All right. What? I, I, I'm not even He getting... said it's never going to be the same. Well, uh, he was wrong. Yeah. Certainly wasn't the same at that time. What's that DJ's name? What's that dude's name that I was... Avicii? No, uh, Calvin Rest Harris. Oh, Calvin Harris. Calvin Harris. Oh, yeah. That's the only thing. You, that's Vegas. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's Vegas. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. That's what that's what Vegas is. I, I wonder what it'll Hasn't be. Hasn't Paulie D had a, a residency for like 10 years out there? Still oh, killing it. Dude. Still going on. T-shirt time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jean <laughs> Tan laundry. Pads of hair. Hey, by the way, how's all their families? Paulie D's probably still good if he's doing a residency this long. Yeah, I would imagine. The show's back, actually. Hey, the Gabagool is probably fantastic. Oh, yeah. Show's back? Yeah, another season, I believe. Of Wait, the who's the cast? Family. Same people? Same people, yeah. Family vacation. They're all just wow. old out. Really? Sitch out of jail? Mm -hmm. Who was that girl that kicked out? Oh, yeah. Sitch uh, out Angelina. Jail. She's back. Oh, congrats to her because she was watching everybody else. Yeah, big that had to be That had to be tough for Angelina. Yeah. I, I thought about her a couple times. Yeah. I actually named, uh, there's this dog that was going to get taken to, I believe, a shelter. It was found on, in like a farm. It was presented to me on whether or not I would want it. I said yes, because the dog wrapped around my legs, basically. Mm -hmm. So what am I supposed to do? I was way too young. I'm not supposed to have a dog. Named it Snooky, though, because it had black hair on top, and then had, like, tan legs on the bottom. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. this is interesting. What's that? The story seems to have changed over the years about how Snooky was acquired. Well, Snooky um, is now uh, Tim McAfee's dog. Oh, sweet. <laughs> so, <laughs> it worked out. Yeah, Tim loved that dog, as did I, by the way. Mm -hmm. Snooky and I still and My mom loves Snooky. Mm -hmm. My mom loves Snooky. But, yeah, I was... That Jersey Shore run was awesome. Yeah. That was right when I was in college. And West Virginia was basically a lot of Italians from New Jersey. Like, West Virginia is almost West Virginia University, the New Jersey University of West Virginia for, like, some parts of it. So I got a chance to experience a lot of the Jersey Italians. And I grew up around the Pittsburgh Italians. And that Jersey Shore thing was just a home run for all of it for me. It, I was the demographic that they were pitching it to, and I was in for a couple of years there. It's great to hear they're back, man. Oh, yeah. yeah, I thought they were all, you know, dead. I thought it was all done, but yeah, they're still Mick, yeah. Mick cried, remember? Yeah, what's that? Mick. Yeah. Oh, my God. What? Mick did cry. That yeah. was like last year. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I do remember that. Oh, yeah, sure. Mick got caught up. Something happened. Mid Jersey Shore, dude. That'll yeah, get you every once in a while. It changed the game. I mean, it got like kids like me and Mick into drinking. Like, it really introduced <laughs> us what we were supposed to be hey, doing. Did, did that dude that uh, <laughs> knocked Snooky out, did he get arrested? Did he get in trouble? From the show? I think so. The, whoever the guy arrested, was yeah. that blasted her in the face. Yeah. I was we didn't get a follow up, but I would assume that was the case. At and the bar? Hey, those t shirts, yeah. 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 Oh, those yeah. t shirts they were slinging too, by the way, or the Gildens right there talking oh, about. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that job. Remember they had that job? They out there go work yeah, and make shirts. Sure. Yeah, had to work, man. Don't get on duck yeah. phone and start setting up things for tonight if you ain't going to go to work <laughs> on these shirts. Miami, they're in an ice cream shop. They had some sweet little gigs. Yeah. Italy, they had the pizza shop. Oh, I remember mm -hmm. the pizza. I remember yeah. the pizza. How's, how's the gobble call? What the situation do? Why do you go to jail? Is that uh, tax evasion? Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. That'll always get you. He was the highest paid reality TV star there for a little, ahead of what? Kim Kardashian. Yeah. By the, from the network or just in general? Uh, in general, I believe. 
Really? Yeah. The situation was making like I I clearly I, I did not like the situation, mm -hmm. like not the reason why I'm watching. Yeah, sure. you know? no doubt. But there were some people, I guess, that really loved that guy. Yeah. He's coming full circle too, that guy. He's grown up. Look at him. Yeah. Hey, good for you. He's hey. married. Hey, yeah. hey huh? he's full of dog. One got out of jail, did his thing. Yeah. Happy for all of them, man. That's great, AJ. You were a big fan of that show? Yeah, I was definitely a fan. That's one of the ones where I think like literally everybody was a fan of the show. Oh, yeah. Everyone was watching it's it. Comedy. I'm happy they're still eating off it. We're back in hour two with Brandon Staley of the Chargers. What? what? Yes. And then Vince McMahon in the third hour at some point. That's been interesting. Mm. Why? They updated you on the... Okay. Call him Vinny. Mm. I don't think so. No. I'm, I am going to call him Vince, though. I'm going to call him Vince. Oh, I don't know. Mr. McMahon, I feel like, is what I Vincent? should. Well, if you're setting up a program, you can call him whatever you want. <laughs> you're an idiot. That isn't happening. Oh, I, I'm sorry. That's what I read. <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs> well, there, There's I, a program. Explain to me what a program would be if you were to set up a program. Well, the program would have been on Tuesday. Aaron Rodgers would have came on here and told us what he was doing because that's what I read as well. So who the fuck were you, were you telling that to people? That didn't happen. Hmm. And then, by the know. way, the internet last night, I, I saw some tweets that were like, we are hearing that tomorrow's interview between Pat and Vince, uh, although it will be used to promote WWE programming, which, by the way, Vince McGrann is WWE mm -hmm. programming. programming, right? It is just going to be an interview. It's like, what the fuck? Yes. <laughs> what are we even talking about? Yes. I mean, I'm getting a chance to interview a man for the first time. My, it's insane. It is very dumb. Cliff Kingsbury came in here. Said I look cool? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's the dumbest life of all time, mate. Not as dumb as the life you were living in Columbus, Ohio, obviously. True. But this is the dumbest life of all time. Like, well, by far. And I was reading, too, Austin Theory might be walking through those doors as well. What? I mean, yeah. Seriously? Of, oh, yeah. That was on Raw. Yeah, this guy said he could go. And I'm like, what? What are we What's even doing? About? You can't just have a conversation with him. Wait, so you're going to have two programs? We're having one program. It's this program, and we got Vince McMahon joining us in an hour and four minutes. What's this Austin Theory program that we have going on? <laughs> you don't worry about, about Austin Theory. He tries anything. We'll, we'll take care of that. Yeah, I, oh, I got yeah. a bat. Underneath. Austin Theory's on the Raw program. We got three Kendrick right. sticks waiting to be used. Yeah, we oh, do. I'll kick him in the knee. That's sweet. One of them was autographed. That was supposed to be given away. No, we had to sign another one because that one broke. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I remember that. We do have kendo sticks, though. If anybody, I mean, shit's going to go down, I guess. Like Smash that guitar over some. Put him in a coffin when he's done with him. And a fucking hand. Cross his mm -hmm. chicken wing. Golf club. A, a mallet duff. here. A duffel bowl will work. And a right. fucking rifle behind you, too. Oh, yeah, BB gun, dude. I'll shoot somebody's eye out. That's right. Damn right. All right, we're back in about four minutes or so. Uh, Brandon Staley will be joining us. Let's go. Here we go. Hey, that was really good radio hard out there. I think I got Vince in, so people might expect me to call him Vince. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now you have to. Now I have to. This is a hard out, Vince. Mr. McMahon. It's awesome. See you guys in uh, four minutes. Cheers. Oh my god. It's long. It's very long. Yeah, don't yeah. Smart, it's smart. That's very smart. <laughs> Anybody hate you? And no, no, you can't say it publicly, but does Um I would imagine there's a list, you know? Uh, That'd but, be a but, shame. But, you didn't deserve it, by the way. You're just like, doing your there job. Are, there are some people here who I've like had some like angst with or some tension with, but I see them at these meetings, sort of why I come to these meetings, and you're like, you hash it out and you kind of figure it out, and you're like, all right, like, I was mad at you for this, you were mad at me for this. Let's fist bump um, from semi-social distance and kind of move on. That happens oh, a lot of these meetings, too. Yeah, especially while you guys are out there boozing. You know, yeah. Yeah, like, why? Why? Hey, you want whiskey for the guy pissed off over there? Why? Give me one Bud Light for the lady I offended over there. Why? Give me one beer. Why? One tequila. Why? One vodka. Why? I need to make good with everybody in this goddamn building. Why? Is that what you do with those things, man? Uh, I mean, it. Yeah, it's actually it's cool. Yeah, it's a good move. Wow. It's a good move. You're a legend. 100%. Dude. I put most of my success down to masturbation seven times a day. <laughs> <laughs> you got this guy. You can Honestly, pop. You can really pop. Got to keep that blood pumping, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. What is, that? is that why you think you throw such bombs? Because what you've been accused, you've been accused of having what shit in your gloves and stuff like that, right? Yeah, it's a lot. 
What's that all about? That's because you're. And the only thing, the only thing I've been loading is testosterone from all the wanking over the years. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that in uh, what was that show? What was that? There was that show, uh, Myth. Mythbusters. Uh, Mythbusters did it with a boxer actually because the old myth was uh, if you women you, weak in legs. Yeah, yeah. Beforehand, then they did on Mythbusters like no, actually you get more testosterone immediately afterwards, it makes you stronger. You've been you've been doping testosterone with your right hand, huh? Wow. Going to town yeah. on yourself. Right be- hands and left hands, depending on uh, what they like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it- to walk into any howl at the moon and go, wish you were a star from that ledge, my friend. Jumper. We Love could cut ties with all the lies that we've been living in. And if you do not want to see me again, I will understand. I want to do a howl at the moon. Slide. On the knees with the guitar. Uh-huh. How at the moon is just pianos usually. Uh, no, no. no. Uh, you wouldn't get it. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show you? starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back to that show. Hour two on this. Holy hell, Vince McMahon is going to be in this studio Thursday, March 3rd, 2022. Hour two begins right now. Yeah. It is a beautiful day here in Indianapolis because I do believe spring has sprung. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Pollen is everywhere. (laughs) Too much. I am battling out here, but it is getting a little bit warmer. And for the NFL world, all the teams are currently here looking at who could be the next pillar of their program. A.J. Hawk. That is what they're doing here. Who could be the next person that takes our team from here to 2042? Who is going to be the next member of our program? And that means a lot of NFL personnel are in town. We had Cliff Kingsbury in the first hour. That was cool. He said I look cool. That was cool. That That was was very, there was a lot of cool stuff happening. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Vincent Kennedy McMahon's coming in, but joining us right now, friend of the program, first time we meet face to face. I assume looking for somebody that's going to make their team better. Head coach of the Los Angeles Chargers, Brandon Staley. Yeah! Hey, you look cool, dude. I want to let you know, you look super cool. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the program. Hey, <laughs> hey you caught on to that quick. I caught on to that quick. I got, I got that. I got that. You know, that drift, and I'm going to play into that. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. Wait, we'll, we'll add some more in here. There'll be some what's that are yelling, and uh-huh. there'll be an entire situation. But you're smart. You're super smart. You'll pick up on it. Uh, thank you for coming in. It feels like, and we're just talking as we were walking in here. It feels like we were just talking before the season after you got hired, yeah. and then bang, now we're here. For us, we got to talk all day about everything going on. For you, you have to focus on the Chargers and Chargers football. First year, if you're kind of – Phrase it. What would you think about what has just happened in the last 17 games of your life? I think that uh, it went by fast, and I think that uh, it was really impactful. I know how much better I am, you know, when I compare last year to this year, just where where my game is. uh, So much different space, um, and I think that really proud of what we accomplished as a team. I think you go into a a team and you have this vision for what you want to accomplish and like, hey, big picture, did you get that done in year one? Like, did you did you did you make an impact on a team? And and I think I was able to do that. Um, I think I think we were able to create a team, you know, a brand uh, to borrow a term of yours, uh, you know, and I think that, um, you know, I just think our players, our coaches, the people within our team, our fans, um, I think we've built something and that's really hard to do in pro sports is to establish something, um, 
And, uh, you know, the players, you know, that was my big mission statement, becoming the head coach, is, is, is being um, everything I could be for them. And I feel like we came together and, and got off to a great start. The, 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 you know, the, the year went by fast, but I think we accomplished a lot. Uh, didn't go down, you know, the way, um, you know, I think that we had hoped, but that's part of the league. And, that, and that's what I told our guys. But I think the impression that we left on the league, the impression that we left on one another is something that we can really build for uh, this offseason. I'm excited to do the work. That's awesome to hear, by the way. And every time we talk to you, every answer you give to us is like a – it's like at the end, you know, like you're, you, you literally are just naturally coach – like natural coach rhythms, which is why I think you have, you know, so quickly ro- rose – raise? Risen? Risen. Ro- risen. risen. Yeah. Risen through the ranks, so now you're a head coach in the NFL. And whenever you think about life, right, experiences bring maturity in everything. So in your life and whatever business for you for coaching, it sounds like how you said, I feel like I'm much better now than I was a year ago. What experiences do you think got you to a point where you feel much more confident in the position you're in now than maybe whenever you were hired and had no idea potentially what was coming down the plate? Yeah, I think the way I try to explain it to people is, you know, this past year, you're doing everything for the first time all the time and you know and and so now uh that you're going through a second go round uh, there's just so much more confidence that comes with that um there's an energy that comes with that and and I think you know by doing everything for the first time all the time it really requires a lot of you brings out the best in you and I think you know everyone talks like as a player that jump from year one to year two you know people talk about that yeah. all the time as if with players mm-hmm. but I think with coaches it's that way too you know and I feel like my own game, you know, how much better I am. And, and I think that, you know, every day since I got hired, just how much improvement you have to make to be as good as you can be for your players, for your staff, for your organization, um, that brought out the best in me. And um, I know how much, you know, better I'm going to be this season. So let's talk about it. What's your deal? Dude. What's your deal? Why don't you like field goal kickers, man? What is yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. What is your deal? I could have you anticipated said, this. You <laughs> said earlier, you yeah. said, you know, brand, you know, for the brand. Uh-huh. And yeah. you have become the brand of the stats and analytics people on the internet. I don't know if you know this, but you are, hey, this guy's actually making statistically the right decisions. And we have obviously had to talk about it because you're not the only one. There's a lot of, this is a massive conversation piece right now. The aggression, the success, the failures. Whenever it works, genius. When it doesn't work, this what is this even happening here? Do you think about like, Whatever you're making decisions, is it strictly like what everybody says? Like you're just looking at the numbers. Like, hey, we have a 67% chance to make this as opposed to a 80% chance to make the kick. That's only a 13% difference. What is the upside to this 67 and what's the upside of the eight? Is that the type of shit that's happening whenever well, you're making these decisions? You certainly don't have that type of time to process all that. <laughs> so, uh, like I tell the players all the time, there's no pause during the game. We have pause, you know, Monday after the game. But- Hindsight. We we do that. No pause. We do uh, a lot. No that. rewind. No fast forward. So um, I think that you go into the games with with some modeling. You know, taking into consideration, hey, who we have, our players, their players, weather, stadium, all that. The matchup. You know, it's really about the matchup, right? In big picture. Um, but I think for us, it's huh. just it's just maximizing scoring. Um, and then you know, hey, like what makes sense for us in this in this moment? And I think what I tried to tell our players was each of these decisions has a life of their own. And you don't go into one and and say, hey, because it went well, I'm playing with house money. This isn't Vegas. And just because it didn't go down doesn't mean that, hey, all of a sudden I'm going to. So you're not a sales guy at all. No, I'm like I like I try to tell people I'm from the Bruce and Linda Staley coaching tree. Like I'm looking over to the other side. Hey, I know who we have. I know what's over there. And I also know um, how we want to play. Man, that is awesome. So you literally are like, yeah, I like I think my guys are better than your guys. (laughs) We got to get six yards. Nah. All right, let's yeah. go for it. That is literally what it's coming from. It's yeah, not my, like you're the you know, super. It's, there's just, hey, you go in with some modeling, you know, that's going to tell you, that's going to give you like a, hey, an, uh, you know, kind of a model of, hey, is this good to go or not? Hey, that's a factor in it. But it's also, hey, my matchups versus your matchups. And then the response, hey, if it doesn't go down, Am I living with that? And because you're making decisions for the whole team, not just your offense. It's not just for Justin Herbert. It's for our whole team. And that's what I try to tell the guys. And I think that if you talk to our players, you know, we're very transparent about how we do things and and taking full ownership. Like when it doesn't go down, hey, guys, this is what I was thinking. And this is why I made the decision that I was making. And then that way you can live with it one way or the other. And and I think but what I wanted to do um, was show our players the belief that I have in them and then put the pressure on the other side. 
um, to create more opportunities for us. And it's not like every one of these things is going to go down. I just think this year, based on who we had um, in all three phases, you know, this is the way that we felt like was best for us to play. Um, but I do know this, putting the ball in Justin Herbert's hands yeah, is a ask. really good strategy, <laughs> generally. Uh, whether we run it or we throw it. Um, but I think it has so much more to do than just with him and Keenan, Mike, Austin, all these guys. You know, I know X is a great friend of the program. Yeah, yeah, program. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, it's all about it's about Derwin James, Joey Bosa, our, our defense, too, the, the confidence that I have in them as well. So, um, you know, it's the, it's the way that I believe in, you know, playing, and, and I think that uh, we're going to get better at it as we go. Justin Herbert and Josh Allen, right? Very similar. Is that in – do you do you look at what they're doing with Josh and add more to your uh, playbook, or do you look around the league to add anything to – because you're from the Bruce and Linda Staley coaching tree. Like, who do you, yeah, do you like find that? it – yeah, I did. <laughs> it's, yeah. The it's the truth. Shout out to Bruce, by the way, and Linda. Hey, shout out <laughs> shout to the Staley. Yeah. Hey, shout, shout out, out to Staley. Um, Shout out to Stanley. They got a coach tree in the NFL. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, nobody do. <laughs> you know, nobody does. They do. The um, Who do you look at? Do you look at other plays? How do you innovate? How do you continue to grow? Well, I think he's uh, he's one of one. Yeah, you he's know, Justin. Harvard, he's one okay. of one. So, um, but you're, you're definitely looking um, around the league. And I think being with him a full season, you have a much stronger sense of how he operates. And then how our skill players. Great right on line. fourth down, by the way, Herbert. Yeah. And then, you know, it, like, like our line, yeah. you know, you on board, you know, everyone talks about Justin and they should, and we'll talk a lot about him, but like Corey Lindsley, you know, Ode Abushi, Matt Filer, Rashawn Slater, like all these guys that are giving him the ops to be who he is. You're, you have a team on offense, you know? And so what we're trying to do is create that identity that features Justin's play style for sure. But then, you know, our, our team around him. And I think that that was we were, what we were able to do successfully year one. You know, last year when you guys were interviewing me, it's like, hey, what are you going to do for this guy? Mm -hmm. And, hey, he's the rookie of the year, and hey, what's this defensive coach going to do? And um, now those questions are different. And, uh, and I think that where we can go with Justin is just continue to get him in that comfort zone where he can just go be himself. And I think we've all seen um, what he's capable of. He's and, so good. And he's yeah. just, and he's just <laughs> sure. at the beginning. And, um, and I think that, uh, like I said, it's going to be exciting to have a full off season together and our offense and uh, take it, you know, even further. You happy he has his hair back, yeah? Yeah, happy he has Every, hair. It's a, it, it's a huge move for him. <laughs> it? And you have no idea, I mean, how important that is. I mean, okay. it's, a, it's, a, it's a game changer. When he cut that hair, I mean, the response to that, he's like, hey, this is kind of how I wore my hair, like all growing up. And then I cut it and everyone, I was like, hey, man, like, you know, there's something about this hair that people respond to. Man. So <laughs> yeah. I was like, you know, you got to, you know, kind of stay with that, I think, a little bit. So uh, good he, he, God get, God bless him with great hair. Yeah. 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 He's got movie, I, I kind of tell him, like, you got movie star hair, man. You got to you got to kind of lean into that. In so. the city of stars. Go ahead, AJ. Coach, did uh, was there anything that like game game day, like operations that took you by surprise or like how was that navigating that? I would imagine as the head coach, you already have a million things on your plate trying to think ahead of possible scenarios coming up like. How did your how did you get more comfortable, I guess, as the season went with all of that? Uh, can you repeat that one more time? Hey, just game day oh. uh, uh, mechanics, game day operations. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, AJ, I think that it was really important was to surround myself, um, you know, with a lot of experience, you know, in all three phases of the game. You know, you take a look at our offensive coordinator, Joe Lombardi, uh, with Drew for all those years in New Orleans, Sean Payton, you know, Ronaldo Hill, who I know you know, AJ, playing, you know, kind of around the same time when you were coming, a young guy coming in the league. Nadi played 10 years in the league as my defensive coordinator. Um, I think surround yourself with a really good uh, team of teams that can really help you manage it. Cause you know, like as the head coach, you can't do it alone. Things are moving fast and um, you need to make sure that people around you uh, can really support you in that way and make sure you go into the games, you know, connected and on the same page. And so I think that that's what happened year one for me as I was, you know, just, we put, we have a great staff and uh, you know, a great analytics team, Aditya Krishnan, um, you know, Alex Stern, Dan Smash, those guys did so well for me. Uh, and I thought that we were able to, you know, as a first time head coach, AJ, as you know, like, hey, all those end of game, end of half timeouts, you know, four downs. I think we were able to manage that well. And uh, I, I, I hope to keep making improvements as we go. Yeah, we can kick field goals a little bit, but <laughs> get three. Yeah, we can, you know, everyone's hey, D, little... D Hop came in and did a great job. For great. Us, hey, man. by the way, he's I know got... Matty O, you know, told you. I mean, Hopkins coming in did, did such a good job for us. And that was big getting that. You know, as you know, the professionalism, guy yes. that's lived it, that's been through it, and Dustin did such a good job for us. Then we got Andre Roberts, you know, the, the, the all-pro returner um, at, at a bunch of different places. Those guys, we kind of onboarded them, and, and they really helped us, you know, uh, 
last season. No, nah, yeah, I'm obviously just, you know, on the internet, you were made out to be the guy that hates kickers. I just want to let you know that. Mm-hmm. that was hey, 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 hey no, am I yeah. lying? Yeah. Hey, no. La we lying. Saw saw a lot of lying is this guy, one. stats guy, he'd rather get <laughs> zero or six, hates the three. That's right. Extra, Extra points. points. Hates the three. That's everybody's sense. Well, yeah, that, yeah. I mean, there's your points. Yeah, well, that's what you're looking for. <laughs> yeah, just those 33 yarders. Let's go ahead and do that. D Hop, he came out of Florida State, massive leg, and he's been around a long time. He bombs the ball. Matt Overton, obviously, I was very lucky yeah. to be with him in Indianapolis, and your return game was electrifying. And I don't mean to take this strictly into the kickers thing, but whatever you talk about the game day operations, you know, Tom Telesco. I'm in the Tom Telesco tree as well. He's the reason why I got drafted to the Colts. So I'm right. very thankful for him. You're obviously working alongside him. Is there things that his team handles that you don't have to handle or is there stuff that kind of popped up through the season that you didn't expect to be a part of or didn't know was maybe coming down down to like a part of your job description i think it was it was great about being with tom is all the experience you know and i think one of the reasons why i was so excited to team up with tom is you know that he came up with marv levy and tony dungy jim caldwell yeah. i mean all these amazing coaches uh, you know, being with a Hall of Fame general manager and Bill Polian, you knew that he was going to be able to support you, you know, through your first year and give you, you know, really valuable insight. And I thought that he was, as you know, Tom, calms, you know, Tom's got that calm, that oh, really yeah. steady presence. So cool. And uh, I think that that really benefited me. And I know that uh, our relationship has only grown uh, now that we truly kind of know, you know, you have a year's worth of inventory together. So, um, you know, really thankful for him and, and the Spanos family. Uh, as a head coach, you know that you can't do this by yourself. It's, it's, it's you, you know, the NFL is such a big operation. A lot happening. And it's not about one person in the league. And, and, and I think um, that's what we've tried to do is create that team of teams. And uh, Tom's certainly been big for me. Team of teams. That's good. Hey. Mm. Yeah. Well, hey we're yeah. Team. yeah, that's a good I like that. That's what you got going on here at the Pat McAfee team. Show. Hey, hey okay. I team. Team. Hey, team here. Hey, I walk in. I mean, it, you know. There's hey. a lot of people making this thing go, man. Yeah, we got a good team over here. Sure. And by the way, thank you for coming by. Yeah, yeah. We're very lucky well, to have you in a, here. If people really like discovered this spot, I mean, I mean, there'd be a line out the door waiting. To get no, 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 charge no, like no, an entry <laughs> no, don't you worry about that. Go ahead, Ty. Coach, you talk about building the brand and everything. And I know we talked about this before you had actually coached a game, but you're in a good spot. You have Justin Herbert. He's obviously going to be a superstar, and he's got a lot of years left. But and there's always going to be pressure, no matter what. If you don't win, obviously you're not going to be there. But do you? Is there like any sense of external pressure when you look at the Rams? They just won a Super Bowl. They're in the same city. You guys are kind of you know fighting for LA still. Like, is there any of that, or is that one of those things where you you can't pay any attention to that? No, I just I, I really I think as a competitor you can't be engineered that way. I think that mm. really, if anything, their success only strengthens what we believe in within our team. You know, because we know where we're going. We know who we have. Um, we know what we're going to have. Um, and I think that as a competitor, you know, it's just, it's really about our team. And I, and I think that that's what I wanted to establish this season. And I know that we did that. And if you talk about like tangible evidence, you know, the way we competed, uh, this season, I think that the way people view us is much differently than a year ago. Um, and I think that that's important. And then I also think our guys know now the expectations, the standards that we have for performance and that it is about our team and, and making it as good as we can be. And I know that, you know, in year two, building a new team for this season, um, I know that we're starting off at a much different place. And I know that really the end game, like we know that we got to go nose to nose against the entire league. And we know that we're ready for that. And I think we proved that this season. Uh, and now it's just strengthening our team so that we can go, um, you know, make a run and be able to go through 17 games and then three or four more uh, and finish it. And so uh, I know that we'll be capable of that. And if you win, fans, I mean, that's yeah. just, yeah. that is the easiest way to gain a brand, a fan base, anything. Just have success. And mm-hmm. that is a great way to get, you know, recognizing the NFL is tough, though, with the parity. What are, you, what are you looking for whenever you're here at the Combine? What is it that the Chargers team is looking for from a coach perspective? Well, I think this is just the beginning of the process. You know, the, at the Combine, there's a lot of football business happening. It's kind of the beginning of free agency, the tag window. Hey, a lot of tampering. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Not bringing yeah. it by others, by others. Oh, by yeah, others. for yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 just yeah. a lot of conversation. Yeah, yeah. Random, <laughs> dinner. You know, sort of text messages or random, you know, <laughs> random visits. No, uh, you know, you're at the beginning of the free agency, the tag window, and then uh, this is the first kind of, I think, initial – evaluation process with the draft eligible guys and so um but i think coming to the combine you see 31 other teams and you know the competition i think that's some, that's one of the things i like about the combine is it's the start of the new season and you know what you're up against and so this is just a 
you know, component in the process, you know, and as you know, being a former player, it's just, it's a part of the evaluation. We still got two or three months, um, you know, for, for more uh, detail and inventory on these guys. And um, so, you know, I think it just, it just gets you closer to knowing that, hey, you you know, you're going to onboard a bunch of people that are going to impact your team. Yeah. I would hate being at this if I was a coach. And I'm probably not supposed to say this because I'm from Indianapolis. I'm from Indy, you know. So, like, yeah. I love that the Combine's here. I think Indy does a great job with it. I understand how much our local uh, businesses benefit from all the yeah. meetings and dinners that are not happening, that are definitely happening all around town. And this NFL spring break is kind of how it's described almost, yeah. off the field. But for a coach, like... You said this is just the beginning, and I think Cliff said that as well, and somebody else said it was a first date. I forget that. With how many pro days there are, and I guess you get to 30 visits and everything, that is really where the coaches probably yeah. find more. Because there's more time. Right? Yeah, because you now know, like, these staged interviews, right? Like Sirianni talked about the basketball thing. Like, how do you – is it is now a time to try to learn about somebody, or do you think, like, that that can only happen in a different setting? Well, I think uh, if you believe that time, you know, like, is oh, sort yeah. of how you uh, invest in people, 18 minutes in a formal interview certainly isn't a big window – uh, to make a billion dollar decision on someone. So um, I think, again, it's just a, uh, it's just a part of the process and, uh, it's imp- and it's an important part of the process, but uh, there's a lot more um, that's gonna go into it these next uh, two or three months from a coaching standpoint. And you know that, you know, as AJ and, and, and you and all you guys know, the most important uh, component of the process is these guys playing football, shoulder pads and helmets with 80,000 people in the stadium, um, with 22 guys on the field with a lot of pressure on them. You know, that's when you can make the purest evaluation of whether they can do it or not. Um, and so uh, that's always going to be the part of the process that matters the most. And um, it's going to be exciting to undertake it. Remind me of this. You were just football from birth, right? Yeah, quarterback who was defense coordinator. So you're a defensive guy who has uh, sees the game through the eyes of a quarterback. But you were supposed to be a coach your entire life, right? I think is what you told us one time. Everybody kind of knew this was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, like very young, No right? backup plan. You're from Ohio, <laughs> right? You're from Ohio? Yeah, Cleveland. Okay, so, you know, you Ohio dudes. Uh, I mean, we all know breeds. Ohio. My twin brother's in Pittsburgh, though. I told you that. He's living in Pittsburgh, your neck of the woods. So. Okay, so Pittsburgh, pretty similar to Ohio people. But since we're not Ohio people, we can say, oh, Ohio, Ohio people. people. He's Ohio people. But, like, <laughs> right. football, your entire life, it has been. That, that is, like, living absolute dream right now, being the head yeah. coach of the Chargers. Coaching is, was an absolute dream of mine. I grew up loving all the sports. I mean, we... As a family, it was all the sports, basketball, tennis, baseball, football, you name it, we did it. Um, So my mom and dad just wanted us out there competing. And uh, so I was just around sports my whole life. I'm the son of a teacher and a coach. So uh, that's kind of how we got off the ground. And, uh, you know, I started drinking coffee in the first grade, reading the sports page. I I wanted to be like my dad. It's like, hey, if you want to be like your dad, this is what he does. So, um, you know, that's what I started doing. That's why I fell in love with the game. And, um, you know, and I think, you know, as, as I got you know, older, I got better at football. I played a lot more basketball than football, but then, you know, when, you know, football kind of expressed itself like, Hey, that was going to be my thing. Um, you know, I fell in love with it and there's just so much to football that I think fits me that brings out the best in me. And, um, you know, I, I love my path. Like, I think that it's been, uh, it's really fit me well. And I feel like my whole goal was to be a complete coach. And so I think being an offensive player, you know, turned defensive coach, coached all the positions on defense, you know, been very involved in the kicking game. Come on, it sounds like you always also bring it up. really, really, really important. I, I stats um, will say I, that. I held in college, you know, I was a holder. How about so that? So got Go. a very, you know, a very righty like, kicker, lefty kicker. Uh, both a uh, lefty kicker in high school, Todd Kapastashi, oh, and then no. uh, righty Kapistashi. kicker in college. Oh, how's the family yeah. for Kapastashi? So you know, and what was interesting is you can attest I was a holder for a lefty, so holding it with your right hand and then had to switch Bingo. to my left. You know? Look at you. I, it was hard for me to switch. And that's a tough switch. Yeah, it, so, was, it was hard for me. I think you could appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely, man. You're a freak athlete. You said basketball was your sport. You still yeah. got a J. You still uh, pretty athletic. You on the field, that running time, around, that shaking time people. Is over. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that time is over. I'm just trying to stay in good shape, you know, and... You know, I think tennis will probably be my thing because I'm a huge tennis guy. You know, Nadal, remember, oh. you know, my love for Nadal. Oh, yeah. I'm right. going to Indian Wells on uh, two weeks. He's going to be there with Djokovic, so I'm pumped about that. There we go. Man, I, I'm assuming he, like Chargers head coach, you could probably get a pretty good – you met him before? I haven't, no, but I'm I'm hopeful. Oh, yeah. Hey, go. listen, yeah, I think yeah. it's going to happen. He I'm wants trying, to meet you. I, yeah. Yeah. He wants to meet you. Well, I'm bringing DJ. Derwin's coming, so it's going to be good. So DJ and – Derwin James. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Derwin James, by the way. Yeah. He's oh, he's good. He could be a professional oh, yeah. Madden player. I yeah. think. This guy's a competitor. He's good at it. 
you know, I, I don't know where he got these skills, but he's a real issue to deal with in that Madden. <laughs> <laughs> Toss back. And it was funny because I, when I coached Ramsey at the Rams, you know, he kind of told me about this, you know, with Derwin. And uh, then I'm now. How I'm do you explain it to you? He's like, hey, coach, listen, no, don't guy, fuck with Derwin. This guy's like a gamer, you know, like literally a gamer. You know, he's one of the best defensive players in the league, but then he's one of these best like video game guys in the world. So I was like, wow. You know? And then you meet him, and then it's real. You know, it's real. Yeah, this guy's he's, a competitor. He's a great cornhole player. Oh, yeah. yeah. Great on the Hard field. Knocks. Great at – he's he seems like one of the most interesting guys of all time, one of the most competitive guys. And, I and think, that's kind of like how Keenan is, too. Like, Keenan can do everything. You know, Keenan does everything well. Like, he can – you know, guys like them, they just – whatever they decide to do, they do it well. So you know, <laughs> Just picking and choosing. Yeah, they're, they're, they're <laughs> just so skilled. Like, it's like Keenan, like, you know, playing golf or shooting a basketball. You just they Ping pong do, if they want they to. They can do it all. Yeah, if they want to. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Coach, I forget if it was uh, Eckler or maybe Herbert, but they were saying how you have meetings with the entire team mm -hmm. to explain, like, the defensive plan, the offensive plan, the special teams plan. Like, why do you do that? And is that just something that you've always wanted to do as a head coach once you, have, you know, got there? Eckler. Yeah, I think, I think at any time you want to bring people together and, and really have belief in a plan, it can't just just be like hey the offense is doing this the defense is doing this and like you have these independent worlds happening like we're going to win this game as a team and what I want to do is have everybody understand what our approach is and what that plan to win is um, and why it's that way and show them why we think that we need to play the game this way and I think it brings people together and I think there's real transparency you know in the organization when we play this game hey there's an accountability that comes with it and I think that that's what you're after as a player. All the, that's all they want is to have the ownership of, hey, whether it goes, goes up for you, you know, if it doesn't go down, like, hey, this is what happened. This is what our plan was. And, hey, let's see if we can go execute it. But um, I think it gives people a lot more purpose going into the game. And it feel, you know, like, hey, now on defense, hey, we know what our offensive thought process is and we're ready for it and vice versa and in the kicking game. And so you bring everybody together. And that there's no important part of the week than that, that, that meeting for me. That's like one of my favorite parts of the week is, is bringing that to life. And um, I thought it was a winning edge for us. And I'm hoping it continues to be a big part of it. I think it's great for the team. I, I don't think Jim Caldwell did it. Or, I don't think so. I don't know if that was something that was happening. I don't know if it was because information or what was going on. I don't recall. I, maybe he was doing it. We didn't do it in college or whatever. But Chuck was big on that. Like, hey, we want everybody to know what everybody's doing. So then, like, me, as somebody who just has a front row seat to all this, if I see somebody doing something, I at least, like, well, we were trying to stop. Like, that was literally, <laughs> you know, like, that yeah. was exactly what we were trying to stop. Like, it made me a much, I think, better football player person and also it was also a good conversation amongst teammates like I was understanding what was going on in convos and like it was very easy to see why things were being accomplished I think it's a brilliant idea and I think transparency builds yeah. trust too I think for that's sure and because like a lot of people point when it does go down for you and like oh well look at that brilliant plan well if it doesn't maybe that was a good plan too you know, at least, you know, like, hey, like it was a good plan. Like, yeah. hey, you in know, it theory, did, this thing. in theory. Uh, and then and then if it if it if it was like, hey, that was a bad idea, you take full ownership. And because and like what I try to do is create it like we're we're in this together. It's not coaches versus players, players versus coaches, offense versus defense. It's like, hey, we're all in this together. And so if it doesn't go well for us, you just, you know, no one's trying you know, to make a mistake. Yeah. And if yeah. it doesn't go down, hey, let's learn from it and let's keep it moving. That's the way the NFL is. You can't ride this wave. You've got to, hey, if it doesn't go down, you keep it moving, you're on to the next thing. And I think we did a good job of that this year. I mean, people won't, they'll say that whenever you say, hey, we're all on the same page, people will just assume that's normal. Like, there is a lot of instances that I've heard about, I've never been a part of, where the defense is its own team and the offense is its own team. And you can see how that could happen as somebody that didn't grow up in the football culture because literally the offense is practicing on this field, the defense is practicing on this field, then they come together and it's not ones on ones, it's normally ones on twos. It's like it lit, they meet differently. There's just an entire different operation. Now, obviously, if you're a winning program mm -hmm. you're gonna have everybody together but that doesn't always happen and mm -hmm. i think that is a a great move by you I, i've i've enjoyed listening to the whys behind what you do by the way just as somebody that watched you here this first year it feels like you that. just are like uh well it's hey, my like, dudes are gonna fucking beat your yeah <laughs> like i love that I, it's like it's guys like eck who you know you guys have you guys know him and and herb and all the guys that you have on the show is like you know, they're the ones that are connecting your message to the rest of the guys, you know, and it's you get those key guys to really be the mouthpiece for your team. And, you know, those are the best teams is when your players are, are driving, you know, driving, the, you know, they're the engine behind your team. And so that's what I've tried to do is, is create that ownership within the players. And, um, 
you know, and I think that uh, it's only going to get stronger with time. Go ahead, Tom. Coach, the salary cap is what it is, but when you look at the websites that track Which it... Which is nothing, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when, when you look at the websites that track it, you guys are in, like, the top two or three as far as available salary cap space. Like, during the draft process and free agency process... Do you go to Tom Telesco with a wish list of maybe positions that you think maybe need upgraded or players or anything like that? Or is that just that side of the building? Oh, it's, a, it's a great question. Um, it's, it, it's really, it's coaching and personnel coming together. Uh, and I think that that's something that, um, again, like Pat said, it's, it's, it's probably more uncommon than not to just truly, like truly be able to see things through the same lens. And hey, this is why, um, you know, we assess this a certain way. Um, free agency to me is about value. Um, because just because you have the money doesn't mean that you should use it or if you do use it, like how you spend mm -hmm. it, right, how you it. allocate that money. And so I think last year, our first go around would be the evidence that I have, um, you know, to prove like what we're about. I thought we got great value last year going to get Corey Lindsley, you know, who we felt was one of the top centers in mm -hmm. football. You know, you pay him at the top of the market. Uh, and he was worth every cent. What he was able to do for Herbert and Justin, that's one of those storylines that not a lot of people know about, but Corey Lindsley's a G. You know? and, that's, <laughs> and that's why Justin Herbert is playing at that type, type of level because he doesn't have to worry about you know, some Ain't things either. that you'd have to worry about if Corey Lindsley wasn't your center. You go get Matt Filer uh, from the Steelers, who had a lot, of, a lot of flexibility, right tackle, guard. He was such a stud for us. Um, Ode Abushi uh, from, from the Detroit Lions. We were able to get a, a veteran like Jared Cook. And so I think we spent wisely last year, and that's really what it's about. And you can't do that if you're not on the same page. Like me and Tom, our staffs being on the same page, like, hey, this is the value that we see this player. Hey, if it exceeds the value, then we got to move on. You know, and, and, and that's really what it's about for me is, is spending that money wisely. Uh, and I think that we got off to a good start last year. Uh, that uh, Chargers Raiders game. No. Uh, at the Which end. one? Well, the, you know, one, the end one there. Okay. Mm -hmm. The end of the, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the potential yeah, tie. There. The potential tie one. So was there thought before the game, hey, let's kneel this entire thing out? <laughs> okay, just for four straight quarters. Okay, this is. This is the NFL's fault. Yeah. Go. Listen, if you don't want to put it on TV, don't put it on TV. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is what we're doing. Good luck. We have, it's kind of a, a process. But then the game happens. Then it happens. Then there's an opportunity for it to potentially take place. And then all of a sudden, you make a decision to change it. For you, like, what is your thought process in that entire game? And did you hate people even broaching the subject of taking a knee for four quarters to uh, advance your team into the playoffs? Yeah, it was, it was definitely an interesting topic to be tackling the last week of the season. <laughs> yeah. uh, just because, like, you knew how many circumstances needed to happen. The stars had to perfectly align for this to even yes. be a possibility. And all those stars aligned. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I think, uh, <laughs> you know, it was, uh, it was you know, the, the lead up to that game. I, I, you know, wanted to focus on the Raiders. You know, they're, they're a big, you know, t good enough team to deal with. And then you've got this other stuff. And um, I think that environment, if, if you were there, um, you know, that was such a, electric environment yeah um you know and then there was the john madden you know yes. tribute and, and there was just i mean it was a an electric night um it was a playoff game i mean there's no there's no doubt about it and um so there was all these circumstances before the ball was even turned over um and then when the ball turned over it was uh it was one of those games that tip, it was a playoff game the, the way that game unfolded yeah. that's how playoff games happen there's that there's that urgency, there's that desperation, there's those circumstances, all that, that dr high drama, which makes the league so special. And um, it was an unbelievable game. And, um, and You almost it, felt like you'd be doing it a disservice almost, it sounds like. Yeah, like, I just, there's like, no way I was going, I mean, that, all those scenarios was like, okay, like that's, that's, that's awesome. But then <laughs> I think, you know, what was interesting was when we came back um, and we tied it, you know, and going to overtime, you realize that like, hey, tying's a possibility. Like here, here we are at overtime, yeah. and then now, all right, hey, you know, all these crazy, you know, scenarios. Guess what, guys? This is a legit scenario now. It wasn't, but now it is, you know. And so, um, that's kind of what overtime was about. And um, as you guys know, it didn't go down for us. We kind of had to, you know, we we experienced the tough side of things, you know. And I said that to the guys in the locker room the day after the game and every day day since. But um, that's part of the league. When you sign up for the league, you sign up for all of it, the good of it, and the and the tough side of it, and 
Um, but I know that we're going to come back in a big way, and I know that that's going to really drive us moving forward. And I love the fact that you're saying, like, that was a playoff game for us. So our kid, a young team, might mm -hmm. got a chance to experience that, yourself included. Like, you got a chance to experience what for the sure. environment probably would be, and it actually is because you win and you move on. If not, you go home. Yeah. That's a playoff game in the division. I mean, it's just – I'm excited to see what your team does next year, boss. Thank you so much for stopping uh, by. Thanks so much for having me, guys. Nah, no problem, man. I can't wait to see you one year from now. Yeah. Yeah, you know? no, uh, no, it'll be – I mean, like I said, there'll probably be a line out. Nah, 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 that ain't. <laughs> ladies, ladies and gentlemen, head coach of the Los Angeles Chargers, Brandon Staley. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Uh, we got to get to a break. We'll be back in four minutes on the phone lines. one 833 4 mcafee on the 5 Energy phone line. Can't wait to hear what you're thinking about. And then we're 30 minutes away. No, sorry. We're th 25 minutes away from the hour that Vincent Kennedy McMahon will be in the studio. So yeah. in four minutes, this is the Deep Pat McAfee Show. Pat McAfee, you're hired. Vince McMahon, this is a self-made billionaire that turned something from a local situation to a worldwide phenomenon. I'm a massive documentary fan. I enjoy the hell out of people that revolutionize the world. Getting a chance to have that moment with Vince McMahon is one of the main reasons why I was like, I have to do this. I've been watching documentaries. Firm handshake. Big announcement! Vince McMahon, the WWE Chairman, will be live in studio Thursday on my show, Michael Cole. Vince McMahon, bang! Going to be in the same seat right over here. Wow, the yes. Was in. Where the hell have you been? New Jersey Devils made some big news with their jersey reveal. We got PK. Governor there he is. PK. Governor, our faces. It's beautiful. Oh, PK Sluban in the new uh, Devils alternate jerseys that they're going to be wearing on either December 6th or December 8th, I believe. These jerseys were actually helped uh, designed by Martin Brodeur, legendary Hall of Fame, one of the greatest goaltenders of all time to ever play. Look at these things, dude. They fucking stink. <laughs> I saw somebody. I saw somebody tweet. I forget who it was. Said instead of CCM on their gloves, they should have it say gloves on their gloves. Because it does have the ties. It has the the, the sweater jersey ties, uh, a la Marty Brodeur. That was his touch. Apparently, that was his little piece that he added in. Do you think because Marty made it that they were kind of <laughs> like, ah, I can't say no to Marty. Yeah, looks Whoa. good. Looks good, Marty. If fucking Marty, Marty cooked up these shitty yeah. unis, and now we gotta try and. Uh, uh, what are we gonna do? Our greatest goalkeeper of all time by a million uh, signed off on these jerseys that uh, say Jersey on the front. We better fucking get them out there now. Like that's something that could have happened. Like if uh, Ruppers here. Ruppers. <laughs> What's up, fellas? How's it Crystal going? Crystal clear. Look at you in the bowels of the arena. What's up, yeah, buddy? Look at this, man. Right down here. Zamboni just went on. Getting get the flood for the third period. So let's see if I'm going to see if we go out ice ice level. Oh, I'm going to on the ice. Let's see. Let's see what I can get away with for the old barn. <laughs> What's up, man? How Just are you? Don't drive the Zamboni, no, Rob. Come on here, real Jeez. quick. You're not going to stop me? I can't hear you guys, so hold on. We'll get the little the pens. Let's can't hear us. The arena is so damn loud. All those pens there fans in there. Look at this. We're going on the ice. Diner PPG yeah. Paints Arena. I love it. Boys are getting it done here. I got one bone to pick. The fucking phone's blowing up from Marty Bedore saying that you're shitting on his creation. <laughs> <laughs> what, what happens? I leave I leave for five minutes and I'm getting Hall of Fame former teammates hey. calling me and giving me shit. He oh, said, your boy, you know was, your boy's hey, shitting you know on my that idea. Was me. We buried you know it. that was me. You know that was me.
Today's show is sponsored by the best ticket app on planet Earth and... The Moon! That's SeatGeek. We told them last week we can't be doing first-time user codes anymore. No, That's right. Done with it. Oh, wait, I got a big announcement right now. Ooh. Really? Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah, I do. I just I completely forgot about it because how many people have come in the studio already with Vince McMahon coming on the other side. I got a big announcement with our friends here at SeatGeek. But anyways, we told them last week, hey, the first time user codes, bullshit. People have been using SeatGeek for a long time. You're a great business. Once people shop at SeatGeek, they ain't shop anywhere else because the way you go about handling your ticket business is the best. That's yeah. right. They literally scan all the other tickets on the internet and then let you know whether or not you're getting a good deal. Beep, boop, beep, boop. Like, hey, if it's a red next yeah, to it. Like mm -hmm. a stoplight. Bad deal, dude. But if you need the ticket, fucking here's the ticket. I got you. They got green next to it. Like, hey, good deal, good ticket. You won't get catfished either because they got technology to make sure you ain't getting scammed. Shout out to SeatGeek. And right now, it is time to announce that with the announcement of Vincent Kennedy McMahon coming on the show, it would only be smart to do a ticket giveaway to a creation of Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna give away four lower tickets to WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Down in Dallas, we will be giving away four two-day passes to WrestleMania 38 in Dallas, just 30 days from now. Let's go. These tickets are very expensive, oh, yeah. hard to get, and WrestleMania is going to be the most stupid. Pendous WrestleMania of all time, a two night affair, plus so many other festivities. Uh, we're giving away four tickets. Uh, I think we'll give them uh, two to two people. Okay. Oh, two, to two, nice. people. two to two people. All you got to do is use the hashtag PMS Seat Geek Mania. PMS Seat Geek Mania, because Seat Geek is the official ticketing partner of WrestleMania. By Sweet. Oh, nice. Right. Shout out World's Coming Together. That's great Shout news. Shout out. Palm Energy. That whole thing together. Good. Go ahead and uh, take a screenshot of... Um... Right now, and, and Foxy bounce around up. I mean, that's one. Okay, yeah, so you have the one I gave you. Good. Let's get you three. No, we gave that one away. Anyways. Nope, I put that in your room in Florida. Use the, in, uh, yeah, LA. we gave the Phil sent that one. Use the hashtag PMSC. <laughs> <laughs> I earned another one. I won another one. Yeah. Right. Oh, Not congrats. Like good Pay ones. attention to the product. Yeah. Jeez Louise. Congrats. Dude. Make sure you show Vince all three of those. He knows I earned these things. Yeah. Uh -huh. And by the way, I'm going to let him know what you call them, too. These are titles, dude. Belts yeah. hold up your goddamn pants. Yeah, Go ahead and tweet hashtag PMSC Geek Mania with a screenshot that you were watching there. We will randomly select two people to win two tickets to WrestleMania Woo! in Dallas. Can't wait to be a part. Well, you said lower ticket, like lower bull? Yeah, lower. It's lower. It's, it's good tickets. Closer. Oh. Closer. Not on the floor. No, no, that's, too, that's too low. We're unable to, no, you don't want to, you want to be. Those are tough to get. You want to get a good angle. They, well, this in Jerry world, right? Yeah. Man, that ring has got to look so tiny in that ooh, gigantic ooh, stadium. Sweet. Here they are. Holy oh, shit. Oh, oh, oh. Sweet. They, these aren't them. What? <laughs> what? Just prop. Oh. This is just pretty cool like prop. They look like, super yeah. cool prop. Which is the camera, this one? Mm -hmm. Super cool prop. Look, you can win one of these. Two of these, actually. Two people with two of these. Two of these. Two of these. Thanks. It's behind me in the lower bowl, I believe, is okay. what was found and selected for the giveaway. So go ahead and do that. Let's bounce around some talking points and shout out to Sea Geek, by shout the way. Shout out to Sea Geek. Sea Geek has created a link for this show only. It gives you 10% off any order. It's in the bio here at YouTube. Shout out to Sea Geek. Uh, Cliff Kingsbury came through earlier with Peter Schrager. He was awesome. He was cool. Brandon Staley just came through and talked to us for 30 minutes. I don't think he's that big of a stats guy, AJ. He literally just said, nah, my dude's better than your dude's. That's literally what, it, that's, I think that's how he makes decisions. I love it. Yeah. If that is, I, I don't know how that, you know, that's How awesome. do you get labeled as like one of the big time analytics guys then? <laughs> because. The community he, accepted them and made them their own. What's that? And the he didn't shun community. them. He didn't like uh, back away. Oh, this, you're saying the stats community said, no, this is our guy. Yeah. Because his natural decisions just straight out of, Competition and his competitive thoughts were all the stat stuff, which 
By the way, I came from the Bruce and Linda Staley coaching tree. <laughs> yeah. I bet you Bruce was a fucking no risk it, no biscuit coach. Correct. Oh, yeah. What? You know, I, I feel like he uh, was. Uh, his son, if, if his son is in first grade, pounding coffee every morning, reading the paper, <laughs> yeah, like, you know, he's not messing around. Yeah, and Linda, by the way, also, she will roll the dice. There is no fake left behind. There is no shot left in the chamber. I love that that was his mindset there because I had real questions, you know, because I get it. That six points. Does he not kick field goals or what? No, nah, he doesn't. Yeah, the Chiefs game. I think he yeah. thought, though, that, you know, because he did say a couple times, when Dustin Hopkins got there, I kicked more field goals. <laughs> when Dustin Hopkins got there, mm -hmm. I kicked more. Like, he said that without saying that yeah. a few times. So I think what he was trying to say is, and now that we know a little bit more about his decisions about my dudes being better than your dudes, he literally was thinking, like, high school, like, college, like, is my dude going to make this or is Herbert going to get a first down or mm -hmm. is he going to make a touchdown? That's very fascinating because obviously that has to weigh into your decision making. And that goes into what we thought he wasn't doing at all, which is feeling the moment and reading the situation. You talk about each stadium, each weather, each game. He said game plan. He said there's a lot that goes into it. So I think I think he is a little bit of a stats guy, but it sounded more like he's just like, nah, fuck it, Herbert. He's a matchups guy. It's about matchups. That's what all great coaches are. They try to find their matchups where they have the advantage and they go try to exploit it. I enjoy that. That's like what Troy Aikman said, right? Troy Aikman said, yep. I don't care about what was in the game plan. Mm -hmm. When they had old buddy on old buddy, you throw the ball immediately to that person. Yeah. And it's my guy's better than your guy offense. That is 100% what it is. He said something like if uh, Michael Irvin had that coverage, he would have had 10 balls by, ha by the first half, in the first half or something like that. And then I got a chance to chat with Michael Irvin on the MIP. And he said, uh, he and I talked, like Joey Burrow will do that with Chase. Like Joey Burrow, it feels like he. it does not matter what the play call is. If he's got his dude against somebody that isn't their dude, okay, mm -hmm. we are doing this. And he loved it. It's like old school almost, you know, but Staley's almost doing that. Staley's almost doing that as a coach. I fucking love it. Yeah. I absolutely love it. If I remember it. correctly, and I, I hate to do this to the guy, I believe the kicker at the beginning of the year was Pizon, who uh, was not kicking balls through the uprights. He was kicking them well. They just weren't going. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't remember his name. They were going through. I don't know. I don't know his name. I should know it, by the way. That's 100% on me. I'm happy we don't know his name, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they had, like, five kickers. But also, for Staley, like, Eckler, Keenan Allen, Jared Cook, Mike Williams, like, it kind of does make – and then, obviously, Herbert. Like, it does make sense when you look at the offense. Like, yeah, they have some pretty good guys. You might as well go for it. I like the fact that he's like, yeah, I'm a better coach now than I was last year. Mm -hmm. All right? <laughs> like, I, he just flat out – you know, said it because when you're doing the first something for the first time all the time, he said, you know, that you're, you're certainly going to learn some stuff. Yeah, you know, he's certainly going to learn some stuff. And then he wanted to coach me because that's his natural speak. Now, that's going to bring the best out of you. Right. That's going to mm -hmm. bring the best out because it's not adversity. It's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. This isn't an obstacle. You know, this is something that we can pull off. So I appreciate his mindset. I appreciate I appreciate the way that guy operates. I, I'll be interested to see, though, like. Winning over LA is going to be difficult with the Rams. Mm -hmm. yeah. McVay's out on a yacht right now. Yeah, yeah. crushing it. McVay's out on a yacht right now. I didn't now. see those Jay. pictures. What he just put them out today? Jake Lazer's out there. There's McVay on a oh, jet ski. Weapon. Sean McVay's on a jet ski. Sean McVay's on a yacht. What? What? Jake Lazer and Sean McVay are on a yacht. What? Oh, they're below deck in it. What's that? Good show. Yeah, a lot of people watch it. Right? I see it trending on a regular basis. Do they rent this thing out for the week? That's what I'm saying. It seems like a, that kind of situation. Uh, Steve Harvey, I don't know if he has a yacht or rents yachts all the time, oh. but it looks like he has a blast. Like a million dollars a week for those things they rent. Oh, that looks like so much fun, though. Do you, do, you see, yeah, do you see how Magic awesome? Magic Johnson, yeah, they all. it looks amazing. Yeah, those pictures, they're always all dressed up. They look like they're not hot as hell. Nope. You know, they're in Caribbean spots. Yep. And they're having the time of their life. I'm like, that looks like a great time. Because I guess you just what? You have your your resort on the water. Is that yeah. why the yacht is a good time? I guess those those like mega yachts that Steve Harvey and Magic are on, They the crew is probably 20 people there taking care of you. Like those things are so damn big. Oh, yeah. I got a little green tea. <laughs> oh, no. A green tea. There's a couple Adjusted mega yachts it. now that are uh -oh. kind of just floating around out there that we could claim. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's, hey, those are getting claimed now. Yeah. Yeah. Can, yeah. Oh, yeah. They got a few of them, didn't they? So are they just riding up on jet skis, jumping over top of it, yeah. figuring out how to make a key for the boat? And probably then this, hide, probably, I, so. I bet they go hire out those Somali pirates and have them do it. They're so good. Well, way. I don't know. I, I did know immediately upon pirate conversation, 
that I said jet ski getting onto the boat to steal, you were going to immediately go to Tom Hanks on that boat. <laughs> right. Okay, I knew you were going to do it. Incredible shot, by the way, by the uh, Navy SEAL, I believe, that oh, was yeah. waiting yeah. at sea. Yeah. Who was that, Bob O'Neill? Bob O'Neill was on that mission. That's insane. That, by the way, there are some people that just super, superhumans that Jumped walk. out of airplanes. They jumped out of airplanes over the ocean to get down to that, the ship. That's wild, isn't it? I mean, just this is their job. Yeah. Yeah. What do you yeah. do for yeah. a living? Well, tomorrow... We're hopping in this chopper that it seems like every time we get in one, it goes down. Mm -hmm. We're going to get, then we're going to get in another one and then we're going to fly out to the middle of the fucking ocean. We're going to parachute down and then one of us is going to have to swim from one big boat into another. Like that's our job. That's mm -hmm. what they do. And then they sign up for it. And then when they're done doing it, they yearn for it just like everybody else. I don't know how you could ever get that <laughs> oh. feeling ever again. I have no idea how you could ever. That'd be tough. Yeah, really. I don't think you can match that one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I think that would be a bit tough there. But that's Wait, not Cole what Duty's I was, not going to do it for you. Yeah. Well, that's not what I was talking about anyways. We're not talking about <laughs> that. But I mean, how is that all going down? Is that what people are doing? Because I watched that airplane repo. You know, oh yeah, that airplane repo show. <laughs> they just kind of go in at night, and then they get the truck, and then they. That seems so, super yeah. real too. All those interactions do. What's that? Yeah, because how easy it is to get on these airports. You know what I mean? How and watching the guy like hide from all of a sudden the owner of the airplane always comes out right at the last minute, and the cam they don't see the camera crew. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, all right. let's Stealth. go to the phones. Let's is go. Is that to the like phone. lizard lick towing? Similar. Similar, but with airplanes. Mm -hmm. hmm. Let's go to Connor in Chicago. What's going on, Connor? <laughs> Hey, how you doing? Windy City. Windy City up there in Chicago. Uh, what are you thinking? I know it's windy, but uh, Hawk knows that that's not why it's windy. Uh, what do you think of the Bears this year? And the Bulls are struggling right now. Okay, Bulls are struggling right now. Is Caruso back or what? Yeah. Zito's actually probably making no. something happen out there. Caruso, is, it's not looking good right now. I can't pass with fine. his. Uh, I saw list. his. I saw his Instagram post, and he said, "Hey, yo! By the way, happy birthday to Mr. Alex Caruso." Happy birthday, happy birthday, Al. Birthday, Al. I saw his uh, Instagram post in the first, he said, swipe to pick five or something. The first four picks had, had a cast on, mm -hmm. cast on or a, a, a brace of some sort. Fifth slide, no brace. Yeah, but he can dribble fine, but apparently he just can't really like pass okay, once, or do okay, anything. Oh, no, one seed and eight? Yeah, I mean, let's see, they don't need him yet. They don't need him yet. They're, he's so much better. They're so much better than the Celtics. Well, well that's not shoot, actually right? Celtics' hottest team in the league. Well, yeah, yeah, but are they number two in the East or number one in the East? Uh, we're number four, but we're three oh, games. So you're, okay. so you're we're three below. games behind them. Anyways, basketball's happening, so good luck to the Bulls. Hope they turn it around. Yeah, good luck. Good luck, Bulls. Shout out to Bulls fans, by the way. This weekend, I believe, you're able to download FanDuel oh, yes. online as opposed to having to go in person. I think that's coming back oh, this weekend. Good. Oh, yeah. Hey, huge. congrats to Illinois. Dude. Did it, Illinois. Because it was open as you could download it. Then there was a window. It was shut down. You had to go to the casino. During the, this is during the whole protocol thing. You had to go to the casino to sign up to get the app on your phone. Now we're all the way back to you could just download it on your phone. Huge. That's happening this weekend. Sweet. Congratulations, Let's Illinois. Go. Welcome to the yeah. party again. Shout Here we go. Out. Welcome, Illinois. Hey. Then in Connecticut at uh, Mohegan Sun, Ooh. I believe there's a brick and mortar FanDuel sportsbook opening this weekend. Oh, oh my nice. God. Hey, Beautiful. FanDuel's got some real uh, stuff going on. Casino. Yeah, Mohegan yeah. Sun in Connecticut. There's fights. That's a nice one. Oh, yeah, yeah, they got big time fights there. They throw big bombs there. Concerts. Mm -hmm. Big hands. Uh, Zito, great to see you, pal. They just called about Chicago, and I'm happy you're back there. The Bears just hired a brand new coaching staff, brand new GM, got oh, a yeah. brand new quarterback. You guys aren't expecting much this year, right? Uh, we're probably going to go to the Super Bowl. Okay. I assume Bears fans are going to be let down if that's the expectation. No. Yeah, I yep. don't know. I, I just you can't expect any less, though, as a fan, right? No. I, by the way, go to the Super Bowl every single year. Oh, yeah. Absolutely do your thing. Don't you want to win the Super Bowl, though? Yeah. Amen to that. Foxy actually is just 10-7 and seven in a playoff I just want a playoff win. Yeah. I don't care about anything else. But new head coach, new staff, new GM, very young quarterback that played in spurts last year, had greatness, had rookie moments. That's yeah. going to happen. But everything was kind of burning around him. I, I assume they're going to make some great plays, have great growth. NFC North is still, you know, the immunized Pancha Karma, son of a bitches. Yeah. That's right. I mean, division as of now, who knows what's yeah. going to happen. Uh, but I, maybe the Bears come out of nowhere and surprise people. Everybody loves oh, yeah. Eberflus in Indianapolis. Oh, Everybody yeah. loved Eberflus. Big get for us. 
Yeah, and then big flus, and then uh, the GM, <laughs> big poles. Poles has been, you know, handling business in these yeah, interviews, yeah. dude. I saw him eat seventy-two ounces of steak there today, at Saint Elmo's. That's yeah, what I'm yeah. talking about. Eyes wow. on the ground. He's Vincent. hungry, baby. Yeah, he wants to he eat. Tweeted yeah. that while we were on stinks. air. Still. That's yeah. kind of the what, big. What's that? Their O line is very bad. Terrible. And luckily, he's an O line guy, and, and he's gonna build it up, baby. People. You could change an O line though overnight, for sure. I love the positivity yeah, sure. from Z. Oh, Z's ready to go go to the Super Bowl, dude. We're on the ball, baby. Why See Arizona? Not? Just a couple years ago, they were in playoffs and then doink, doink. Oh, yeah. God. People love but, That's because they had a really good quarterback. Who's What's that loser's get, name bring a again? Team back to the fucking Super Bowl. Yeah, Mitchell Trubisky, man. The whole thought that last chance Q, Mitchell Trubisky is the leading candidate for yeah. everywhere <laughs> is so awesome for Mitchell Trubisky. Yeah, it's He's absurd. So good. Every he, fan base. It's all about timing. Like free agency, whatever it is, Like it's all about timing. This is a great time for Mitch. Dude, I was on ESPN, okay? incredibly rude to Mitchell Trubisky because <laughs> reports were coming out that he was having people turn off the TV because of the things that were being said about him in the facility. And now, granted, that was probably nowhere near true, uh, true, but he did not debunk it. Nobody debunked it. So I, my take was that he had people turn off TVs in the building because all anybody's saying is this guy oh, stinks. I, <laughs> I wasn't saying that I said it, but this is all anybody was saying about Mitchell Trubisky. I kind of echoed it, I guess. And then now we're hearing stories about how it wasn't pretty with he and Nagy. And we did see him play very good football in Buffalo. They're like, yeah. hey, this guy's a guy. We absolutely love him. Now, like any team that needs a quarterback is like, Nagy did get fired. This and then, guy yeah. stinks. Dude. And it, maybe, maybe Mitchell Trubisky wasn't the problem. And Offensive it, guru. Everybody in Buffalo. Well, he's going back <laughs> to Kansas City, see if he can find that magic again. Yeah. I assume he'll be able to do so. But whenever Stop we talk back. about Mitchell Trubisky, it's a great time to be him. It's a great time to be us, too. In the next hour, at some point, Vince McMahon will be here in studio. Be a friend, tell a friend. Cheers. Pat McAfee, you are hired. Vince McMahon. This is a self-made billionaire that turned something from a local situation to a worldwide phenomenon. I'm a massive documentary fan. I enjoy the hell out of people that revolutionize the world. Getting a chance to have that moment with Vince McMahon is one of the main reasons why I was like, I have to do this. I've been watching documentaries. Firm handshake. Big announcement! Vince McMahon, the WWE Chairman, will be live in studio Thursday on my show, Michael Cole. Vince McMahon, bang! Gonna be in the same seat right over here that wow. Brock Lesnar yes. was in. Where the hell have you been? Now it's time for SmackDown Rumble Championship Weekend. We just had another Super Bowl! Oh yeah. What a fucking three day run. I'm lucky to live this life and I'm thankful that you all watch. I'm giddy. I am so pumped. It's like the, the night before the first day of school when you were a kid. I know it's being said that the GOAT of the NFL, Tom Brady, is retiring. Well, the GOAT of the WWE, Roman Reigns, is in his prime at his peak. Hey, happy birthday. Happy birthday. All right. Our sources haven't confirmed whether or not Drew McIntyre can be standing up, but... Come on, Cole! Come on, Cole! Feel it, Cole! You better move, you might get knocked out. Knocked out. You better move, you might get knocked out. Oh, 
whole train has gone to the sky. When I'm anxious, ain't no limit till I tank. I'm running on fumes, the opposite and don't amaze the road. Switch to the pavement, get your hands out of my bag. I know that's because I've been in it. I'm near the bag. That's what happens when you taking care of your business. Bust a family, you do the math. I'm out of my pocket. You still got a problem. Oh, fuck you, bitch. Well, that is one of the worst of all time. The worst ports of all time. And a baby foxy! Just so everybody knows. And it's good right now. Chameleon gold and magenta jacket. Big Cuban link. Obviously, oh, like good watch. Pinky chain. Gold plated Steve Madden. When I woke up this morning in beautiful St. Louis, the air smelled better, food tasted better. Tonight, dreams come true. Surprises are in abundance. It's Royal Rumble. Let's go! Well, it is an honor to see the man. One of your ratings get this low, then I'll come to Buffalo. That's why you're a good guy. Oh, here we go. All right. Uh, put that capo on. Something? No, I was going to let you lead the way, and then we were going to sing our song that we practiced. What do you guys sing? It's our song, Aaron. Go ahead. Our song? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Well, I was just about to get into it. It's a Tuesday. They say that Aaron Rodgers is rather great. The son of a bitch lied. Oh. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that's where. I thought that's where we're still writing it. I thought we we're gonna. You guys just got a chance to kind of dive into a writer's room with me and Aaron. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hello, beautiful people. It is, oh my God, Vince McMahon is in studio Thursday, March 3rd, 2022. Hour three begins now. Yeah! Can't thank you enough for joining us. Vince McMahon is due to join us in studio at some point this hour. He is flying into Indianapolis. I'm not sure if he has landed yet and is in route to our studio. If he is still in the sky, we will keep you updated. When the Eagle has landed, we will obviously go to a break. We will be back four minutes after that. And Vincent Kennedy McMahon, for the first time in 15 years, will walk into a live interview right here in this hour. What a joke, dude. 
Let's I am go. so incredibly pumped. I'm so excited. I'm very thankful that he flew out here for this. I can't wait to chat with him. And I can't wait to, you know, kind of pick his brains on some of the decisions that he's made throughout his entire illustrious mogul building career. It should be a blast. I know the world is probably anticipating this from the wrestling universe. I know there's others that are probably intrigued. He rarely talks to anybody. And I feel like that is a great honor. I feel like I, you know, have some questions to ask that a lot of people haven't ever heard the answers from. Uh, and I'm lucky and pumped to do so. I assume he's going to come in here looking good. Though. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Uh, joining us now until we take that break, still in his attic in Ohio, ladies and gentlemen, Super Bowl champion, all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers and COVID survivor, ladies and gentlemen, A.J. Hall. Hey, A.J. Hey. AJ, thanks for coming back, pal. We have no idea when he's going to get here, but excited for when it happens. I know. Is he going to show up with a crew? Like, do you know, do you have any idea, like, who he travels with? I don't have a lot of information. I assume that he'll have his security people with him. They're big. Hey, you got Does something. he have any clue what he's walking into? I, you know, that's an interesting thing. I, I thought about that last night before I went to bed. My dog, Valerie, came back home from the hospital. It was great to oh, see yeah, her. Oh, yeah, I was glad to see that. Cuddled awesome with her all night. Yeah, love, absolutely love. I'm getting a call now. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, uh. People are gonna think this is a work. This is not. Hello. Nope, not a work. Hey, I'm live. I'm like literally live right now. This, do we have the microphones on and open? Should we mute them? Mute these. Is this Vince? I don't know. I didn't sound like unless they call him Kevin for fun. It's code name. Kevin. So who's Kevin? Your dog. Your old dog. I do have a German Shepherd named Kevin. Oh, trying to get everything set up. Oh, that's awesome. Are you with him? Are you here or no? Uh, is that Austin Theory? I, appreciate you, Austin. I don't think so. No. I don't think so. Uh oh. It's this gonna be a brawl. Make sure you guys I got a bat. We have kind of put helmets on. Everybody needs to relax. Okay, you need to relax. <laughs> that was literally somebody saying, Hey, he's fifteen minutes away. Now, granted, going back to your question, no, they have no idea what this is. <laughs> like, they, they, I'm live. They had no idea. You know what he I mean? ask, like, would they ask you if you have to mic him up or something? Yeah, yeah. And he by the way, doesn't need any prep. He says he doesn't want any prep. He's just coming right in and he'll even talk while he's being mic'd up. That's why I said, No, you can just walk in and sit down or whatever. So no, I don't think he has any idea. I assume people have told him what it could be or what to expect. And I want to learn I'm pumped about it. Yeah. I can't wait to see what this becomes. Uh, yeah, I would say. And he's smart, too. He's, he wants to go right from the front door right to that seat because he doesn't want to make a stop in that bathroom. That's for sure. Got a text. It's, it's <laughs> clean, dude. It's clean. Yeah, Come on. You haven't been here. Son of a bitch. Like four, oh, have you guys three. all been using porta johns outside today? Because I know it's, if you guys have been in there, it's no, not. You it's just not just a one-day situation. These dudes were lazy and irresponsible and disgusting in that bathroom for months. I don't and know. Schrager was in there for a while today. Oh, uh, yeah. We got, these, uh, we got these new urinal cakes made. They're uh, in the shape of AJ Hawk's face. Okay. So well, those are good ones. They're covering the entire I, Let me know. I'd like to one of those. Don't do that. It's kind of weird. Dump on your face. <laughs> but anyways, the entire... No, you piss on those. You don't dump on those. You could. No, you shouldn't, you could, though. Yeah. Like, that's not something you do. It's high school. Flush high school. Anyways, high school. anyways, let's move along here. Uh, I don't know. What's that? All right. Anyways, let's move <laughs> along here. When he comes in here, I don't think he has any clue what's going to happen. I'm very excited to get his immediate response because we have not talked. No. We have not talked. I, I have not, like, literally. I'm everybody has kind of, like, I got a text earlier uh, while we were live with Brandon Saylor. I forgot to say, like, he wants to break massive WWE news, he said. Like, I wow. got a text message earlier. What? Yeah, literally. What could that be? I have no idea. I literally have no idea. They, like, literally said, hey, big scoop. Like, big WWE news is coming. I'm like, okay. That's awesome. What, what the fuck could that be? Big WWE news, not big. We're, I don't know. I have no idea what that. I have no clue what to expect here. I just want to let everybody know that. I have no idea what's going to happen. So there's a lot of people, you know, that are around the internet that have their opinions on how this whole thing's going to go. I would like to let you know, straight up, not a clue. No, nope. I was told a hey, no. He does it. Time limit's not a big deal. So just do whatever nice. you guys do. That's huge. Have whatever conversation he wants to have a good time, and then now he's just walking right. I in thought here. you guys were choreographing this. Well, that's the thing about me. I'm really good at choreography. You know, yeah. the people say our show, whole show, is one of those types yeah. of shows that talks a lot. What? Does things on a repetitive basis. What? Scripts them out. What? A block. What? B block. What? C block. What? D block. What? Don't talk about D block subjects in A block. What? Hell yeah. Yeah, we don't do any of that. I don't think no. I've ever done that. And actually, a part I of. Know. I think we do. 
Well, I guess it, things have just kind of started happening. You know, yeah. like this is something that has just kind of become something. And we didn't even create this, by the way. Obviously, that's Stone Cold Steve Austin. Why? That's that whole entire thing. So things just start to happen there. But it, people forget, like for SmackDown, I literally arrive like hour and a half, two hours before. I don't know anything that's happening. It's just my natural reaction. I think anytime you've ever seen me do well in something, I have no clue what's going on. Anytime you've seen me probably not do great, when it's like, hey, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. So I'm very excited for what's about to take place before he gets here. I think we got to cover some things. So we're giving away four WrestleMania tickets. Two people will win two of them. Use the hashtag PMS, SeatGeekMania. Take a screenshot right now. And tweet it in. You could potentially random win. I hope that happens. Let's talk about some things going on around the NFL prior to what could the breaking news WWE uh, know? I have no idea. I'm trying to think now. Dongo's coming back for WrestleMania. <gasps> it's Mongo Clown. No, he's no. talking about Fondango. Oh, okay. Well, Mongo I know the McMichael, full name. by the way, love that guy. Yeah, yeah. that's what I that's thought what he was talking about. I don't know. What could it? That has Is to Dewey be something back? large. Is it Dewey? Oh, Dewey, Dewey, Dewey. Are you going to set up a program with Bob Backlund? Listen, oh. I've heard stories about Bob Backlund's strength. They're like, hey, don't go out there and talk to Bob Backlund. He will pick you up and put you down. Even that's just yeah. like, really? Like there was conversations, not, it was people that had been around a while that I don't know as well. I was just eavesdropping into the conversation. They're like, I'm not going out there shaking his hand. You know what he'll do? He'll, he'll, I guess Bob Backlund is a strong, stout guy. Like Ooh. I guess Bob Backlund okay. plays no games still. Probably why AJ, you know, is always alluding to him because he wish he had a similar physique as Bob Backlund. Yeah, well, Bob sense. Backlund is something we would right. all dream to be. You know what I mean? With that head, the, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, that could be a guy. You he's know a big I mean? nutrition guy. Like he's huge. Like take care of his body. Nutritionist. Why? Stretch the shit out of AJ Hawk. Oh across my his god. Oh. AJ would be. Would. Da, 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 da. I have no yeah. sense against Bob. Are you kidding me? I see that guy knee walking near me. I am running. You yeah, know that. that's smart. I, I, from what it sounds like, real life probably should do the same exact thing. Tom Brady sounds like a guy who isn't done playing Ooh, football. Mm, is what headlines yeah. are saying after he was talking to couples. Yeah, Fred yes. Boom Boom couples. Fred oh, really? couples. A golf. This is a golf uh, show on Sirius XM. Shout out to uh, Sirius XM getting this conversation. Shout out. Uh, Tom Brady, you know, couples ask, maybe you can tell us where you're going? Question mark. Because the conversation around Bruce Arians at his combine conversation hour, two hours, three hours, what? where he was talking in his press conference, he did our show, he did a lot of other shows. It sounded like he's not necessarily believing that Tom Brady wants to come back at all. He, I think Bruce Arians' quote that got, you know, really blown up into the headlines because people think that B.A. and Tom potentially are at odds with each other because of a report that got out there. And who knows what the truth is? We'll probably find out five years from now. But B.A. said, hey, Tom Brady probably just wants his fucking name out there. Hey, yeah. <laughs> I just want to say fucking attention or whatever. It's like, all right, so maybe that is the case. It doesn't feel like Tom Brady needs to do that. He has a movie coming out, 80 for Brady, yep. with the old ladies that he's producing and starring in about his Super Bowl. I don't know if he's coming back, but I know there's teams that want Gronk. I know that Tom does that TB12 shit where he eats avocado ice cream. Oh. He could probably play till he's 50. He's uber competitive. What do you think about this whole situation? Because Bruce Arians said if he's playing football, he's fucking playing for us. I don't know. With bad business to send him anywhere else. He's playing here. Do you think we ever see Tom back on a football field, AJ Hawk? I think there's definitely a real possibility we see Tom. Like from those from I'll that comment it. that Tom made, and I listened to the audio part of it. Sounds like he's already bored. He already yeah. wants to get back into it. He's like, all right, this is cool. I got a little taste of what this world is like. I'm, I'm going to go back and dominate and try to win some more rings. Yeah, and there's no way I can read that, uh, the font that they chose to mm -hmm. from across mm -hmm. the entire room. But Alex. Brady says, I tell you, I wish I had a clear vision of what the future holds. But I think for me, there's a lot of great things and a lot of great opportunities that I know I said right after football season, I was looking forward to spending time with my family. And I've done that for the last five weeks. <laughs> and I know there will be a lot more of that, too. So, you know, I like staying busy. All right. I know, I know that's for sure. Uh, I played a little bit of golf, and I'm actually going to see my parents tonight, oh, which nice. will be a real highlight for me on their turf. Okay. I'll be sleeping in the same bed I slept in when I was a kid. Okay. Wow. Massive bed as a kid. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe he's going back into a little tiny twin is it bed. A, is it a water bed? Maybe it's waterbed. Maybe that's where the pliability thing all started right there. Oh. He's in that era where waterbeds were big. Yeah, that is yeah, kind of that age bracket, right? That was the big push. Like, you need water. Waterbed's good for your back. It's good for comfort. That yep. whole thing will change around. So Tom gave nothing to his parents, huh? What do you mean? Well, Tony. they're still living at the same house. 
They probably yeah, love the house. They, they love the house. Yeah. They don't want to sell the house. It's a family's house. Yeah, and then he fo- uh, goes Sleep on. Sleeping in the same bed. Didn't say the same room. Same bed. Oh, you think oh. they picked up his room and put it in there like they did? It's a race the- car bed. I think it's a big race car. It's a Ferrari <laughs> bed. Oh. Oh. That'd be sick. What if it's actually a wrestling ring? What if it's a oh, wrestling ring? Yeah. And what if Tom Brady is going back to his family's new house where they replica his original bedroom and he's stepping over the goddamn ring <laughs> while he's going to bed in there and then he's obviously in fetal position because what, he's 6'5", he probably has grown a little bit since last time right. he was in this wrestling ring bed. I could see that. That'd be a pretty sweet fucking bed and that would say a lot about Brady the competitor he is if he was stepping him in, into the square squared circle every single every night. single night yeah everything's a fight and then he finishes it with saying he doesn't even think his mom knows so it should be a little bit of a surprise so looking forward to that looking forward to some golf in the next few days and some more family time and then we'll figure out where we go from there so that Ooh. that ending there is where everybody's like oh cliffhanger here we go is he saying that he's thinking about coming back i mean three days after he retired it was like tom's coming back it's like normally there's a honeymoon period where it's like, yeah, all that hard work, you know? Mm-hmm. That was a tough decision. Golly, it was looming over my head for the last 15 years, basically. Yeah. Finally retired. Let's go hang out with the kids and the wife, you know? Let's go down. Let's go to Carnival. All right, let's hang out at the house. Let's film a Facebook series real quick. Maybe family Bye. love. Let's eat some avocado ice cream. Bye. One week turns to two weeks of that, three weeks, four weeks, Bye. five weeks. Bye. And then Bye. on the sixth week, he's like, I'm actually counting the fucking weeks. I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, this is not me. get me back on a field. I can still sling it. I have my best year. Last year I was almost MVP. Yeah. I'm Tom fucking Brady. Come on. Yeah. Bruce Arian said yesterday, though, uh, what it would take to get Tom Brady away from the Buccaneers, five, five number ones. Fuck it, you send us five number ones. Come on. Come on, come on and get it. And with the way some of these GMs act with picks, I mean, what if it was to happen? Yeah. yeah. Gronk's an undra- or, uh, unrestricted free agent. I don't think he's officially announced that he's done or coming back. I would assume a lot of that hinges upon you know, what Tom Brady's thinking, but Tom Brady already retired, so I just assumed Gronkowski would retire, but Gronkowski has openly said, I play with Joe Burrow, I think. Mm -hmm. I I, I like that Joe Burrow guy. Now, Buffalo is allegedly trying to make a run at bringing Rob Gronkowski back home to Western New York. He would make any team better. Hey, Gronk, come on out here, Andy. Come on, it's a beautiful place. No, Buffalo makes sense, man. Go back, go home and try to get a ring there. That's actually, I mean, that could, that's a very real possibility. He plays. Don't you think that's the front runner? Yeah, and think about, I know Gronk is beloved in New England. Mm -hmm. Okay, down in Tampa. It would be amazing. Oh, him in Buffalo with Bill's Mafia. That is literally Gronk, right? Gronk is the living embodiment on a football field at six foot six, 200 and whatever, able to run a 4-3, 4-4, smartest football IQ, and still being able to just have a great time living life, not serious at all. Like, that's Bill's Mafia in a... A freak physique, right? Yeah. 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 I would, if it was an AFC East team, it'd make more sense personally if you went to like Miami. But I, I mean, the Bills have a little bit of cap. They could definitely still do it. How about him? How about him saying, though, the warm weather was nice on the body? Didn't he say that? Yeah. yeah. That's why. Buffalo is tough up there. That's yeah. a tough weather. Oh, yeah. Hey, the joints, you know what I mean? Those joints get a little sore. Like now we're back in the spring, so. You got the allergies, but I'm starting to feel a little bit more nimble, a little bit more fast because the weather's turning. People that grow up in just warm climates have no idea no, about that. No. None whatsoever. Yeah, you're right. But th- does he still have family up there and everything, or do they all kind of have they moved away from that? Because I would imagine he's still got friends and family galore up there. I mean, that has to do something for him. He grew it? up, went through high school, I believe, all the way until his final year in Buffalo. And I don't know why he ended up not being able to go to school his final year in the Buffalo High School, but he ended up coming to Western Pennsylvania. I have no idea why. Does, 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 do we have any clue why he came Probably to Woodland Hills? Gronk stuff. Well, also the pipe. He had to know somebody. Yeah, maybe a family member he had to or live a with. Coach, coach somehow, Wait, a family, he yeah, probably, something. He probably Googled where's the best place to play fucking high school football. I mean, Western Wednesday. Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah, so then he said, where's W? Double O D Y Woody High. So him, he did a very Gronk thing, I believe, to get out of his high school um, in <laughs> Buffalo. And then he he's always been the same guy, I believe. He's yeah. always been the exact same guy. But what a freak on the football field. He is so good. Do you remember there's these stories that come out, he doesn't watch film remember that he said yeah, oh, Tom that. just tells me what to do and then he was telling people oh I was just running with five different shirts on one day so it looked like it was five different days of sprinting or whatever that dude studies more film probably than anybody else probably works out so hard because he said what do people want me to do all I do is work out for three hours and then I have 17 hours left that guy is probably like one of the hardest working humans of all time but won't tell us until his hall of fame speech or some shit like that you know 
Yeah, I think he's fine with like the persona that people think of him as. Oh, he's just big goofy dude. Like, although he's very very smart, I think he he he's confident that he doesn't have to try to sell us how smart he is. Yeah, and he's very good at the football. I mean, he's yeah, got what like, toilet seats. Watch me on Sundays, bud. That's all that matters. Yeah, he's got toilet seats for mitts. Dude. Yeah. yeah. So like somebody throws it in an area, it's just like let me go ahead. and – my God, dude, number two, actually. Let me put the seat down, dude. And that's literally what he does in the middle of, like, at eight feet in the air, running 20 miles an hour somehow. And then he's able to just, like, shed people. He is – he was in the uh, the NFL 100, top 100 team. Like, yeah. as a current player, as a young player, it's like that is – he and Dawson Knox together. Whew. And everybody knew it. Wherever Tom went, Gronk was going. Everybody yeah. fucking knew it. Mm -hmm. And Tom was potentially coming to the call. Where was it? Gronk and Tom? And A.B. Man. Oh. And it's something you can ask Vince about when Gronk hosted WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. That was, hey, first WrestleMania with no fans. I mean, what do you want? Yeah. What do you want, dude? You, cowboy. That was good, you said. What's that all about? <laughs> Oh, no. oh, you're saying because the man that's about to come in here had to show him how to jump, had off, to jump off of a yeah. uh, 20 foot ledge, four, right? Four foot ledge, Tony. Hey, how about that dude? By the way, <laughs> listen, we're not going to talk about this, but like 76 years old, this dude, 74 years old, remember that happened? Just on top of a ledge, like, yeah, this is what you're going to do jumping out in a suit and then just getting up and like all right now i gotta go negotiate deals with every country in the world yeah <laughs> what a you know what i mean yoked yeah. up still yeah like this dude this dude is a, he's gonna hit a few sets out there on the on your rack before he comes in i bet i know i had us uh, i had made sure that they cleaned it so there was no dust on it because i think he will like check it out like uh, it hasn't even been used because yeah. <laughs> he's still there's still videos kind of him coming out squatting like 360 something yeah. i think yeah, yeah. Yeah. just never ever stops the guy and there's there's legendary tales about how they travel you know that business is on the road a lot where he'll have to obviously do every show and then he travels he gets to somewhere like 3 a.m and then he immediately puts his bags down gets in a car and you'll see him at some local gym just at like 3 a.m just absolutely getting after it just beast. full on beast while negotiating deals and trailblazing in a world that did exist before him but I don't think in the fashion that anybody, I don't know if anybody else could have got them to where they are right now. I think he's a couple minutes out. Okay. So I don't know if we go to a break. I saw no, Zeke no, running back and forth. What's he doing? Well, we. Uh, Coordinated. Yeah, there's, I, I think there's a lot going on because we got to get, uh, so we blocked a couple spots in the front, you know, for him to get in. Then we had to block off a little bit of the thing for him just to be able to get right in. And, you know, there's a lot of conversation going on, you know, because this guy is like one of one. Yeah. Like, it's a lot of responsibility. I can't fucking believe he's coming here. Like, I pitched. I pitched a FaceTime. I pitched, like, a, a Skype or whatever they mm -hmm. wanted. Zoom, whatever. Hey, let's do that. No, I want to be there or whatever. It's like, all right, shit. All right, <laughs> let's get some yeah. professional cleaners. He's going to hit you. He's definitely going to hit you. What's your that's problem? Why, why that's why you want to be in person. What's your problem? You? No, it's going to have a great conversation. I don't Wait, think it's part. It's not are. part of his program that you guys are running, but I think he's just going to get upset at some point and he'll probably smack you around a little bit. Now, there is a lot of previous interviews that he has been a part of that have gone. They're so awesome. Those are so fun to watch. <laughs> yeah. anyway. Now, he hasn't done a live interview in 15 years. Jeez. Okay, so, and if you look up some of his previous live interviews, they... <laughs> They end up being electrifying for a little bit of argumentative conversation yeah. that happens. Mm -hmm. Because Vince, by the way, trailblazer, you know, self-made billionaire, mm -hmm. he's probably going to feel pretty good about the decisions he made them, why he made them. You would never understand. You weren't there. And then the journalist who's asking the questions also, well, hey, here's some, here's some real questions outside looking in, you know, about what we're seeing. And those things... Those things built quickly. But this one, going to be a great combo. Yeah. yeah you like, kidding me? We got big time WWE news that we're going to break. Exactly. I mean, he's, I mean, this is going to be a magical moment in the history of this, of this program. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a buzz in the air that is palpable. Joining us live in Indianapolis, Indiana. In studio for the first time in 15 years, Vincent Kennedy McMahon! Yeah. Yeah. Oh my lord! AJ Hawk gets off the phone. The boys are here. Uh, Mr. McMahon, sorry about that. It's, a, it's If you want to move it, you can move it, obviously. Right. Hey, hey. I can't fucking believe you're here. You hear me? Thank you so much, Mr. McMahon. Vince. I'm Vince. 
Okay, good. Yeah. I was wondering what I should call you. Yeah. Right. Okay, I just want to show the respect. I understand when you're off camera, you're calling me a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard them, but. <laughs> no, no, not me. Many others. And I think a lot of those people are tuning in today to hear a conversation from you live because I've gotten a chance to chat with you off air. And I've been very lucky to ask you questions and you give me actual advice. And whenever you were the one that decided you wanted to be here in person, I took a lot of honor in that. And I appreciate the hell out of you being here. We re This is big for our show. Thank so you. we thank you. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for fucking Vince is here. Yeah. yeah. Now let's get into it, boss. Um, just the mere mention of your name, everybody on earth knows. Okay. And what we have here in like 30 days is basically the yearly global standard for live events. Okay. WrestleMania. WrestleMania. Especially this year's. WrestleMania, creation of yours, obviously, but this year's WrestleMania, the most stupendous two-night affair. Whenever you were a kid, a tiny kid, mm -hmm. did you know you were going to be doing like this type of thing? Did you know you were going to be doing business? Were you like, an, uh, like a businessman as a kid, an asshole as a kid? Like, what were you as a kid, and is this all expected from you? Um, well, I don't believe in ceilings. And um, did I ever believe I would be here? No, but I did not believe it. Got it. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I, I don't think that way. I don't think ceilings. I don't think uh, milestones. You know, like I, I don't think pats on the back. I just think about doing, enjoying what you're doing and doing it and building it. And is that why you feel like whenever you make a decision, you never back off it? For instance, like WWE Network, when you started that, the mm -hmm. subscription service, years ago, you were killed, right? I mean, yeah. everybody, your fans, mm -hmm. fans allowed, obviously, all the time in the wrestling sure. business, the world you created. Media alike, why is this, they're doing this, you're gonna cut down your audience. Now everybody on earth wants to be a part of the subscription service. Right. Why did you not back off of that? And there's many other decisions you've made that you've gotten killed for. Do you think it's because you're just a, a let's go do this thing type guy, or why do you think it no, is? No, at all. Um, I think everything we do is calculated. You need to have some really smart people around you. You need to listen to them and make your decision. But in that instance, it really, we had a great deal uh, that, was, that was given to us pretty much by Comcast. But when you got into the lawyer stuff and any gritty of it, they tried to tie your hands into in so much creativity, tie your hands in terms of owning you, moreover, and I've I've never liked that. <laughs> <laughs> so really, it was more about creative control and having control of your own destiny. So that's why we went that way. So I'll just create my own network. How you doing? Keep it moving. I happen to own this show as well. I respect you. And obviously, you're a person that I look to as a trailblazer in this world. Because before you, I assume there was some people that were, had success in the world of wrestling. But what you've been able to do with it, I don't think anybody else on earth would have been able to do it. Do you hear the news or do you hear the noise whenever people say, like, this wrestling thing is much better because of you? And do you hear the noise that, hey, this wrestling thing because of you has turned into what it wasn't originally like do you hear that shit or do you try to stay out of all of that i stay out of all of it really I really yeah i mean i think um you know again i'm not big on the pats on the back it really screws with your mind you know you're somebody i'm just who i am yeah. you know um and i you know all the if you listen to the positives and you have to listen to the negatives i'm not big on negatives at all I, you know, a negative is a, no matter what it is, is a double negative. Because if you're dealing with this negative, that means you're not dealing with a positive in which you can put your, you know, your, 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 your intellectual cost in that positive, not the negative. So I try and stay away from negatives as much as possible. And, um, you know, members of the media, you know, or they're going to say what they're going to say, you know. Um, and there's nothing you can do to change it, really. Because you spend all your time saying, no, no I'm not that. Hey, he's on the mic, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, man, that's us. We should have moved I get on. my hands going. <laughs> no, no, that's good. Hey, feel free to do whatever the hell you generally, want. Yeah, yeah. Generally, anything that's in my way, I'm knocking down. <laughs> yeah, that's, well, a lot of so, people have a lot of questions about that as well. So, in any event, you know, I, you're dealing with a negative, and it's like, if people think you're an asshole, you, know, you, you can't change that. No, no, no. I'm not really an asshole. I'm really a nice guy. I'm this. Yeah, you're an asshole. No, but really, you know, I'm a good guy. I love my family. You're an asshole. No matter what. So it, it doesn't matter what. You, you can't change perception generally when people, when you're a public persona type thing. You can't. You know, so well, especially you, by the way. Don't bother. You know, so it, it doesn't bother me. I used to really used to care about people like what they thought of me. I care about what the general public thinks of me in general, as far as the business is concerned, you know. Um, it's just that if people think I'm an asshole, then 
Congratulations, I guess I am. <laughs> <laughs> At what point did you make that decision that you didn't care what people thought about you? Because, by it, the way, your stamina in this thing is unbelievable. It, it took a while. Um, I think um, and when you're first starting out uh, and you're giving it everything you possibly can and doing it for all the right reasons and people start knocking you, calling you something that you're not and what have you, it, it, it bothers you at first. And you try and correct it. But then you realize this is not going to work. I'm spending a lot of time trying to correct this you know, poor image of me. Mm. And, and, I'm, and I'm spending time over here and things I can do from a positive standpoint. So you really do have to give it up. And I don't mean just a little bit. You really just can't care you know, what me, members of the media or people that don't understand you or people have an opinion of you no matter what. You just can't care. You have to enjoy the fact, though, that so many people care about the universe that you created, right? I mean, you're, obviously your dad was in the business, but right. it was not the WWE universe. And let's, right. I, actually, this is a question I think a lot of people would like to know. Because it is, you know, wrestling is involved in the name. Wrestle mania is happening here in like 30 days and i think the evolution of wrestling into what it has become mostly because of all because of what you have done with this thing that was once a carny spectacle regional now it's a global sensation and also bringing you know people together i yeah. think that would never ever relate i think the evolution is that why you don't like the word wrestling to be described as what you do because you feel like it's a lot different or what is it you think no uh, there's always been wrestling and um i wanted to separate us from everybody else you know and my dad uh was a part of the well he was part of the nwa but he had his own branding it was worldwide wrestling federation many many years ago and I thought that was brilliant. I thought, you know, wow, okay, you're, you're making yourself different from everyone else. And at the time when I bought my dad's business, uh, he had never sold it to me if he knew what I was going to do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, a lot of old school wrestling people, right? Yeah. Think like that? So, in any event, it's like, um, you know, separate yourself. You know, and be who you want to be, and especially the brand. It's like, it's WWE. It was WWF, which is another story. Um, hey, that panda got you. Oh, well, the panda got us to a certain extent <laughs> because of the World Wildlife Fund, which I, I didn't even know existed. Well, <laughs> yeah. We learned about it through you, I think. Right. Like the whole world did, by the way. Shout and, out to that uh, panda. But in any event, it was like it, that was a, a no win lawsuit for me because of, uh, you know, you, you're being tried in England where they wear the wigs and this, all the kind of stuff. <laughs> and I, I wouldn't fit in that environment. <laughs> <laughs> so I just said, okay, we'll change it. So, uh, and it was pretty easy to do because it was like, hmm, I'm going to change it. Uh, it took about 30 minutes at the most. I know what I'll do. I'll get the F out. So we did. How is, is that your creative process? Because the Comcast deal that almost happened, right, they had a little bit of creative control and you wanted the creative control because are you just, have you always been just a super creative human being? I mean, you're putting on two shows a week on TV now for like 30 years, 40 right. years at this point. The amount of shows and ideas you've had to create, not all of them have been great. I think everybody would right. recognize that. <laughs> but there has been some brilliant and incredible moments through like four different decades at right. this point. Have you always been super creative? Like how, how did this all come to be, you think? Um, well, we have a lot of creative people around us. You yeah, know, but you, everybody and knows. And it's a team. You know, and we have a great team and uh, great executives and, and what have you. We're on the precipice now of really, really taking off, you know, in the business world. And um, so that's where I look at it. We're at another plateau and a platform. But creatively, um, again, you have a, you, I listen well. And I think that's important because you can't learn if you're talking. I can sometimes, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have the unique ability to be you right now listening to me and knowing whether or not you're buying my shit. Oh, yeah, okay. reading, good I'm, read. I'm listening to you, moreover, listen to me. Body language. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Body language and even the way you're thinking, you know. Hey, everybody listens to you when you talk, dude. You're fucking Vince McMahon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I know you don't like that. I know you don't enjoy people saying that. And you don't like pats on the back. You literally just said it. And it's a long withstanding thing that in the Hall of Fame speeches, like, hey, don't thank Vince McMahon. Even though, by the way, you probably created the concept that is going into the Hall of Fame and took over and everything like that. You hate that type of shit. With that being said, that is what I like to talk about, that type of stuff. You're an absolute legend. And it, I think we have some news to break, too. Do we not about Hall of Fame? Do you want to do, do that right indeed. now? Yep. Undertaker, of course, is going to be in the Hall of Fame. And I'm going to have the distinction of uh, inducting him in the Hall of Fame. Let's wow. go! Hey, that's a big 
deal, right? This is a massive deal. You've only done this, I think, for Stone yeah, Cold. This would be one of the most difficult things I have ever done in my life. How come? Because I, I like the guy. I love, I love the guy. <laughs> Not just like I love the guy. We've known each other for so many years. You've been through all kinds of situations, you know, um, some that glad we didn't make the newspapers and so forth, you know, but I mean, you know, when you live on the road like that, you know, you have your family at home. When you live on the road, man, you have to have a family on the road and you have to have people you can count on, rely on, that are loyal and what have you and trustworthy and not have to look over your shoulder. And he's that kind of guy. He's an extraordinary human being as well as one of the premier, one of the all time greats in the ring. But it's the human being. I could talk about the character and it won't bother me at all. But in my mind, I'm thinking, when I'm up there going to inducting him, I'm thinking about, I know who he is. Yeah, I'm you know? And that's tough when you know someone that's that close and you care about them so so much. You know, that's going to be one of the most difficult things I've ever done. Well, I want to let you know, I think a lot of people are probably very surprised to see. You got choked up there at the beginning, man. I hey, didn't. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I did not. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Listen, that just happened right uh -huh. here. We got it on camera. <laughs> this show, dude, this show got to, hey, shout out to us. Yeah, shout out. You, go. you got choked up there. But that the relationship with Undertaker, and you said the loyalty, and it, this has been documented pretty well. And, you know, I like watching all the behind-the-scenes stuff. I've obviously been a fan since I was a kid. A lot of what wrestling that I watch as a uh, uh, teenager, and growing up created the person that I am, but the Undertaker loyalty through the the Monday Night Wars, right. right? This is where I feel like you and Take probably came closest because his character, massive. He was able to do whatever, whenever at that point, if he wanted to jump ship, would have been a turn, massive turn. That would have been a huge swing, but he stuck by your side. I got a chance to chat with him a couple different times. Incredibly nice to me. When you're in the middle of those wars, okay, do you, when you look back on the WCW Turner War like that, did it change you like creatively as a human when you're in that moment because everybody says Vince McMahon when there's competition is at his absolute best mm -hmm. so now there's there was TNA that came and went Impact is kind of back now AEW is the big one they just bought Ring of Honor I believe last night in there so like when everybody says competition makes Vince McMahon better what do you think that means and, and do you believe that looking back on the those two like very similar feeling situations well I'm probably one of the few people in the world who enjoys confrontation. So. <laughs> <laughs> like you enjoy it. I, I enjoy confrontation. I mean, it, it's one of the things that really, you know, revs you up. It's one of the things that really puts you on your toes. It's one of the things in terms of, okay, what am I going to do here in that split second? I enjoy confrontation, so physical confrontation. I enjoy that, you know? Yeah. Um, so with a background like that, you know, and a further background when I was a kid, it was like, hey, we don't want to hear a, another bad kid story or something like that. But my philosophy... Uh, we do, by the way. Well, no, I'm not going to tell you that. But what I will tell you <laughs> this is that uh, okay. I learned um, a long time when I was a kid that if I live through that beating, I win. So if you live through the beating and you won, what can you do to me? Mm. You know, so in terms of competition, in terms of that confrontation, I'm, I'm not afraid of it. I, I relish it. You know. And by the way, getting back to The Undertaker... Undertaker and I never had a conversation about him going to WCW. Not one. I never asked him. He never said anything about it. Not one. Well, see, that is, I think, why all the documentaries and why you're inducting him is going to be so special yes. because you two just have a, a great relationship. Yeah. And I think you hinted on something that probably not a lot of people have ever heard of, including myself. Sorry to hear you went through that, but that mental toughness, you think you had that as a, you think the mental toughness is potentially what makes you and separates you from everybody else? I don't know. There are a lot of things that, you know, I'm just wired differently than most people. That's all. And that's probably one thing, but you know, I think heredity plays a part in it. You know, um, you know, it's, you're just who you are and you, you accept that and you know what your weaknesses are, you know, and your strengths are and you use them in, in the best appropriate way you can. So whenever you are a kid grinding through, you know, growing up, mm -hmm. visualizing things, you always wanted money. So when I was a kid, I looked up at the hill, okay, right. and there was rap videos, and there was Escalades on 24s, right. oh, and man. there was like these big houses up on the hill, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to buy one of those, and then I want that Escalade on 24s right there. The day I was drafted, I bought a Cadillac Escalade and put 24s on it. I didn't get my signing bonus for three months. That Cadillac Escalade on 24s almost got repoed immediately and I had to show a news thing. But when you were a kid, you always had dreams of being incredibly wealthy? Uh, no, 
Just no. successful? Nothing like that? What was um, I just wanted to be everything I could be. Um, I, I got to grew up in an eight foot wide trailer in a trailer park, you know, and uh, which was great. I didn't know any different. It was, it was awesome, yeah. which was a step up from where I lived before with no running water. But nonetheless, <laughs> um, it's not one of those things whereby, you know, I'm, one day I'm going to have a ton of money and that sort of stuff. You want to be successful? You know there's a better life than where you are right there. <laughs> you, you definitely, so you want to reach beyond that, you know, for sure. Um, but it's not, um, I mean, you hear people bullshit and say they would do what they would do without, you know, without the money. You know, I would. I know I would. But, uh, and, you know, I don't know what's in the bank. I don't care. There's no difference it's between a lot. me and you. Hey. Know, number of zeros hey, on it's the a end lot. of what you... You got a lot in there. Yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> I've seen it on the internet. You, congratulations, by the yeah. way. Eight-foot trailer? Eight-foot trailer to all those zeros, dude? Anyways, get back to what you're saying. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is incredible. You say it's not about that, though, right? For you? you, you it I, wasn't for me. You know, I mean, I think there was a period of time when um, after, well, probably WrestleMania four or five, I thought I was somebody, you know, and had an ego that way. Not that I don't have an ego, but, but have an ego that way in terms of, yeah. And then it was like, mm, that lasted for about six months. And it was like, that's, you're just like everybody else. You put your pants on the same way, you know? You happen to be very, very fortunate because you're doing what you love to do. And the odds of me sitting in here, you know, and even being alive are astronomical, <laughs> if you knew my background. I mean, astronomical. How come just one thing, we don't have to dive into all of them, but what do, what do you mean by whenever you say that? Like, for instance, I booze like five to six times a week for sure. like four to five years while I got into the NFL. Sure. Probably took a lot of years off my life. That is something I'm projecting. Are you saying that you're, because you, you are 76 years old at this point, you've been on... Well, this is what other people said. The internet said this. You know, the internet said this. The internet said you're 76 years old and you're still doing it. You're still working though. Like at this point, what do you mean? Like you shouldn't even be alive. You're, you're talking. Well, I'm, I'm not working though. None of this oh, because this is life. You think, you think this is work, guys? <laughs> <laughs> none of this is work. What I none of what I do is work. I love it. I love the people I do business with. You know, and uh, in the organization and out. You know, uh, it's not work at all. None of it is. You know, it's one of the reasons probably I can put in so many hours or whatever it is goes, it's not work. So whenever you think about the future, because a lot of people on the internet, they say uh, with some of the moves that get made. Now, listen, I'm in the, I was in the NFL where I have lunch with a dude, okay? I go into my meeting. I, can, I never see that guy again. That guy was cut. He's gone. This is the NFL. There's only a certain amount of spots. With you, whatever you have to make those decisions to move forward, people always assume that you just have no heart and you do not care at all about any of these people. Then there's podcasts that happen. Each one of those decisions that you make, whether it's to release somebody or, by the way, push somebody or keep somebody, how much weight, of, like, are any of those decisions like super more difficult than others or is it just always like what will make the best show in your eyes? Like, is I'm that always concerned about what's best for the audience? Always. What does the audience want? And if you have dead weight around you, or you had situations whereby someone's not cutting it, or maybe, and you have an opportunity for someone else to come in, it's like, okay, that's probably the best thing. It was one of the reasons why, you know, with uh, Hogan and a lot of those guys who left me at one time, and, you know, why I brought them back. You know, I mean, it's like, you know, I'll never bring that son of a bitch back again as long as I live. <laughs> it's like, you know, when you say stuff like that, you know, you're, you're really hurting yourself because you're not thinking about your audience, you're not, you're not thinking about your product. And it's not about you and your ego, it's like, yeah, okay, maybe I really felt that way, maybe I didn't, but nonetheless, it, it doesn't matter. What's the best thing for business? If the audience wants Hulk Hogan back, you bring him back, if he has value that way. Well, there's a lot of very famous like disagreements that you've gotten through. Is that a business mindset, you think, to bring people back? Is it a personal mindset, it, no, or is no, it, it just? It's not personal, it, it, it's, it's business. And once I took the uh, company public, it helped me be a better businessman because prior to that, I was running a business mostly with my head, but mostly with my heart as well. And you, these decisions are so damn tough when you do that, you know, um, because you know who it is, you know, his kids or this and that and the other, or somebody has cancer in the family or whatever it is, and all that computes in your head, you know, when you're a, a, but once you're a public company, now, you know, you owe stockholders. You owe the business. That's right. It is the business then. So it helps me make. Uh, easier business and better business decisions because my heart, there's still some of it in there, you know, but uh, <laughs> I, know, I know it sounds all of it. There is, you know, uh, but at the same time, it's business. 
and there's nothing personal about it in terms of whether I like somebody or I don't like someone or whatever. And again, sometimes um, you know, athletes maybe more so in our in our type of business when when they're not given the opportunity, or even if they are and it doesn't work, that people from all walks of life seldom look in the mirror and say, Coach is you know what, I was the guy who fucked up. It, it was on me. You know, instead, everybody has a million excuses as to why things didn't work. And generally speaking, the heat has to go someplace, the old blame game. <laughs> and, and I'm the bad guy. So, I don't, you know, that's part of the job. Yeah, you're okay with being the bad guy for the business. And I assume that helped for the business to make those decisions. But, yeah, in our world, it's always the coach's fault, man. It's the coach's fault. The coach, the coach fucked me, hated me. I mean, that's an entire thing. That's our world. And you do take a lot of heat for all that type of stuff. But none of the great ideas... Like, you don't get any of the credit for any of the great ideas or the great characters that everybody beloves. And the people, by the way, that they're actually upset that are leaving WWE, you're probably the one that, you know, maybe thought of the idea or decided how to get that idea going, or you're a part of it. I understand right. it's an entire team thing. Do you have a favorite WWE moment or favorite WWE run or program or anything like that? Well, I always like to say, like many other those, uh, many other people do, is just like, okay, it's going to be the next big moment will be my favorite, you know? Uh, but I think WrestleMania won... Uh, was important to me because it was like that. I, I had I had hawked everything I had, you know. And oh, you went all in. Oh, yeah. I didn't have any money, you know. Even when I was competing with these other guys, it's like I I had a really 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 strong work ethic, and with the work ethic, I had some degree of creativity, uh, and you know, and balls by the ton, and uh, and you just go do it, you know. And so that's kind of the way I operate. And, and these other guys had. Were, were millionaires. I was nothing. I had nothing but cash flow. I bought the business, you know, what we call mirrors from my dad. And I didn't really have the money that I said I had, you know. <laughs> Promoting, baby. We're well, promoting out there, baby. <laughs> it was like a balloon payment thing, they used to call it, where here's so much down, and I don't have the rest of it, but here's so much down, and over the course of a year, there are installments. If you don't make any of those installments, then they keep the money that you gave them and have the business back. So that was over a course of a year. And uh, every installment was, oh, my God, this is great. We got this kid's money, and we got the business. And until the last one, and it was like, hmm, huh. what's happened here? <laughs> <laughs> this son of a bitch made it work somehow. Uh, that You hedging your future on everything going on. competing with other, the other guys, you know, I mean, they're millionaires. I, I really didn't have anything. It was ca all cash flow. So if I were to go into St. Louis or something like that, which was a NWA territory and not part of my – dad's northeast type territory it was all broken up in the united states and all over the world for that matter but um you know and you're going to other people's territories it's like mm, you don't do that you, yeah you the business is real that that's like a real thing right because i i see on young rock there's a young rock <laughs> you're you're part of young rock the guy who did you see the person who plays you on young rock no will you ever Will I ever see the person that plays you I, on Young Rock? I'm gonna doubt it, but no. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a young Vince McMahon calling to Hawaii, trying to negotiate for some wrestlers for your territory where right. you're a young upstart. Right. That wrestling territory game was super serious, right? I mean, that was like right. there was like some real that was strict business, right? I, it I, was. I, you know, I don't know how many different rivers I was supposed to be at the bottom of. You know, <laughs> you know death threats are what they are. You know, and it's like. I always felt like if you can knock off a president of the United States, then I'm easy to get to. Yeah. You know, never had a bodyguard, none of that stuff. And, uh, and, and those days, it was like when you, from their standpoint, invaded their territory. Uh, it was like, well, okay, Dems is not just fighting words. It's like there's so many, so many times when people threatened me, uh, and it was like I, the last guy I said, like, you better get, if you want to take credit for it, you better get me quick. <laughs> <laughs> so many, you know, there's a story that uh, Jim Ross was telling me one day and he was with Bill Watts and some of the other old NWA guys and uh, and they're having this conference because there's a whole bunch of them what are we gonna do about this kid you know just invading everything you know we gotta do something about him and uh, so you know they couldn't order lunch together I knew that I mean they couldn't do that even t together but nonetheless what do you mean too dumb not broke too um, broke no just egos and so forth oh they, they didn't like each other either no. so they hated you that was like you were the enemy of all their enemies yeah. I was a jail. So they're meeting in terms of what what can they possibly do. So now Jim is not a part of the meeting, you know, so, but Jim is now in the men's room. And uh, he's in the men's room in the stall taking care of business and walks four of these pro most prominent uh, uh, promoters and they're talking about how they're going to off me. 
and this guy knows this guy, I know I can do this, and I, this guy did this, it was really impressive, and they all know people, so they're all talking about who's gonna off me. So now imagine Jim Ross. Bucko! I go kill Vince McMahon! <laughs> he's thinking, he's not, doesn't give a shit about Vince McMahon. <laughs> he's thinking about himself. I was thinking about it, so he's on the throne, and it's like, he hears this, he's like, oh no, I'm gonna be accessory to murder. So he takes one foot and puts it on the seat, and takes the other one, <laughs> puts it on the seat, so now they can't see his feet, you know, below the stall. And of course, Mother Nature is calling at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> He's got so, those cowboy boots up in the squatty potty position. <laughs> oh. So nonetheless, finally he waited for them to finish off. Uh, you know, okay, who was going to kill me and all that kind of crap? But uh, that's just one of the things. Yeah, that's just one of the. Yeah, that's just another day of incident. Well, yeah. uh, really, I mean, what are you going to do? So he, he told me about it f like five years after he came to work for me. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't working for me then, naturally. Yeah, he was working. You, you could have called, told me earlier. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's waiting for you to hire him, give him a little bit of money down or get a little coin. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, you, whenever you say you enjoy confrontation, mm -hmm. and I would assume. Not enjoy, but you don't. You're not scared away from. It. You probably do enjoy it, but that also has probably led you into situations that many other people probably wouldn't. Business wise, like, hey, don't know how this is going to go. For instance, you doing a show in Saudi Arabia, okay? Be this was before I, you were the first person I think that went over there and almost like offered a, hey, let's go ahead and maybe try to bring the world together a little bit. Was that because you heard there were big fans? And when you go into a meeting like that, how? What the fuck do you, your eight foot trailer is where you grew up at. Now you're doing meetings with royalty mm -hmm. in Saudi Arabia. Like, how do you even prepare for that? What do you expect for that? And since that relationship has started, have you seen like their country develop more and maybe get a little bit more lenient, which is good for the entire world, I think, right? Well, Saudis are no different than any other people. You know, WB fans all over the world. No, so it doesn't how'd you matter. know they were just watching on the internet or how'd you find out that it was uh, actually well I've known for years we, we've had a presence over there for years uh, and Saudi everywhere no, there's no place on the globe that we don't have a presence so Saudi fans are you know really really enthusiastic like they are everywhere else so it was an opportunity to play before the for the audience well, no different than people love western culture all over the world they don't love our government but they love western culture hey nobody loves it and, and our you know our form of entertainment you know, with wb kind of fits into everything it's larger than life it's like you know everything imaginable that you could ever like oh my god a spectacle of it you know so it fits in everywhere um and we translate it in I don't know, 40 languages or something like that but even if there's just english you get it you understand so um We've always been, you know, popular everywhere. Saudi was, is no different. And again, people are people. It's, you know, you, you know, and cultures are cultures, and you have to respect that. Just because we, as Americans, this is the way we should do. This is the way the whole world should be like us. We know the way, and any, any other way is just not the right way. Come on, culture's been around. Thousands of years. Oh, well, hey. You know, long before, long yeah. before us. Yeah, it depends which uh, book you read. There's millions of years, <laughs> yeah. potentially. But, like, that is, that's a very real thing. And you, like, situations are situational is something I say all the time because it's very real. Everything is its own individual battle. With everything you have going on, whether it's negotiations and deals with Saudi Arabia and their culture, and then you have 40 different languages, I think you just said, how do you have the time to do everything? Like, I, I, do you have, you wake up 3 a.m., golf, what is Mark Wahlberg's schedule? Mark, this is what Mark Wahlberg says, just so, <laughs> to preface your answer. Three o'clock, you woke up, played nine holes, yep. read the whole Bible, uh -huh. snack, snack, snack time. kid time, yep. shower for 45 minutes, That's right. drop the kids off at school, work, work out again, do that entire thing. Do you have a, every single day is the exact same thing like all the billionaires seem to have? <laughs> I'm not like all the billionaires. <laughs> I'm not like anybody else in the world. I'm be, I, I probably finish training, probably finish training around 3 a.m. Every day. Pretty much. What time do you start? Oh, on a good day, like 1.30. I, 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 maybe a little bit more than that. Depends on how much time I can actually spend in the gym because it, I, you know, it's almost like I have, I have to force myself to get out. And I've always overtrained, which is not good for you. It's just that I, it's my only socially acceptable outlet for aggression. <laughs> you know? Those weights. Yeah. And then you can't pick some of them up. You know, they weigh too much. <laughs> the hell, I can't. And they, okay, well, 
can do the best you can. But always a meathead. What's that? Always super meathead. Like no, well, no, no. Got into it. No, just got into it. It's I do this for my head more than I do my body. It's good for you. You know, I love that. I take care of me as best I possibly can, and try to eat the right things and all of that. But um, it it really helps me more mentally and psychologically, and so that I can handle the workload and handle all the stuff that comes my way. You know, a lot of it's emotional, you know, because you're doing business with people. You know, I mean, people are people. You know. And they all have problems, and they all have ambitions, and they all have this. And, and dealing with all of that can be a little challenging sometimes, but you know, it helps me deal with that. And whatever the business problems come, you know, they're, you know, people get hit by a bus every day. How do you deal with it? Well, it depends how big the bus is. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> ever a day you doubted anything was going to happen in the whole run? Like if the bus was too big? Was there ever a day where you've doubted yourself or doubted the business or the company? Um, I don't think there's ever a day that I doubted what I wanted to do. I mean, you always wonder whether or not it's the right decision. Um, and then you learn from that decision, and whether it was good or bad. It was really, really successful, great. Okay, I'm just about to try that again in some other form. And how did you make that happen? You know, what were the tools that got you there? You know, and um, so I, I don't really have a down day. That's amazing to hear. And I think you've been able to evolve and WWE has been able to evolve. The network being the subscription service before every other subscription service tried to become a subscription service. And all the subscription services that are trying to become subscription services now were taking shots at you for starting your subscription services. But whenever you're talking about all of those different decisions that you make, right? Well, it all comes down to common sense. It really does. Every decision? Pretty much. You need, you need information as much as you possibly can. Uh, and then common sense is a really, really big part of that in, in every decision we make. Any decision that you look back on that was like, ah, oh, that was one that shouldn't have fucking done that one. Like, is there any of those that you look back on while you no, go through I, it? Because if... Oh, you so, don't like negatives, by the way. Why would we even think well, about exactly. it? Exactly. <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah. I was like, that's but, 50 but, minutes ago. What am I even doing? You literally but, just but said But you it. learn from what, you know, what happened uh, that didn't go well, and that's factored into what you're doing going forward. So... But no, you don't draw. I don't draw any of that. The ability to evolve, though, with the subscription service before everybody else, with the digital platforms and attacking YouTube, which was before everybody else, and you have the biggest YouTube presence in your social media, and just kind of evolving has always been something that you do. Excited to see what you do with the metaverse, by the way. I think we're all very excited. Sure. Somebody came on, I forget who it was. It might have been Bischoff, it might have been somebody that said, if Elon Musk is going to colonize Mars, or it's Paul Heyman, the wise man, Paul Heyman, who grew up in the wrestling business as well. He said if Elon Musk is going to colonize Mars, Vince McMahon is going to get the promotional rights up there and he's yeah. going to put on an event up there. What is next? I'm not saying a show on Mars is next, even though it fucking might be with you. I have no <laughs> idea. But what is, do you, do you think about the future? How far in the future can you think? Obviously, WrestleMania. The most stupendous WrestleMania in the history of WrestleManias is happening in like 30 days. But what do you... A, it was like, um, I love branding. We almost we try to brand everything and marketing and all that. It's just fascinating to do that. So you have to do what makes this WrestleMania different. So the word stupendous is not used very often. So when you're hitting stupendous, it's like stupendous. What the hell is stupendous? Mm. You know, a lot of people have to look it up. You know, and it sounds good. It sounds grand, like stupendous. Wow, what the hell is stupendous? <laughs> you know? But it's all you know. I would use that word before, and it's not an everyday speak. Stupendous is not an everyday speak, so that's why you want to do something to get everyone's attention, you know. And then, oh, okay, what's stupendous in WrestleMania, et cetera. So it's things like that. Yeah, so whenever you think of stupendous, how long does that take for you there? How, how long is that branding? Are you walking around your office that has that, that goddamn dinosaur head behind you? Are you walking around that office? Are you in a suit? Are you doing the billionaire strut around the office while you're thinking that? How long does the stupendous branding, after all these years of doing this? I mean, WrestleMania 38, here we are. Congratulations, by the way. That was before you were born, but that's great. <laughs> yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, at what point, how long is it, make, like, that decision is thought of, and then it's like, boom, we're going with it. I have 2,000 other things I have to do mm -hmm. as well. Well, I think when you're creative, um, and some people think it's a burnout factor, it's not really, because if you're concentrating on one thing at the moment, which is difficult for me to do, but, uh, and, me too. and you, all your creative skills are pouring in, and something else comes this way that's also creative, it's a great relief because hang on and you deal with this and then when you come back you'll think differently generally speaking 
or what you just learned from that. So it's it's a big creative wheel all the time that's going on constantly. So you're thinking of ideas, planting seeds in your head for something going forward. That, that's kind of what I do, by the way. Like, And I don't want to ever compare our brains because unless I'm doing something... You would want my brain. Yeah, I wouldn't want... <laughs> no. Yes, I'm fucking... What, are you kidding me? <laughs> Absolutely. You wouldn't want my... Hey, you wouldn't want my brain. How about yeah. that? How about that? You wouldn't want my brain. That's the whole thing. But whenever you're... <laughs> Probably, yeah, that is, that is 100% true. I don't even know why I put that in there. But you're thinking about stuff just constantly. It's just how you're wired, do you think? So, like, whenever something comes up in the future, it's like, oh, I had already thought about this at one point when I was maybe, I don't know, Billy strutting around the office or in the workout or in the gym. That's kind of how it all kind of pieces together for you and your creative. Really, there's, you just need to be wide open. And I think uh, being creative is you just have to stay wide open as far as, you know, your head is concerned. You know, and just be able to accept, you know, whatever's coming in from whatever source. And uh, I'm really fortunate because I have like kind of like a second, um, not a second brain, but a second wheel that's going on all the time. Oh, nice. I've got the one I'm using right now. And at the same time, I'm thinking of something else right now, you know, in, in another way that I could easily snap to. And then sometimes there's a third one as well. But it's like, and sometimes all that can get very confusing. Hey, I would want that brain, by the yeah. way. That'd be pretty sweet. Uh -huh. hey, well, what's everybody saying? That'd so, cool. you know, it, it's like many times when I get really, really tired, which is seldom, but when I do, wow, it's so, no, but it's so good because you can focus then on one thing, you know? What a flex that was right there, by the way. It's when I get tired, uh, which is seldom, Very seldom. but yeah. when, I, when it does that, it's such a flex right there, you know what I mean? But whenever you... I did just that, I flexed? No, no, uh, like... I never flexed. <laughs> hey, we saw those boobs bouncing on the internet yeah, this morning. Uh -huh. We saw that thing popping Ooh. off. Hard work in the gym. I mean, you talked about it. You ended at 3 a.m. You started at 1.30. But the creative process and not getting tired, you would think people would you'd be worn out at this whole thing. But when you get past Stupendous and WrestleMania, how far in advance do you have to think for the WWE? What's coming? Like, Because you do. You change the game every time you get into it. And right. I talked about the metaverse and Mars and stuff like that. And Mars, obviously, not real. We maybe, don't maybe. know. We don't know what Musk's going to be up to. But like the metaverse and things like that. How much do you have to think in the future while also knowing that the current product is what is going to get you there? Like, how, how do you do that? You have to look at both constantly. You have to look at the big picture and the little picture all at the same time, constantly. Because you have, want to have an idea of where you might want to go. And you don't always know. But you, if something it makes itself available, I can fit into that. Or, nope. Or, and there's, with WWE, we can almost fit into anything. Because it's like we, it's in terms of a uh, of the way we think, in terms of the structure we have, and the marketing aspect, and especially our talent. Our talent, when, by the time they finish, they've graduated from you know they have much better than a doctoral or a bachelor's degree. Or they they when you graduate from W, you know how to do, you know how to treat people. You know you show respect, which is one of the things that I'm sure you've picked up on is respect is huge in everything we do. Yeah, it's big respect. behind the scenes for everything. Everybody's right. known about it, but it right. is very real. And even, you know, from a standpoint, you know, people really don't understand how uh, in the gorilla position backstage, you know, we hug each other, shake hands, all that kind of stuff. Well, the basis of that is that I'm going to the ring to work with you, my competitor, and I want you to protect me. I don't want you to, don't drop me on my head. I don't want to be paralyzed. I don't want to be hurt for the rest of my life. I can't continue my career. You know, so it's the respect factor that you have for each other to go out there and try not to maim each other, you know, and to come back, put on a great show. You know, obviously, you know, it, it hurts, but that's okay. You know, that's, it, that's what you, you do. You know it's going to hurt. Yeah, you jumped off. Uh, we were just talking yeah. about a yeah. like 20-foot ledge last when Gronk wouldn't do it. You just jumped off his 70-year-old oh. or whatever. It's like, yeah, you guys are but maniacs. Yeah, I, I only wanted to show him that, like, hey, look, it's, this, is, this is all it is. <laughs> yeah, we know that's what you wanted to do. <laughs> yeah, but it's just like Gronk's like top 100 tight end of all time, one of the toughest guys of all mm -hmm. time. And then Vince McMahon obviously goes, <clears throat> <laughs> No, this is not it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know you're not doing that, but that's the image of the Mr. McMahon, oh. and then you're doing it from outside in because you never talk. You leave all these things go unchecked because you can't answer everything because you got to do your work. But that's the immediate response. Like, of course, Vince McMahon would do that. Like, you are viewed by a lot of people. Myself, before I got in, and 
I can't reiterate this enough. The amount of times that you have allowed me to chat with you and ask you questions mm -hmm. and advice is unbelievable. You, you actually listen to what I'm saying. You give me actual answers. Some of them are hysterical. I mean, we've had some hysterical conversations <laughs> over our short relationship. But like the fact that you have allowed this character the Mr. McMahon character to go, everything you do is viewed through a light that you are a robot of a person. And with that being said, you're just gonna live forever? Is that, the, is that how you no. feel as well? We all feel yeah, that yeah, way. Yeah. We all feel you're just gonna live forever. You're an alien, you're a robot. Right. You're, you're one of one. That's literally what people right. view of you. I don't know if you know that or not. My mom was 101 when she passed away. Um, that's a benchmark, but I don't know. Look, I've been hit by a bus today and, and if I do, you know, just, I want one second before I kick to say thank you. To everybody. Everybody. Everything. For everything that has ever been done, like business, For personal. This opportunity to you know, live in this country, to, you know, all of it. You know, you just want to be, you want to be thankful that you are alive and appreciate the fact that you're alive. You know, and I get sometimes uh, more out of like um, taking one big deep breath than most people do out of breathing a lifetime. Because they just don't understand, you know, and to have the privilege of being able to understand what all that means, you know, and not take it for granted all the time. So I think if you get, you know, get whacked, you get whatever. Hopefully, there's that at least one second I can say thanks. You know? Well, I think you just just did it there. Yeah. Although we, you got 26 more years or 20, uh, 20. Yeah, 26 more years. Yeah, that's yep. right. Hey, that's fucking math right there, Vince. I don't know if you need <laughs> I'm to. I'm hey, thank, <laughs> thank you. You got that, obviously. But the conversation has been broached with you now. And obviously, there's a show, Secession. I don't know if you've heard of this show. Right. It's about a mega wealthy person with the family and the right. business. And there's been a lot of comparisons to the WWE. People are like, oh, this is probably what's happening behind the scenes. Right. At what point did the future of the WWE be brought to you? And were you not happy about that, like when it happened? Because then there's a conversation about it maybe not being yours afterwards. Like, did, did, was that something that ever cracked into your world? Because it is a topic of conversation outside sure, of the true. WWE very loudly. Right. When do you think that started? And were you pissed that that conversation even happened? And is that something you even think about? No, I, I, I don't think about it a lot. Um, hopefully, you, if you built something, hopefully you wanted to continue on you know, and prosper and grow, whether that's with a family member or without a family member. Because my view is the business is is best for everybody, you know, and whether you're a part of it or you're not a part of it. And you have to treat it as such. You have to be objective, you know, and look at family members, whoever it is, just like you would other employees. And quite frankly, I probably have expected more, you know, out of my family members, which is probably not the right thing either. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but we really That's going to be a big deal right there, what you just said. You know that, though. But, but nonetheless, it's like um, you have to do the right thing for the business. So if this person is not working out, then they should be a part of the company. So whenever you think about the business, what is your overarching view back on what you have been able to build this far? You never get look, to do it. I know you never get to do it, but in this moment, I would like you to do it. Like you have to be, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> you have to be pretty proud, I think, right? I don't want to do what you tell me to do. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. That's on me. That's on me. That's on me. I apologize. Unless you insist in it's confrontation. <laughs> hey, by the way, I'm okay with it too. I, I will have a good time with it, but no, I'm just joking. But I, I think at some point, I hope for that one second where you get to say thank you, you get to look back and say like, you know what? I inspired a lot of people. I changed the fucking world. I changed a lot of people's lives. You've employed a lot of people for every release that happens. People forget about who's coming in and getting pushed. Right. Like what you have done for the world, I think at some point you should say thanks. And I understand you probably hear a lot of heat. I know a lot of these previous conversations that have happened, mm -hmm. people always want to get like the, hey, tell me why you made this decision that didn't work out well or this decision that worked out. I think you should be celebrated more than you actually are. And I think that's mostly because I got a chance to meet you, but also because you're a dude that all of us kids that didn't grow up with money hopes that we can go get it and follow it along. So I hope you get a chance to think about that in that one second as well, since you won't do it right now, obviously. Right. All right, fuck <laughs> off. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I can't thank you enough for coming in Is here. Is the show over? Do you want it to be or no? You want to keep, the boys probably have questions. Fire right away. Let's go. Go ahead, Ty. Vince, I'm curious, when you look at the state of the business right now... Before I answer your question, because I'll interrupt on occasion. Um, but... <laughs> I want, to add, I want to offer you something, okay? Do I need like a pen or something? You probably need a chair. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> so, and that's where you normally are. You know, it's like, and I know you love what we do. Um, and you're a part of the team. 
big big time and people in the organization really enjoy you and fans all over the world really enjoy you being you you know and I, you know you you can't find anyone i can't imagine back in the day bob costas standing up on a desk and dancing <laughs> <laughs> okay but you're you you know and that's why it works you know and uh so w with that it's like I, i'd like to offer you a, an opportunity to actually wrestle at wrestlemania oh. It'd be a dream, boss. In the ring. Now, it's, it would be the difference, though, when you played for the Colts. It would be the difference of, like, okay, you're the punter. Okay. But now, in the ring, you're going to be a linebacker. 24 tackles in the NFL. No big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be a fucking dream, obviously. And by the way, there's been a lot of chatter on the internet about me getting back into the ring and wrestling at WrestleMania. And I've had so many torn, conflicted feelings because, you know, I'm... I'm out of shape. I'm out of shape. <laughs> I, I, there's a lot of vitamins that go into these lungs, Vince, and like the, the, the things coming up. But WrestleMania is something I've obviously stolen from you. By the way, back in the day, we'd go to whoever had the black box, we'd steal WrestleMania. <laughs> uh -huh. So sorry about that. I probably owe you like seven, eight, ninety nine, 99 or something like that for that whole thing. But obviously, it is the standard at WrestleMania. I would love to. That'd be an absolute honor. Obviously, in the ring, we'll find some worthy opponent for you. Put you in the ring. Oh, wow. Awesome. Oh, holy shit. Hey, huh? Did you yep. see the ring when you walked by, by the I way? I did. I was impressed you have your own ring. Yeah, I got it. It looks like a standard WA ring. Well, listen, I don't know if that's how hard your rings are, but goddamn, that thing hurts. Like <laughs> 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 that thing hurts like hell. This is incredible, by that's the way. Awesome. Is this a real deal? I mean, are we really. Yep. No, I don't bullshit. I don't, <laughs> I don't do that. Let's, Let's go. go. Here go. we go. Yeah. Hell yeah. Woo! Let's go, dude. Huh? Huh? What? <laughs> what? 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 Hey, I got a big right hand. Why? Why? <laughs> big right foot. Why? Wait till I bring that goddamn knee up. Why? And then the millions. And millions! The people will go banana lands when that left with the rolly on it comes from the pocket. Pow! Oh, right in the kisser! What? Hey, that's awesome, man. I'm pretty excited. I think it'll work. What do you guys think? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it'll work. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> you versus Taker? Jeez. <laughs> no, let's go. I don't know about that one. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, the most stupendous WrestleMania in the history of WrestleManias. That's not a lot of days away. No. No. Better get working. Yeah. All right. Start running. Yeah. Let's go ahead and wake him up. <laughs> wake him up. I'll be a part of that. That is an honor, and I appreciate that's that. Awesome. I really appreciate that. Can the boys ask you a couple hell questions? Hell yeah. Fire away, guys. Hey, man, that's really cool. That's yeah. awesome. I got, this aura, I got this aura ring on. Right. It'll tell me my heart rate. You know, I assume whenever you're like, uh, I'd like to make an offer to you. My <laughs> shit just went right up to it. I was excited. Yeah, good. Thank Great. you so much, you're man. Good. That's yeah. awesome. That's, Thank you. That's fucking awesome. Now, I will have to handle the business side of it, of course, but that is an entire other conversation, and we'll figure it out. Go ahead, uh, Ty. When you look at the state of the business right now, do you find that it's either more difficult or easier to cultivate and like create superstars than it was maybe 10 or 20 years ago, or ultimately, is it up to kind of that person to get themselves over? No, it's a team effort. You know, um, if it's a character, then you have to really be into that character and bring that character into the ring. You know, not just be a character. The audience is not going to buy that. You know, you have to really buy Undertaker, you know, the primo example. You know, we could never break him, ever. And I tried so many times. You know, <laughs> even even on camera, taking a risk of trying to break him. You know, and to get him to smile or something. Dance, right? That was the whole dance. Could, that know? was the whole dance moment where you're uh, telling him to dance, I believe, right? Yeah, well, there's take a Rooney. So it's yes. a spin a Rooney <laughs> yep. type thing. You know, when he was out in the state of Washington, it was after the show was over. And we're trying to do all kind of stuff like that. <laughs> no, almost got him. But you can see if you ever see that footage on the on, on network, you can see the look at him. He's like he's trying not to smile, but he knows, you know, that I'm getting close to to getting him, you know. And it's just it's just he never broke character, you know. He's just uh, for all the right reasons, just a wonderful, wonderful human being. But you, you have to, if you do have a character, you have to really no different than acting. Same thing. And our performers, are, the reason I call them superstars and not just wrestlers, is because. Anyone can wrestle, either poorly or well. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean, when I said poorly, I look at you then. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm in WrestleMania, dude. I, I'm, yeah, right. Right. I'm in WrestleMania. I don't yeah. know what to tell you. But yeah, you're right. right. Everybody can wrestle. So, when so it's like, do you want to be, and again, back to branding and marketing. So do you want to be a professional wrestler or do you want to be a WWE superstar? You know, WWE superstar sounds a whole lot better to me than being a professional wrestler. You know, so I think... The 
the quality of human beings that we have um, and, and the enormous amount of talent that they have is because you have to have acting talent or reacting talent. You have to have that with, you have to have this ability to, to really want to grow because you know in our environment you, you grow. You know, I believe if you're not growing, you're dying. Right. Myself. Oh. So well, um, sure. you, you have to have, you know, that desire when you come in to really want to be everything you can be. And really, if it's a character, really get into it. Be, be that character when, you know, when you're in the ring and outside. But, but in your private life, don't be that character. <laughs> really, you get all confused. A lot of people that way. Oh, yes. That's, by the way, in my eyes, and you might view this differently, I think that's when it's at its best. Like Taker right, was always Taker, right? That's what everybody mm -hmm. said. He saw him in all black. He moved quietly, but then you get him at the bar. He's going to shut it down. Oh yeah, yeah. Taker's it's going to Mark Calloway. But it's, it's two different things. You know, the really good ones are all in on their character, and then they're themselves. You know, after the show's over. Because do you not think when the character is closest to the actual character of the person, it is his best, or do you think it's like whoever can portray the best character is the best? Right. I think it's what you, what you can relate to. You know, some people relate to Batman or whatever else it is, you know, but, but they really think they're Batman after the, you know, after trying to work with a show or something. No, it's important for your mental health, you know, to not be the character outside the ring. You talk about being on the road and the family on the road. You have to have more logged hours in yeah. planes than anybody. You, you're, you've lived a rock star life for 40 years, dude. Is that how? What do you do, like, eating-wise? We went on the road. What did we have? We had six pizzas. Oh, oh yeah, gained about 60 pounds 70, in six 65, months. 70, 65, 70 right. pounds. Like, right. and, Cheesecake every night. And you said you're never tired, right? You said seldom tired. Like, that's what you said earlier. Like, how have you been able to maintain this rigorous schedule while also not completely destroying your body? Because you hear about rock stars. You hear about roadies. You hear right. about people that live on the road. You've been able to maintain energy, creative stamina, everything like that while being on the road. Do you attribute that to anything? Or, or what do you think? I, I don't really think about it. I mean, you work at it, you know, and you have to be discretionary. You know, it's like it's a lot of ball players who come from nothing and now I have all this money. You know, how, how do you deal with that? That's fucking tough to deal with. You know, and you've got all other opportunities that are coming at you. Not that you went at them, you know, and they're not always good opportunities. You know, and it's like, you, and they're just coming at you in every conceivable way. It, you have to be very discretionary and you have to grow because when you're a kid, that's, that's so tough. You gotta figure out what you, know, what you want, what you don't want, you know? Yeah, but you flying out here is absurd to think about. We're on the road to WrestleMania right now. We're in Miami on Friday. Madison Square Garden's on Saturday. I don't know where Monday Night Raw is. I probably should. But then you're there on SmackDown. And then we have the most stupendous WrestleMania. You fitting this into your schedule, I just assume it would be impossible. But you know, when you're traveling, are you just working the entire time? Sure. Yes. That is, you're but, just taking your entire life on the road, basically. But I'm having fun. Yeah. I mean, it's not like, okay, I'm working, yada, yada, yada. I mean, I'm having fun the whole time I'm doing that. How's that Wi-Fi on the plane? Pretty good. Huh? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you watch this show? Yeah, you watch this show all the time. Right? <laughs> Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, when COVID first started, I think you were on a council with like a lot of the other commissioners of the major sports. Right. Was there ever a thought for you to like miss a show or anything, or did you immediately like almost have a plan ready just in case this happened? Um, I think I like to do our own thing. So... And everything's different. Look, whatever the guys in the NFL do or whatever it is, they, they do. You know, they're a little higher profile and so forth, and, and I get it. Um, but I was determined that, you know, even with this COVID stuff, that we weren't going to miss a beat. Didn't, couldn't have an audience. We never missed a show. And that's a credit to our performers as well in terms of, like, because, again, they're so they're gifted and they work hard at what they do in terms of their skills and, and so many different directions. I mean, you're, you're talking about a, an unbelievable – it's why they're superstars and not wrestlers. And they have this, this thirst for everything that it can possibly do to make them a better performer. Quite frankly, to become better human beings, you know. So uh, I, it's what I decided to do was okay. We had this training facility, which we still have. It was smaller then, and it would keep us in a kind of like a cocoon balloon type thing. Yeah. So we tested it everything imaginable for people coming in, our people and others. Uh, to make sure it was safe. So we put on a show every week, brand new programming, you know, and uh, with no audience. That was difficult because you have to, as a performer, then you have to go, okay, I just got this shit knocked out of me. And it's like, 
one, two, three, they're reacting, and then come back. So you have to <laughs> listen to that in your head. Yeah. You know, instead of just going through the motions, if they're there, it's easy to listen to them when they're not. It's far more difficult, and it hurts, by the way, more. Yeah, because, yeah, the adrenaline's not there. I was birthed in the uh, Thunderdome era. Yeah. I was birthed in there, so I knew nothing different. Then we went, uh, got in front of the crowd. Where are we? Fort Worth, I believe, and then the, the Cena. I mean, mm-hmm. it was just a game changer. I'm like, holy yeah. Yeah. hell, this is a game changer out here. Our audience is so much a part of uh, our, oh, our yes. product. Of a product. You get mad. You, you say everything you think about for the audience. Steve mm-hmm. Jobs has a quote where he's like, people don't know what they want until you show them. Mm-hmm. I assume you have to have that type of mindset when you're making decisions as well? Yes, but we have a focus group every night. And it doesn't matter what I want. It's like if I think something's going to work and you present it and there's no reaction, mm, wrong Vince. Okay? <laughs> so you immediately know, you know whether or not something's going to work. You don't know how well it's going to work, but you immediately know. It's a focus group. They tell you. And you're, you're saying still at this point, through the Thunderdome era, what you, you probably had to rely on social then, right? Is that what it was? Social media was basically telling you through the Thunderdome era? Pretty much. Although, again, you can tell. But uh, in terms of what's happening, you've been in the business for so many years. You, you can see in the ring whether or not someone, this is working mm-hmm. or not. You know? But you, know, you, you listen to your audience no matter where it's from. You know? But sometimes the internet audience, a portion of it, can be... Relatively biased and a bit harsh. <laughs> no, <laughs> so I don't listen to any of those. Yeah, uh, none of them. You know, um, but again, everything you do is for your product, it's for your audience. You, this is guys, you loved us because it's for your audience. Well, what do you do for the show for your audience? Mm-hmm. Yes, you know, that's that's what we do. You know, and I think a lot of people probably from this conversation. And by the way, thank you for doing mm-hmm. this. Yeah, you are so cool for doing this. You I very much like four or five times at once. Was thank you very much, and I'm thanking you. Oh, <laughs> oh, hey, welcome to the yeah, Pat not, McAfee I'm show, not, man. I'm not well, big on the thank yous. Hey, I know you don't like the compliments. You don't like that whole thing. And uh, hey, thank you for coming. <laughs> thank you so much. No, 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 okay, all right, enough, enough, enough. Hey, we won't do that. But I think a lot of people are potentially hearing, you know, you as a human here, and this is a fascinating thing for a lot of. God people. forbid, I'm not human. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of humility in a lot of things you're saying. Like, hey, if things are wrong, you got to do that. Alistair Black came out and told a story whenever he left about a meeting about a new song or a new entrance theme. And uh, he said that Vince said, oh, I don't understand it, but if you think it's good, you're good. I'm a 76-year-old man or something like that. Right. At what point do you think that ha- that creeped in? And have you always been like that? Is that something you It wouldn't matter if I was 36. Same thing. Um, I think that you have to overcome a stereotype sometimes. You know, and that, okay... Vince is not hip or he's not with it. Or I've never been cool. I didn't give a shit about that. But, <laughs> uh, you're pretty fucking cool, dude. You were in a limo that blew up and he came back the next week. Yeah. That was yeah. pretty cool. So, um, but you listen to people and you try to give them as much creative ability as possible because it makes them more invested. If there's an idea uh, and that I really like and a performer <laughs> says, I, I'm not so sure I don't like that, or then what's the alternative? If they have an alternative that's better, great. There's no pride of authorship. That's the way to go. Thank you very much. But you do need to, to lead. You know, you can't just wait. You know, so I guess probably what Steve was saying, you, you, my guess is you need, you need to lead. That's for sure. You need to give, here's what I'm offering. You know, um, not buying it. Okay, here's what I'm offering. You know, so I guess that's probably what he meant because you can't dictate, you know, to the audience what they're going to like. So I don't do well with bosses. It's very well documented. And I don't do well with bosses. It's oh, pretty well documented, right? right? I, I think that is something that a lot of people, it, it's on the internet, not in your world, but on the internet. And I think it's because, you know, I'm not 100% sure I appreciate their brain or where they're coming from because I know some of the decisions that they've made in the past. So it's hard for me to take them serious right. when they're saying something about me. And they probably don't understand me anyway. So, um, all right, you can fuck off. I've done that. So when I sign, <laughs> when I sign with the WWE... Everybody on earth goes, I can't wait to hear how you react to Vince in your ear telling you exactly what to say, how to say it, and everything like that. And I said, I think I'm getting an incredible opportunity to get a billionaire's brain into my brain on a product that he created. Because I like to learn from everybody. I would like to learn from you. You in my ear is awesome. You, since the very beginning, and I don't know 
how or how many times you thought about not doing it, you've let me just do my my thing. Like I am very, very pumped about that. Right. And it went against everything that was said about you. So I think you saying there that you got a lead, like yeah, it's your company, but people potentially presenting another option to mm -hmm. you and working with it, that's a massive part that never gets chatted about in the creative process, I think, well, personally. Yeah, but if if I didn't like what you were doing, then you wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, true, true. But I'm not wrong. Again, to the audience, you know, if, if it's not about my personal taste. If it's not getting over, if they weren't like really like, oh, he's a fucking cool dude. I like the way he performs and yada, yada, yada. If, you know, you wouldn't be there. But, you know, you appeal to the audience. That's what we're all about. You know, you're having fun doing that, you know, and we, and we all have fun doing what we do, right? And you create things and what have you, and it's, it's a blast. You know, it's, it's, again, no work. It's just constant. You know, it's so fucking cool. I'm gonna knock that thing over here. <laughs> I got back at it. Just yeah, listen, listen, I know. It's like, it's like three times now I've lightly touched it. You know? hey, I know you got uh, big, strong mitts out there. We were trying to figure out what the proper microphone setup was gonna be, by the way. We thought about a table with a stationary mic. We went with this one. What, do you think we made the right move here? It wouldn't matter. Okay, <laughs> you're knocked down either, or either one of them. Brock also. Broke yeah, Brock, those yeah. are the headsets that Brock threw up into the uh, rafter. <laughs> so cool. Hey, will you explain that guy, Brock Lesnar? What a one of one that he guy really is. He really is. And an extraordinary human being. Yeah. A smart son of a bitch. <laughs> good businessman, good business. Oh, my God, yeah. In general, he's really fucking intelligent. Yeah, absolutely. And people that, you know, again, it's that you know, misperception. You have someone that big, you know, and it's like, oh, yeah, well, he's a Neanderthal. Okay, he looks like a Neanderthal. <laughs> <laughs> smarter than you, pal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he will listen, by the way, to everything you're saying, and then he will have his own. I, I've been very, you know, I've gotten a chance to learn about Brock now at this point and chat with Brock right. off air. What a, there's another guy that I'm like asking questions for, like advice from everything. I'm sure. like, hey, can you help me in this particular situation? I love him, but the amount of superstars that have come out of the WWE, and obviously Brock gave you a lot of credit. He said on this show right there before he broke, the previous one that you're probably gonna break and then threw his headsets up there. He said, my relationship with Dana White, much different than my relationship with Vince McMahon. Right. Vince McMahon is more like a dad to me. He mm -hmm. taught me a lot of things. Now, he said there were some bad times, I made some decisions and he hindsighted it, but he views you as like a, a mentor, a father, and I think you guys still chit chat and go through that. And he gave you a lot of credit for why he's had success outside of the WWE, at the UFC. Mm -hmm. But you don't just think about, Brock is awesome. I've, I fucking love Brock. I'm very thankful for Brock. But if you go through the history of the characters that have been created in your universe, I mean, The Rock is the biggest star on earth right now. Right, yeah. Stone Cold Steve Austin can do whatever he wants, whenever yeah. he wants, however he yes. wants, because he's there. Bill Goldberg, now obviously he starts at WCW, but his entire career continues and grows even more whenever the WWF and the WWE get in there. It's like these stars that get created in your universe live on forever. Do you keep in touch with all these people? Are those conversations um, happening still? Some, you know, um, it's not like I forget people. You know, I love for them to stay in touch with me. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm busy today doing this. Or busy, I'm gonna get it. Busy, um, you know, doing other things. But I don't lose contact with those individuals you mentioned. You know, some that are further down the line. You know, I, I do. You know, I, I try to have make sure our company stays in contact with them. Um, That's a big part, right? Good graces is good business, right? Yeah, it's good business, but you know, everyone um, helped pave the way to where we are now. And I'm always appreciative, you know, ever how small that was or how big that was. Always appreciative, you know, for everyone who ever stepped in the ring, you know, and helped us to get to where we are now. That attitude era was yeah. outrageous. Hey, mm -hmm. it was outrageous. That television was <laughs> insanity. Stone Cold Steve Austin coming down with a beer truck, oh. shooting that thing into a crowd. You, ah, Austin! <laughs> and I, you know, we watched clips from the Attitude. What was that like? Was it just, we're gonna show up and put on the most insane show that anybody's ever seen every single night? Is that what the Attitude Era was like, the, yeah, looking back? Much. It was, again, just so <laughs> much fun. It was like, um, you being able to do this as opposed to the standards of a network and no, you can't do this and you can't say that at all, you know? So we were able to, and at that time, think about it, in the 80s, it was, it was a wild west. So we added a little extra sauce on that, you know, and just had a blast. You ate a bedpan there at one point. <laughs> <laughs> right to the head. I so mean, Steve, before we're doing this, for 30 minutes, Steve is walking up and down the hallway. And I'm doing a, you know, setup in terms of producing, directing, all that, lighting, all that kind of shit. And, uh, and the first thing I was doing was Mick Foley with Mr. Sacco. So I, Steve's 
Well, I hear this like to you. I said, well, what have you been doing? Well, I was wondering whether or not I should hit you in the head with a bed down. <laughs> <laughs> what a business. This is your world, by the way. Yeah, I, I know. It's a wonderful world. I mean, there, <laughs> there is nothing like this world. I mean, it, 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 is, it is so wonderful. Well, Mr. McMahon, I was wondering if I could hit you in the head with his Why? bed band. Why? Why? It's a Texas accent. Well, he's, then he starts hitting his head with it, you know, like, I don't think it's going to hurt that much, but this is fucking thing as thick as that. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, when it's showtime, you know, you don't even think about it. Showtime, you just lay it in, and here we go. You know, it was, that was fun. He, um, he said on the show during that era, we asked him a question, and I think it was the cement in the Corvette where yeah. it blew out. And he said before the show started, he said, the hand made the keys a minute and two minutes before the show started. I didn't even know how to drive it. But I fucking hit the Corvette because it's live TV. Right. Like, what is it about live that you love so oh, much? God. You're on the edge. And I've always said that nothing can go wrong. Because the audience doesn't know mm -hmm. what was supposed to happen. So It's a lot of pressure, though, isn't it? To put a live show on two times sure. a week for 40 years? Yeah, I know. But it's so exciting. You know, yeah, there's pressure, but that's what, you know, that's what you do. You live for that, you know, live for those moments. And, you know, when something really great goes down, it's like, yes. You know, and it's like, you've seen a gorilla. You know, we've done something really, really good. And they come back through that curtain, hugging, you know, mm -hmm. clapping and all that kind of stuff. Way to go. And other times when you don't do it well, mm -mm, that's not, it's a different feeling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey, we'll see you next week, all right? We'll have a conversation you. with your son. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Michael Cole, 25 years into this thing, right. almost horrible, horrible human being. Jesus <laughs> 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 oh just fell on no batteries, dude. Oh my! Really. And you know that too. Like, you know, the persona and everything is all well and good, but just a really horrible. <laughs> 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 so you've had obviously uh, a lot different experience with him than us, but I see him every Friday night SmackDown. Doesn't matter if we're in Omaha, Madison Square Garden, Baltimore. When that music starts, oh, you know, the sound hits in the headphones. Right. He gets excited. He gets like alive. He comes alive. And he's been doing this for 24 well, years. You the same. Yes, I get very pumped. This morning, when, when before he walked out on the show, you were excited. Oh, yes. Well, you're all yeah. jacked, yes. ready to go. All yeah. you guys were. Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah. And it's like so. And how you are now, it's like this is fun. You still get excited before shows? Hell yes. Everyone? Every single one of them. Even when, like, is there some shows where you go, okay, this one's going to be interesting here? Is there any of that thought? Is there. Well, any... when you write it, you know, then you, you're really into it. You know, as I am in all those shows. But um, you, the vision of, you know, what it is you're, you're trying to tell, the story of it. You know, if it, if it comes out as well as you think, it's awesome. Sometimes it comes out better than you think. And sometimes all those tools and everything right there, and you're going, hmm, how could they miss that? You know what I mean? So it's, no, it's, it's all about the audience. When they really pop and it's a surprise and things of that nature or you know, an extraordinary move or whatever, those are moments. You know, man, they, and I got the chill bumps like everybody else. You know, it's in the audience like, holy shit. I'm doing the same thing. Holy shit. Yeah, and by the way, you are actually because I've heard you come into my ear when something awesome happens and it's like, uh, like a very like, whoa. And you're in every single show. It is unbelievable. I, I, I honestly, I've heard the stories and I before I got into the universe, like, hey, this guy, nobody will outwork this fucking guy. And I'm like, what? I work hard. What are we even talking about? <laughs> right. I, I go, I, I work. What are we even doing? Right. You, just for all these years, what I have, like to travel, how I get exhausted from traveling and every single week and then going back and being able to be creative. You're, you bring the energy every single show. Yeah, think about our crew. Think about all the many members, you know, that do that twice a week. I was like, man. And it's, sometimes it's difficult for the corporate types to understand that because it's not done anywhere in the world. No one does. No one has, we have the largest traveling show in the world. No one understands that, nor should they ever, nor should they give a shit. All you care about is what's on the screen, you know. But there's so much of all everything that goes behind. And then our vast organization, our production folks are absolutely the best in the Amazing. entire world. Yeah. You know? But every guy, I mean, we've had cameramen who have been with us for, you know, 15, 20 years. We, it, it's a family, you know. And, it, man, it takes... A grind, it takes a toll on you to be able to, to leave your home, you're out on the road all the time and so forth, and uh, sometimes you get home, it's not exactly the way you left it, <laughs> because <laughs> things can get tough. But nonetheless, uh, it, it's, a, uh, it's, it's, so, it's, it's so extraordinary that so many people want to do this together, you know, um, and 
I don't look at it as a grind. I obviously look at it as a privilege, and and it is most of the time for everybody. But then again, it can be a grind. But that's all coming from leadership, right there. Because if you, you know, you're the leader of the group, mm -hmm. looks tired or is tired, it can almost have a ripple effect through the entire team. Nobody's gonna know if I'm ever tired. Ever. No. Seldom, by the way. You said earlier. But, but why would you? I mean, because. If you, it's no different corporate. I can have a really horrible phone call or horrible meeting, okay, and now I've got 10 seconds to walk into the next room. I'm not going to bring that in. No. That's really, really bad business to do that. So whatever it is you, that emotion you had there, okay, when you walk into that next room, be your normal self, smile, this and that and the other, and you may be dying and pissed off of the yin yang, <laughs> or or in and, here, and, in and, here, oh yeah, and there sometimes especially, but but why, <laughs> but why, you know, why bring that to the meeting? If you're angry or whatever it is that's, that's bugging you, right away, you know, it, it changes the entire complexion of the meeting. So what Please. do you? Like your leadership style. Did you watch other leaders? Did you read books? Or is it just something that came naturally to you? And how have you evolved, you think? Uh, it's moreover, um, I'm sort of a student of psychology, but street psychology. Um, Trailer park psychology. I'm, uh, right, that's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm, the kind of student I am is that um, I didn't have, my grades weren't good enough to get into college. So I've always been a horrible student. No learning skills. I'm sure I had every learning disability there was, although there were no names for them then. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I was expelled so many times for fighting and crap like that. I was in school a lot. So I didn't like school. You know, I didn't learn how to study at all. Um, so uh, I had to go to summer school to get into college. And then it took me five years going to every summer school to get back in. It took me <laughs> five years to get through a four-year credit. Easy for me to say. Curriculum. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I got you. I got you. Thank you. East Carolina, right? Harvard of the South. Yeah, that's yeah, it. That's I went to the Harvard of West Virginia, West Virginia University. I did not graduate. Did you? I graduated. What was the major? Business administration. Oh, so that's. And that's another story. That's too many fucking stories. So <laughs> right. Like I, I don't have, uh, you know, I don't have the grades to graduate. I'm slightly off. So if I went from a B plus to an A minus, that would help me. So it, I forgot the subjects. And I wasn't going to graduate. And I was like, man. My wife at the time, my wife, uh, it, it, she went through a four-year cur curriculum committed, and then three in three years. She's so really, really smart. Well, that's two years. So, yeah, it's like, but me, it's like, no, and here we're graduating at the same time. The reason I mentioned that is because we're graduating at the same time. We're supposed to. I don't have the grades. I'm not going to graduate. What am I going to do? I'm not asking for the world. I'm not asking you give me an A when I'm, I had a D. So I found out where these two professors lived. <laughs> you know. So what are you going to do? I've got nothing to lose. You knock on your door, knock on their door and say, hello. I'm Vince McMahon if they didn't know who I was because it was a large class. And I'd like to come in and talk to you about, you know, where Business. I am. Right. So one of them was so kind and said, absolutely. As from a B plus to an A minus, be happy to do that. Nolan was such an unbelievable asshole; didn't want to let me. In his head. <laughs> oh. That's bad business. No, and I, I get it. You know, it's unusual for a student, you know, to find out where you live and knock on the door. I get that, you know, but I didn't have anything to lose. So there was a bit of confrontation and so forth, and he was going to call the cops. Call the cops. I still don't have anything to lose. <laughs> <laughs> really, I don't. You know, yeah. I'm sitting on the sofa. And I'm, I'm going to call the cops. I'm going to call. Them. No, call them if you want to, but then I am going to. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that microphone. Do you have, do you have another one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 there's a handheld right there. There's a handheld right there if you want, right there on your right. Or on your left, I guess, my right. Hey, that thing's tough, though. That microphone's been through it. Yeah. Still hear me? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Better this time. So, um, again, finally, the guy did change my grade, but that's how I graduated. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Otherwise, I would never Get out of my office. I'm calling the cops. Yeah. All right, fuck it. Well, no, but really, what, what do you, you know, is his home? And, you know, like, people's homes, that's... You know, I wasn't invading his home. You know, when we tried to close the door, I didn't let him. <laughs> hey, but you graduate. Hey, college graduate. Yeah. Yeah. Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty hey. It actually happened, so. I'm, uh, I'm glad I did not graduate. I mean, I wish I would have potentially went to a couple houses, I guess it sounds like, but I don't know how they would have been received. I'm coming in a sleeveless and some hoodies, probably a gas mask or two. You, what? Know? you got to do that entire thing. Go ahead, Tone. Uh, Vince, we talked about it earlier about you eating the bedpan from Stone Cold, and some of my favorite times was when you were on the screen. Did you consider yourself a WWE superstar? Because, I mean, there was a, there was a time where we all considered yourself a WWE superstar. Um, 
I had to become one. I mean, if I'm going to be on screen, mm -hmm. I mean, you, especially with Steve, yeah. you know, that's that's a blast. And the funny thing is that, you know, I'm really Steve Austin, you know, uh, and <laughs> <laughs> that came pretty much in terms of the concept of it, you know, and knocking your boss and this and that and the other. I get that because that's the way it was. <laughs> you know, I totally underst understood that underdog philosophy and your boss is an asshole, you know, and things of that nature. I, I, I grew up that way, knowing that. And yeah, the perception so. of you was that, so it's an easy transition into Mr. McMahon, I'd assume. Easy. But you're the greatest heel of all time, people say. What was that? Greatest heel of all time. Everybody was like, that guy's an asshole. Yeah. Everybody. Right. And it was- Well, the other thing too, is when you're committing to a character, as I said before, you, you have to really get in. So you have to want people to really dislike you. I mean, you, you want people to honestly really dislike you. I guess maybe it's pretty easy for me to do sometimes. But, <laughs> uh, but when you are really into that character and you think of things that, you know, that, that motivate people and you, when you, even lying from a standpoint, it's like you know, people think I was lying when I said, I'm, I'm, like, you don't lie? Yeah. Really? You? You, you don't lie sometimes? <laughs> Ever. You know? I mean, it's like, come on, you're, any number of lies that you tell every day, little ones, sometimes they're big ones and what have you, um, but nonetheless, it's like it's things, topics like that that people can relate to. And being able to, you know, to match the emotional buttons and to get a reaction like that, man, that is a thrill. You loved it. So whenever you went to perform or almost on your own show, it was a game show even more so. Like, hey, I love this. Because you were a commentator. Right. Long time. Hey, right. I'm going to be mm -hmm. the voice of my product, okay? Right. My show, this is how I would like to go. I'm going to, by the way. One of the greatest commentators of all time as well. Congratulations on that in your own business that you created. Obviously, that's going to happen. But from that to the performer to being hated by everybody, mm -hmm. that just brought a whole new level of fun and thrill to the business that you're already in? Absolutely. The difficulty, though, is um, when you're performing, then you can't produce and direct. That's so difficult because you have to commit so much into that performance. You know, and I'm much rather being on the other side of the camera. You know, that's where all of the action is, mm -hmm. you know. And you can live vicariously through every single character that walks out there, you know, and whether or not they're doing it well or whatever. You know, if you yourself are the character, it takes so much emphasis to be able just to do that well. Then I miss out and everyone else does as well in terms of me directing them and producing and so forth. So it, it's, it's difficult to do, it really is. You saying that you're Steve Austin or whatever is uh, so hilarious because when I did that middle management promo, there was a big ha 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 in my <laughs> ear afterwards, which I absolutely um, loved. You blew your quads out running down to the ring. And uh, is there any other injuries that we haven't heard about that you've gone through through your body? Uh, actually, you've blown the left one out twice, but that, that was very <laughs> unique. Not too many people can, you know, sever, you know, the quad tendons. <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> that, that takes talent. <laughs> Put it on the resume. All right, oh yeah, yeah. Because you, you, you have no use of your legs at all. <laughs> no, I mean, you, when, when you sever your quad tendons, and again, both of them at the same time, it's like you, there's no, you can't walk, you can't stand, you can't anything. You know, it's just, you, so you have to learn how to walk all over again. Yeah, rehab. You have to learn that rehab is, you know, so important when you do all that. And it's like, if you go too fast, then that's not good either. You know, I like to push myself as, as hard as I can, but you can't go too fast. So in any event, things like that, um, I've had all kind of neck surgery, I've had tricep surgery. God, I can't think of all the damn things I've had. Um, uh, sternum, back surgery. Sternum spine? Yeah, that. that. Um, What's this all from? Just like, hey, walking around in your Corvette? What, what is, is, this all, is this from bedpans to the bed? What is all the injuries from? It's a combination of a lot of things. Because you still remain, I mean, we videos hit the internet of you squatting. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're still, I don't know if you're in the shark pit or if the bar, the one that I saw, but you're still squatting like weekly. I think you're still putting a bar on your yeah. back. I don't always do a thousand pounds, but we do that like, uh, we do. Is that how much it was? Mm -hmm. That was not like a, a joke right there. No, it was 11 plates on each side. You can, and it's tough to get 11 on. <laughs> Jesus. Um, but, um, but you can, but they're hanging. They're hanging by a That thread. microphone could not put 11 on each side. <laughs> no. That no. soft-ass <laughs> microphone right there. So, at any event, um, we, we only do that once a month because you don't want to press too much. But now, um, as soon as WrestleMania is over, then, okay, now I can go have fun with it. And, and really load up. Yeah, your trainer, I see him around. He, He's a great guy, Mike. Yoked. He's a terrific guy. 
wonderful human being. Hey, you got an entire crew of people. You said the team. Like, obviously, I've gotten a chance to meet Bruce and KD and the entire backstage, Frenchie, everybody that's in my ear. The people that have been around for so long that have helped you do this, all incredible people, even though the internet says a lot of shit. Like, I've enjoyed the hell out of meeting everybody. They're so professional. Yeah, they're really professional. And good, all quality human beings. That's important to have really good people around you. Very important. Hey, Mike Cole, good guy. Mm. Wow. Michael Cole's good guy. That's your opinion. <laughs> uh, and I don't know, you don't want to hear this, but uh, hey, you're a good guy too, dude. And the reason why, in this latest version of why you're a good guy, you flew all the way out here mm -hmm. for this conversation. Yeah, but I was late. <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to apologize for things. Like that. Don't do that. You know, if, if you're late for a meeting or you're late, there's got to be a really good reason why you were. You know, so walking in and apologize, I'm sorry I'm late kind of like thing. It doesn't mean anything to people. <laughs> so, <laughs> it doesn't. Don't That's apologize. real. There had to be a reason you're late right now. Of so course, like, so listen. I'm walking I apologize, guys. And then the next thing people want to say is tell you why. I apologize. I'm late because I had a flat tire. I don't, I don't give a fuck what you are. <laughs> <laughs> you're late. So at least when you, if you're late, Look as good as you possibly can, because if you're late and you look like shit, uh, that's a double negative. <laughs> that was a long night there. That was a long night there. And I love how much you enjoy the rips in my pants, you know what I mean? Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. You like those right there, Vince? A little hole in the like show off the hammy, you know, a little bit of the quad. You love my fashion, right? That was the biggest thing that you said, you know, I like the way this guy fashion? Should... Yeah, my fashion, my fashion. That looks good on you. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we've talked, he has looked at what I'm wearing. You know, basically. <laughs> but the story about my WrestleMania moment before you... And by the way, there's a couple, like, 10, 15 minutes of this conversation that I don't remember at all because you offered me a WrestleMania match, which is so incredibly cool. And the entire internet thought I was going to have a match uh, at WrestleMania. And I've obviously been an incredible year. It's a dream come true. So I was a little bit, a little bit lost there. But every conversation I've had with you, you've been so cool and so nice. And you've talked about, you know, my pants. And if you go back to my original WrestleMania moment, first of all, we blew the roof off an RV outside of the yeah. MetLife Stadium while we were there. Oh. You probably heard about it. The cops weren't happy. It was an entire scene. But I had shorts on. I had my tuxedo shorts on that I actually got tailored, which I don't do often. Got these things tailored. And then I had a nice sport or a nice uh, tuxedo top. I looked good. And Michael Cole and a couple others wanted to kick me off WrestleMania. It was my first time there. And I'm like, at this point, had good money in my life, had a business, did this whole entire thing. I was just pumped to be in the WWE. And, uh, you know, there was an entire thing about my goddamn shorts like 45 minutes before we go live. And, I'm, you know, people talk to me and I go, oh, fuck you then. I won't go on. I don't care. And I just leave. I'm like, all right, I'll just, <laughs> all right, I won't go on. Then. If that's the case, like, no big deal. I'll get out of here. Do your thing. And you, literally, you didn't know who the fuck I was at that point. I don't think you had any idea who I was. Uh, I think you said... I appreciate that he wore those and I respect it or something like that. And I think you added the word hip or something to it. <laughs> and then I did it. You have been so genuine and cool to me through my entire relationship. And the fact that you came here, man, we will remember and cherish forever. Thank no, you for everything you've done good. for me. I appreciate I've that. I've enjoyed this, guys. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, the chairman of the WWE, Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Yeah! yeah! All right. Try to win some tickets. Hashtag PMS Seat Geek Mania. Take a screenshot. Go ahead and bounce around. Hey, they're going to get a shot on you right now if you want to okay. smile. I don't. <laughs> uh, go ahead and tweet hashtag PMS Seat Geek Mania. We're going to give away two uh, pairs of tickets in the lower section at the most stupendous WrestleMania in the history of WrestleMania. I'm coming to watch you work. Well, now, I yeah, guess, right, huh? All right, right. Hey. Hell listen, yeah. Too. Hey, listen. I'm already tired. How many days do we got? How many days do we got? 30. 30. That is a problem. We're going to have to expedite that whole process. I appreciate you. I'm thankful for you. We will see you all tomorrow for a Feel Good Friday. We're live 11 to 1 here at YouTube.com forward slash The Pat McAfee Show because the flight to Miami is long. Hey, that's way the fuck down there, Vince. That's a long flight down to Miami tomorrow night. It's no big deal. <laughs> I agree. There's right. more, <laughs> more business in the plane. There you go. Oh, that's what I need to start thinking about. Mm -hmm. Business in the plane. Be smarter. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll start that next week because this, I'm, I'm, this time I'm going to celebrate. I'm in fucking WrestleMania. <laughs> Hell yeah. We'll see you tomorrow, 11 a.m. Vince, thank you so much. This is the greatest show we've yep. ever had. Cheers. Yep. Thank you.